Good afternoon, my dear Neat Warriors. Welcome to the block number two, which carries a weightage of close to 180 marks in your Neat 2024 examination, right? And lot of lot of interesting topics under the block two. In case you have not watched the block strategy video yet, please check it out. The entire 720 marks syllabus has been divided into four blocks of 180 marks each in physics, chemistry, and biology. So this is the second, uh, I would say, day of block two. The day three, the last one will be of chemistry, right? And then we'll move on to block three and block four. We intend to complete, you know, by this weekend. So by this Sunday, your entire 720 marks is in your pocket. And today, what we are going to do is basically electromagnetism with me, your Captain Shreyas. Good afternoon, Paul, Partha, Prathiba, Krishna. Nice to see Vanakkam, Dr. Sanjay. Hello, Pratyu. Hello, Abhishek. Good afternoon, Sohasni, Sanjua. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, Roshni. Hello, everyone. Nice to see all of you. I hope I'm audible and visible to all of you. Yes. So before we proceed ahead, do me a, for a small favor by, you know, quickly smashing the like button because that not only motivates me, but also it helps you indirectly because YouTube understands that you are preparing for NEET. Or else YouTube will be like, okay, he's not interested in NEET or she is not interested in NEET. So let me distract that person. So that is for your benefit that you need to smash the like button and subscribe so that you do not miss the future blogs, right? And remember, my dear warriors, in the description box of this particular video, you have the NEET test series absolutely at free of cost. And that too, you can give it in both online and offline mode and at the exact same time as your examination of NEET. That is 2 o'clock to 5.20. The link is there below. Make sure you have registered for the All India Level Mock Test Series because there are more than five tests which have been planned, you know, for all of you before your May 5th NEET examination. Okay, so available both in online and offline at different places across India, like from Pune to, you know, Vijayawada, uh, Hyderabad, Chennai, Coimbatore, Salem. So many places are there where you can actually give these mock tests for getting the true feel of the offline, uh, right, examination, right. Thank you, thank you so much Madhumita, means a lot when you say that and I always come for all of you because of your affection only. Attendance done, Preeti, very good, Larry, excellent. Now why have I taken this block? This block is very, very crucial, very, very important, obviously carries a lot of weightage and a lot of things are also similar in it and you will see that also. So in this particular block, in this particular block 2 is what I'm calling it. Obviously, there are other things also, but today what we are going to do, today what we are going to do, we are concentrating on the high weightage topics. So, we are going to do electrostatics, electrostatics and basically Gauss law. Then we are also going to touch on capacitors and current electricity, current electricity. Then we are also going to touch upon you know, magnetic, magnetic, magnetic source, magnetic source and effects. And we will also do electromagnetic induction. First, we are going to uh, start with mainly the theory part. We'll do the theory part first. We'll understand the theory concepts and then we will go on to the questions practice questions practice okay that is what we're going to do is that clear the flow of the lecture is clear i hope to everyone yeah yes yeah so electromagnetic waves will be done in block four if i'm not wrong uh, where we are going to do all the waves together light waves electromagnetic waves sound waves waves on a string ac all of that in a separate block is that right santimony neat okay great yeah, electromagnetic waves is a separate block. Okay, so don't get confused. This is EMI, AC, everything, all those wavy nature is in the waves block because once and for all you can study it together. That will be better. All right. Now, the thing is when you study electrostatics and Gauss law and magnetic sources and effects, indirectly you are also covering, indirectly you are also covering, you know, indirectly you are also covering basically gravity indirectly are also covering the gravitational concepts a little of it because 
many questions and I would say models are very similar. Except for satellites and Kepler's law, most of the chapter is almost similar formula wise. We'll see that as we proceed. All right, so let's begin with our lecture and let's start off with mainly electrostatics. See, in this particular chapter of electrostatics and Gauss law, you are dealing with, if you are talking about electrostatics and Gauss law, mainly you are dealing with stationary charges. You are dealing with forces, you are dealing with energies, you are dealing with, you know, what speed can it go so that it, uh, you know, hits the target, can it uh, be accelerated through some potential difference, what is the energy of the system, how much work it is done to build this system, what is the force required to do so, what is the torque on that dipole. So, you are basically concentrating your complete attention on charges, what is the field coming out of it, where is the field zero, where is the energy zero. So all these questions are on basically stationary, stationary or basically low speed, low speed charges, low speed charges, very, very important. And one of the most important thing when we discuss stationary or low speed charges is the property of charge itself. So when I say, when I say charges, remember charges are of three types one is the positive charge which is there for a proton and the charge value remember the symbol of charge was q or basically you can also use capital q right both are symbols and uh, the value of this positive charge as we all know is plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb for a proton Similarly, for an electron, it has a negative charge. If you take an electron, it has a negative charge of minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. And then you also have neutral or no charge like neutrons, neutron, uh, neutral charge like neutrons. So they have no charge on it. It's not like it has equal positive and negative charge. It does not have only any charge. That's a neutral particle, neutral charge, right? And we all know that when you have like charges, when you have like charges, they will repel each other. When you have like charges like this, they will repel each other. So you will see that this positive and this positive will repel or this negative and this negative will repel. But when you have unlike charges, then they will basically attract each other. Here there will be attraction between them and here there will be obviously repulsion between them. Here there will be obviously repulsion between them. Is that right? That is how the behavior of charges is. And of course, the unit, the unit, unit of charge is Coulomb. Is nothing but Coulomb. Remember, it is not a fundamental quantity. It is not a fundamental quantity. In fact, if you see the dimension of the charge, it is not Coulomb. In fact, it is ampere raised to 1 into time raised to 1. That is the dimension of charges. A lot of people think Coulomb or, you know, uh, charge is a fundamental unit, fundamental quantity, fundamental dimension. But no, it is a derived quantity. So that is why you can see it is ampere raised to 1 time raised to 1. So ampere into seconds gives you a coulomb. Is that right? I'm very good Devika uh, Pidugu. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for asking. Hello. Hello. Hello everyone. Yes, Sarat, your captor is here. Thank you, Prezi. Now, next important thing regarding charges, which you should know, is that charges are always multiples of something. Like you can have a 100 rupee note, you can have a 200 rupee note, you have a 10 rupee note, but we do not get 0.5 rupee note or 0.7 rupee note. So they are always multiples of something. So similarly, even the charge is quantized in nature. Charge is quantized. Charge is basically quantized in nature. So if you give me any charge, 
it will always be positive or negative let's say some integer into the smallest value which we call as e which is 1.6 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so say for example the allowed values will be like 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 is definitely allowed even 4.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 is definitely allowed even i can say 16 into 10 to the power minus 15 coulomb is also definitely allowed in each of these cases, you can find out how many number of charges were there like 3.2 10 to the power minus 19 is two times of this so this is basically two times of e here basically is this allowed oh sorry i wrote 4.2 i wanted to write 4.8 yeah 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 19 is also allowed basically there are three charges in it in this case you can think of this as you can think of this as 1.6 into 10 to the power basically have shifted one decimal over here basically have shifted one decimal over here so into 10 to the power minus 14 so this is nothing but how many times of the 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 value if i have to multiply 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 with what will give you this obviously 1.6 has not changed only the power of 10 has changed so from 19 it became 14 so 10 to the power 5 so this is nothing but 10 to the power 5 electrons or charges basically 10 to the power 5 charges will make me get to this is that understood my dear warriors so what are these numbers 2 3 10 to the power 5 this is nothing but you know uh, 1 lakh right 10 to the power 3 is 1000 10 to the power 4 is 10,000 10 to the power 5 is 1 lakh so 1 lakh charges will give you this charge 3 charges will give you this 2 charges will give you this always integral multiples of the value e because this is the smallest charge possible what you cannot get probably is this 3 into 10 to the power minus 19 is not possible or maybe you know 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 19 is probably not possible so these values are not equal to n times of e it is not some integer times of e that is the reason why it is not possible and that's the reason why we say charge is quantized that is the smallest value is this is that right everyone with me on this cool clear -o? very good ramya very good krishna very good santimony awesome awesome now the another important property of charges oh by the way before going to the next part let me also remind you there are definitely questions like this how many charges are there in the system like it could be like you know if the charge given is something something how many charges are there in the system so all you will do is n will be q divided by so whatever value is given you divide by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 that many number of charges will be there inside that particular body or that uh, system you just divide that charge in coulombs by this value you will get the number of charges these patterns are also very common okay now let's talk about the next property and that is how you conserve the charge so let's talk about charge conservation charge conservation right so when we talk about charge conservation we are telling that the total charge is always going to remain same it is going to be conserved just like momentum and energy is conserved remember that you know uh, you cannot destroy or you cannot create magically new charges whatever is there is there so some of the best examples of this could be imagine there is a system like this and it transforms into some another system like this or you could have another example where you have two bodies okay this is before and then afterwards these two bodies are like this so say for example say for example you know this one this one had let's say you know two positive charges two positive charges and let's say it had some one two three four four negative charges or five negative charges so the total charge on this particular body the total charge on this particular body two positive five negative will make it three negative so it will have three negative charge the final system should also have three negative charges so say for example say for example if i put only one positive charge over here 
if I put only one positive charge over here, right, I will have to put one, two, three, four, four negative charges so that the total charge is conserved. Total charge is conserved. Is that making sense to all of you? Everybody with me on this? Cool. So the total charge will be conserved. No new charge can come in. No new charge can be destroyed. Whatever happens, total charge should remain conserved for an isolated system. Similarly, over here, for example, there is one positive charge here and let's say there are three positive charges here. And let's say over here there is one negative charge and maybe there are two negative charges over here. Now, if you take this entire system, if you see totally, what is the charge? By the way, this one is neutral because positive and negative will cancel out. This one, three positive, two negative. So there is one extra positive charge. One extra positive charge, so plus one, plus one over here. So this system altogether should also have plus one. This system altogether also should have plus one. Say for example, they exchange their charges and let's say this gets three negative charges. This gets three negative charge. And let's say this gets one negative charge. Example. Then what should be the total charge on the system? So say for example, uh, obviously it should be plus one. So let's say this I show two positive over here. Example. I'm just taking an example. So if these two are positive, these three are negative, the total charge on this, the total charge on this will be minus one. The total charge on this will be basically minus one, everybody, because negatives are dominating over the positives. So how much charge should be there over here? Obviously, plus one should be there before, plus one should be there afterwards. So if this is minus one, shouldn't this be plus two? Shouldn't this be plus two? So hence, how much charge will be there over here, positive? One, two, and three, three positives with one negative, one positive negative will cancel, I will get two positives. So that is how the behavior happens. The charges can go from here to here, there to here, they can jump in between the bodies, but the total charge must remain conserved. Got it, everyone? This is how it works. I'm explaining this to you via simple diagrams and via you know, practical examples, because these kind of questions do come. You would have seen in previous year need papers, a charge is being touched to another body, a three-fourth of the charge goes here, then what is the new force between them, or two identical bodies are touched, so the charge will get distributed on both the bodies equally, and that body is being touched to another body, again the charge gets distributed, what is the new force or what is the final charge, again it just uses charge conservation, remember that. Okay, having said this, let's see also the different methods of charging quickly. So methods of charging methods of charging methods of charging now primarily there are two ways of charging one is via basic conduction one is via basic conduction second is basically induction second is basically induction but obviously you have one more way and that is via rubbing, rubbing or transfer, transfer of charge. So what are these three different ways of, you know, charging a body? Usually you will use this particular method of rubbing or actual transfer from one body to the other body, generally for non-conductors, basically for insulators generally for insulators conduction cond conductor so this method is generally obviously for conductors this is for conductors this one induction of charges can happen both in conductors also in conductors also and in insulators as well and in insulators as well both of these can have induced charges so charges can be transferred or charges can be developed via three methods conduction induction and rubbing is that clear and who develops the charges via conduction induction or uh, rubbing that also i mentioned conduction con conductor rubbing rubbing insulation induction can happen among both of them insulators as well as conductors keep this in mind Okay, very good. Now, what is conduction? It's very simple. Let me show you diagrams, you will understand it. 
I'll show step by step process. Imagine there is a body and there is another body over here. Okay. And let's say there are charges on this particular body. There are basically charges on this particular body. You touch this body to this one. You basically touch this body to this one. You have to touch it, meaning it has to, you know, maintain contact for some amount of time. Then you will see, then you will see that after you touch it and you bring it separately again like this. You bring it separately again like this. Maybe some of the charges might definitely jump onto the other side. Maybe let's say two charges go here, two charges remain over here. So this is how you will see transfer of charges has happened. This is how you will see transfer of charges are happened. They are conducting because of the touch. They are conducting because of the touch. So there is actual charge motion which is happening because of a conducting path which is there between the, both of them. Two metals touching. Metal, metal can conduct. So the electrons will flow through the metal and they will transfer and exchange the charges if required. So that is basically, uh, you know, via conduction. Is this clear? This step-by-step -step process? Okay. This is via conduction. Keep this in mind. The second process is induction. We'll come to that. But before that, let me show you rubbing. Let me show you rubbing. In rubbing, you don't even need one body to be charged. In conduction, you need at least one of the bodies to be charged. Only then the charge can move or jump from one body to the other. Otherwise, what is the fun? I mean, no charges there on both the bodies. If I touch them, nothing will happen. So at least one body should be charged. Here, imagine there is one body over here and then there is another body over here and you are going to rub these two bodies against each other. You are going to basically touch and rub. You are going to touch and rub against each other and there will be friction which will be used to transfer the charges. There will be friction which will be used to transfer the charges. So after some time, you will see both these bodies will develop charge. So if this develops, let's say positive charge, an equal amount of negative charge will be developed because charge has to be conserved. Because charge has to be conserved. So this is how, you know, transfer of charges will happen. One will attract positive, one will get negative. Like rubbing glass rod on a cloth right correct or ebonite rod on silk cloth and all of that so you have seen such experiments or you uh, combing your hair suddenly you will see that the comb is able to attract bits and pieces of paper that's because of rubbing action friction action one develops positive another develops negative charge yes glass rod and cloth correct plastic rod animal fur so many examples are there for inductor remember the best example i can think of is just take any charge body and you bring it close to another body you bring it close to another body so let's say this is positively charged body this is neutral right now there is no charge on it or even if there is charge it's okay main thing is they are right now far away they do not know each other exist you bring them close to each other but you do not touch them you do not touch them that is very important maintain a small distance between them so what will happen because of this, this positive charge will pull the electrons towards itself. So you will see the negatives will be closer towards the positive than the positives themselves. So you will see that the body gets polarized. So the body gets polarized. You will see the body gets polarized. The negatives will be pulled towards the positive charge. If this was negative, then the negatives will go away from the negative charge because negative negatives will repel each other. So this is called as polarization process and this process as a whole is called induced uh, induction and these charges are also called as induced charges. Charges are induced here and there. Negative and positive are induced here and there. You are not touching, remember that. Here you are touching, here you are not touching. Here you need to touch plus rub. That's the difference. Is this pa part very very clear everyone? Yes, it's called polarization of charges. So I hope now you have got a clear cut idea of how charges are developed. I hope you got a clear cut idea of charge conservation, charge quantization and the different basic properties of charges. Okay, these basic things are there at the initial part of the chapter. Very good. Clear. Awesome. Now let's go to the main things in this particular chapter and 
the main things in this particular chapter in electrostatics specifically is force then field then potential energy then potential energy and lastly just potential later on we'll also go to dipoles that's a separate thing and gauss law and their applications but these are the main things of this chapter now let's also learn their symbols revise their symbols quickly so for force the symbol that we will generally use is f obviously for field the symbol generally used is e e from here that e over there potential energy will generally use capital u and for potential we'll use capital v these are the general symbols that we use for electric force electric field electric energy and electric potential now remember force is always there between any two charges positive positive will repel positive negative will attract even energy will always be between two charges at least forces also can be with multiple charges if there are many charges each pair of charge will attract or repel each other same way even the energy is always between at least two charges or in pairs like these two charges have energy these two charges have energy these two charges have energy these two have energy so the system has energy so force and potential energy always are dealt in pairs how are they dealt in in pairs okay you first talk about these two charges how much force are they applying to each other these two charges how much force are they applying these two how much force are they applying so always go in pairs but when you talk about field and potential it is never in pairs it's due to individual so they are a couple you can think of it like that they are like pandu champa couple but here solo life single life one by one all single entry people only so many charges are there due to you how much field is there due to you how much field is there due to you how much field is there because of this charge how much potential is there because of this how much potential is there because of that how much potential is there so due to all of you how much potential is there we will add them up and then find it out so this always is dealt one by one but here the dealing happens in pairs i hope now it is clearly entering your head i hope it is clearly entering your head so i'll make this bifurcation over here here i will just mention this point deal in pairs this will help you in exam in case you get confused at times here deal in solo deal in solo so i'll just draw one pandu and sad because he's single okay i hope you can see that pandu and over here deal in pairs so this pandu over here is definitely happy with his champa okay perfect clear okay now why i have written these two together and these two together because when you take any of these quantities and divide it per charge you get the quantity here per charge it's like per champa so you are dividing it with champa so what will happen if i divide this expression my dear warriors if i divide this with champa if i divide this with champa what will happen in the numerator also champa is there denominator also champa is there champa champa will cancel and i will get the solo quantity champa champa will cancel and i will get the solo quantity agree or disagree everybody getting this point so what happens in these cases is when you divide force with charge you get field when you divide energy with charge you get potential because one champa got cancelled solo life solo life champa champa got cancelled pandu remaining that's how it is exactly perfect so let's deal with all these quantities let's understand these quantities and their symbols and their uh, units and all those things also properly now okay so force guys what must be the unit of force obviously newton so this is expressed in newton of course this is expressed in newtons newtons correct if this is in newton field is the force per charge because one champa got cancelled one charge gets 
cancelled. So what must be the unit of field? It will be Newton per Coulomb. That is the unit. Newton per Coulomb. Later on, you will also see, instead of Newton per Coulomb, you can also use Volt per meter. That also is possible. Volt per meter is also possible. Is that clear, my dear warriors? Is that clear, my dear warriors? Very good. Next, energy. Whether it is electrical potential energy, gravitational potential energy, magnetic energy, is their unit going to be different or same? Come on, put it up in the chat box. Do they have the same units or different units? Gravitational potential energy, electrical potential energy, magnetic potential energy, spring potential energy, elastic potential energy. Do they have same units or no? Obviously, any form of energy will have same units. So they are all expressed in joules. They are all expressed in joules. So let me just put it over here. Joules or ergs, yes. Since potential is per unit charge, remember denominator champa will get cancelled with the numerator champa. So pandu, solo life will be remaining. So I should put over here joules per coulomb. Joules per coulomb will be the unit which is also nothing but volts. Which is also nothing but volts. Electrical potential is also expressed in volts. Keep this in mind. That's how you can easily remember all these things. Wow. Amazing. Now, let's also go from here to here because that was also what was needed. So if I go from here to here, this will be per, oops, this will be per unit charge. This will be per unit charge. From here to here also, I just put it as per unit charge. Per unit charge. So, if that is the case, if this is per unit charge, if I go from here to here, if I go from here to here, I'll have to multiply it by charge. I'll have to multiply it by the charge. Agree or disagree? So that is the reason why you will see that the force is given by, the force is given by, you know, the charge which you are dividing it with. So you bring back the champa, remarry the pandu with champa, break up over, they are back together. So Q into E, Q into E. So that is why the equation becomes force is equal to charge into field. Force is equal to charge into field. Similarly, potential energy will also become charge into potential. Charge into potential. Charge into potential. Very, very important formula. U will become Q into V and F will also become Q into E. Because if you go from here to here, you have to multiply back with the charge. Right? Make sense? Everyone. So break up over. Time to be back together again. Right, that is how it works. Very good. So a lot of interesting commonality between all of them. But what is the meaning of force? What is the meaning of field? What is the meaning of energy? What is the meaning of potential? How are they slightly different? Force, let's talk about force first. All right, so electrical force, which is also Coulomb's law. Coulomb's, Coulomb's law. If you have any two charges, Q1, and let's say Q2 and let's say they are separated by some distance of R between them then these two charges might repel or attract each other depending on whether they are same sign or opposite sign and that magnitude of the force the magnitude of the force is proportional to the product of the charges and it is inversely proportional to the distance between them that is why it is also called as inverse square law inverse square law inverse because it is 1 by and square because r is square that's why inverse square law and the force is given by coulomb's constant q1 q2 divided by r square where this k is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught whose value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 9 into 10 to the power 9 in si units in SI units. What is this epsilon naught? This epsilon naught is your permittivity, permitti, permittivity of free space or vacuum, permittivity of free space or vacuum, whose value is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. It is basically a term which depends on the medium because when medium changes, actually the field, the force, energy, everything changes. 
So the same charges in water or in air or in glass will behave slightly differently because of the electromechanical, uh, sorry, electromagnetic properties of that medium. Yeah, so this is something which you must be definitely aware of. So I'm just blocking this formula, which is very, very important, of course. This is your Coulomb's constant formula. Obviously, please remember the value. Obviously, you should also know this value, which is permittivity of vacuum. Correct? All these are important things. Right. Now, if the medium changes, does the permittivity change? Yes, the answer is definitely it will change. In fact, I can put it over here. If medium changes, if the medium changes, then you have a term called as epsilon of the medium, which is a k value into epsilon naught. Now, please don't confuse this k with this k. They are completely different case. Okay. This was your, you know, of vacuum. This was your permittivity of vacuum. This is of the medium. This is of the medium. This k is called as the dielectric, dielectric constant, dielectric constant of the medium of the medium so imagine this imagine this if the force between two particles in vacuum in vacuum in vacuum was 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r square the moment you go into some medium the force of those two charges in some different medium will be 1 by 4 pi k epsilon naught into q1 q2 divided by r square this k epsilon naught i can just call it as epsilon of the medium q1 q2 divided by r square that is the force in that new medium remember the permittivity of free space has been replaced with permittivity of that medium this is the permittivity of that medium this k is the dielectric constant of the medium if somebody asks you what is the dielectric constant of air what do you think the answer should be what do you think the answer should be come on quickly put it up in the chat box yes we'll be dealing with capacitance and capacitor also it's going to be a long lecture definitely with breaks yes what do you think my dear warriors dielectric constant of air what do you think it is yes in air and vacuum it's almost similar so there is no change in permittivity k is roughly one only so it is approximately you can put it as one is that understood perfectly very good excellent keep this in mind what about the dielectric constant of conductors what about the dielectric constant of conductors what do you think it is going to be is it going to be one or is it going to be something else what do you think it will be Come on, put it up in the chat box. I'm reading uh, your chats. Dielectric constant of conductors. Come on, think, think, think carefully. Yes, put it up, put it up, put it up. Very good. Some of you got it. Yes, it is infinity, finally. Yes, yes, it tends towards infinity. Give this in mind. Very large value, infinitely large. That is the dielectric constant of a conductor. It is not zero. A lot of people say zero. No, it is not zero, okay? It is infinity. Very good. It is not zero. Please keep that in mind. Awesome. So all these are, again, very, very important stuff permittivity of any medium is constant of dielectric into epsilon naught and in the new medium this is the modified formula this is your modified formula which you will be using correct so that was electric force that was electric force between two charges okay that is what i have put up so just to tell you about one example which i can think of imagine Imagine if the force between two charges between two charges in air is 20 Newton 
then then in a ceramic in a ceramic whose whose dielectric whose dielectric constant is 400 new force new force between them is new force between them is how much that is the question that is the question okay if you put it in a medium of dielectric constant 200 what happens the moment you put a dielectric medium the entire force equation only gets divided by k the entire force equation only gets divided by k so can i say that the force in the medium the force new force in the medium is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k q1 q2 divided by r square if you want take that 1 by k separate so that you can see things very clearly what exactly is happening q1 q2 by r square over here this term only this term in the brackets only is 20 newton and k value is nothing but k value is nothing but 400 0 0 cancel cancels so this will just become 1 by 20 1 by 20 of a newton so from 20 newton it has gone to 1 by 20 of a newton yeah correct 0 0.05 so point is whenever such questions come you just divide the force in vacuum with the constant you will get the new value of the force okay so these are very very important crucial problems okay so this is going to depend on the material this is going to decide uh, you know how much force is going to pass in that medium between any two charges great so that was your force part let's talk about field and then also go to energy and potential after this so moving on to moving on to field like i said field field is is the electric force electric force per unit per unit test charge per unit test charge that is what field is per unit test charge so that's why it is newton per coulomb so if i take some body if i take some body which is charged you take a test charge remember test charge has to be always positive then try to find the force on it try to find the force on it divide it with the test charge let's say the test charge was q that will give you that will give you the electric field at that particular point so this is the main equation how you find the field at any point by dividing the force with charge remember just some time back i told you force is charge into field as simple as that so now that you understand okay this is how field is found you take a testing charge which always has to be positive remember mandatory by convention or else every person will say i will take positive other person will say negative so there is no unanimity there will be no correct answer then that's why we made as a standard it's just like why do i drive on the left side of the road you're like sir i can drive from the right side other people can drive on the left side we need to have some rules no or else everybody will do dishum dishum only so that is the reason why we have a convention okay now if you take if you basically take a positive charge versus a negative charge how does the field around it look like and how is it slightly different if you are around a positive charge let's say you are here the field will be very 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 strong the field will be very very strong and the field will try to apply a force in the outward direction because if you put a positive charge here it will repel if you put a positive charge here it will repel here it will repel here it will repel it will always try to repel a positive charge okay it will always try to basically repel a positive charge so the field is very strong and it is outwards as you go slightly more far away the field will become slightly weaker the field will become slightly weaker because of the distance effect because of the distance effect you will see the field will be slightly weak as you go even far the field will become even weaker and i'm showing that by reducing the thickness of this particular pen so that you can actually visualize it 
so that you can actually visualize it right you can see the thickness of the pen is reducing that shows that the field is reducing and when you go really really far away the field will be even weak the field will be even weaker something like this okay and it reduces to zero when you go to infinity so you need to go really really far away to actually make it zero that means never it is infinitely far away that is how it works great so this is basically your radially outward field this is your radially radially outward field by a positive charge similarly for a negative charge similarly for a negative charge you will see that when you are close by it will be very strong it will be very strong but it will be towards the negative charge why because if you take a positive test charge if you take a positive test charge it will get pulled by it the because of that attraction that's why i'm showing it inwards as you go far away the field will obviously gradually reduce i can't show much over here because the diagrams will overlap but yeah you get the idea this hopefully creates a beautiful image of how field works right are you able to visualize electric field now are you able to visualize electric field my dear warriors quickly think and tell me isn't it a beautiful diagram of the field electric field okay let's show some few more lines over here over here and over here and over here and over here and over here beautiful this is how electric field lines look like looks like csk wow very nice okay cool so this is a radially inwards field radially inwards electric field radially inwards electric field what are these lines called as obviously these are called as electrical field lines because they show you how electric field is moving they show you how electric field travels from one place to another so it gives you an idea of it so that is why they are called as electrical field lines so field is the force per unit charge and uh, for measuring the field you take a positive test charge so divide the force with the charge you get the value of the field at that particular point and if you show the field at different places and try to join those lines what you get is the electrical field lines you get the electrical field lines so if you have more charges and together now these were isolated they were not together remember they are very very far they do not know each other exist but if i take probably a positive charge with a negative charge something like this with a negative charge then the electric field lines look very interesting over here so you will see probably the electric field will go from positive to negative like this another line will probably go like this another line will go like this another line will go like this maybe another line will go like this another line will probably go like this another line will go probably like this more lines will be there maybe i cannot show them because it will go out of the board yeah like that they will always start from the positive charge like this always and they will end up at the negative charge they will end up at the negative charge like that beautiful diagram to find how the electric field lines look like right these are the electric field lines electric electric field lines due to a system of charges due to a system of basically charges keep this in mind everybody fine till this point very good now now what are some of the interesting properties about these electric field lines first of all if you have a electric field line like this and then you show another field line another field line crossing it this is not possible reason for that lies in the statement whenever you have a electric field line like this if this is your electric field line then if i happen to place if i happen to place a charge over here if i happen to place a charge over here remember the electric force will act along the tangent drawn to it electric force will always act along the tangent drawn to it at that point in fact this force remember is the charge value multiplied by the field 
charge value multiplied by the field at that point. So just imagine if there are two or more field lines, they cross over each other, then there will be two tangents, two forces. Which force direction is correct? There will be confusion. I don't want that confusion. That is why, remember, always there is a unique direction. Unique. There is no confusion over there. Yes. So they cannot intersect. So basically, they can't intersect. They can't intersect. That is one more thing. Force is Q times of E. That is another thing which I had already given to you before. But I am highlighting over here again. Remember, there are two scenarios over here. If Q is positive versus Q is negative. If Q is positive versus Q is negative, what is the difference? What is the difference? If this is the charge, if this is the charge, right? And this is the field, this is the field. For a positive charge, for a positive charge, you will see that the force is in the direction of the field. The force is in the direction of the field. If Q is negative like an electron, the force will be opposite. The force will be opposite to the field. Why? Because Q will be minus. So minus times a vector means you are flipping the vector. Positive times a vector, you are just elongating or compressing that vector. So that is why for positive values, it's in the same direction as the field. For negative values, it will be opposite. Remember that. It will be opposite to the direction of the field. Is this point also very, very clear? Very good. Also, important thing to note, also important thing to note, if you take a positive charge, if you take a positive charge versus a negative charge, remember field lines will always originate, it will always originate from a positive charge. They will always originate from a positive charge. It can never end on a positive charge. On a negative charge, they can only do one thing and that is terminate. They can only do one thing and that is terminate on the negative charge. It can never happen from a negative charge. It is coming out. That is illegal to do so. Another interesting thing that you will see is that if you have a small charge versus a big charge, versus a big charge, from a small charge, if you see, let's say, you know, three field lines are coming from a big charge you will see even more field lines are coming so the number of field lines is directly proportional to the charge itself so field lines field lines is directly proportional to the charge which you are talking about if more charge is there more field will also come out of it is this also very very clear all these are properties of electrical field lines another important trend that you will see regarding electrical field is that if the field lines are like this, if the field lines are basically like this, if these are your electric field lines, you will see if they are, you know, not same, even and the distance between them is changing, the field value will also change like the one over here. Here they are close by, it is strong. When they go far, it is weak. Strong is shown by thick pen. Weak is shown by thin pen over here to visualize it. So same way over here, I can say that the field is, uh, you know, very weak over here, very weak over here, and it is very strong over here. It is basically very strong over here. That is another important property of the electric field lines. Exactly. So this kind of field, by the way, is also called as non-uniform field, non-uniform field because somewhere it is strong somewhere it is weak but by chance it happens that the electric field lines are exactly parallel and evenly spaced evenly spaced then such a field such a field is said to be uniform field such a field is said to be uniform electric field so can you quickly tell me is this field uniform or non-uniform put it up in the chat box Put it up in the chat box. Is this field uniform or non-uniform? Yes, definitely. Yes, that is non-uniform. Very good. Because the lines are not equally spaced. Plus, they are not even parallel. They are continuously changing. So, this is a non-uniform field. Definitely non-uniform field. Okay, so uniform field means the lines should be parallel to each other. So, these are some interesting properties about electrical field lines electrical field lines very good 
let's move now so we have spoken about force we have spoken about electric field these two quantities shall we now discuss potential energy and potential shall we now discuss potential energy and potential right so let's do that going down potential energy let's discuss this electrical potential energy so whenever you have a system of charges let's say q1 q2 are you know two charges remember always for potential energy and force you always deal with them in pairs you always deal with them in pairs where did it go yeah over here these two things are always dealt in pairs q1 q2 right always these two things are always dealt in singularities so one by one right that is how you deal with them so for potential energy you need a pair of charges and let us say they are separated by some distance of r then for this particular system then for this particular system or a pair of charge for this particular system or for basically this pair of charge the electrical potential energy is given by k which is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 is also there but instead of r square what is there only r is there only r is there keep this in mind so this is the formula for the electrical potential energy of that pair of charges what is that electrical energy that is the energy required to assemble these charges from infinity to whatever distance they are in so electrical potential energy is the work done by external force or forces to assemble the system to assemble the system so strictly speaking i can also say u is nothing but work done by external force and slowly slowly you bring them together so dw work done by external force from infinity to r from infinity to r that is the true definition of it why dw because they were very far slowly 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 you bring them together and place it at the required distance over here so that is why you are integrating small small work to bring them together that is the true definition of it yeah i hope this is clear very nice okay that is electrical potential energy right now it so happens that if you have either positive positive or both negative then in both these cases your potential energy is positive basically for like charges when they repel and if you take a positive charge along with a negative charge then you will see that in this case the potential energy is going to be negative why does this happen because if both are alike they will repel so when you bring them together you have to do some positive work so because you do some positive work externally imagine you have to it's like you know imagine pandu and champa they fought they don't like each other they don't like each other they repel each other so you have to do work to bring them together isn't that right isn't that right correct so you have to do work on the system so positive work but positive negative it's like in a classroom pandu and champa very naughty fellows they love each other so whatever happens pandu and champa always sit on the same bench it must have happened in your class too some pandu and champa so the teacher has to pull them apart you have to pull them apart so if they are very far pandu and champa will find each other and they will sit together so they will accelerate towards each other so in fact you have to slow them down you have to suck away the energy you will be like hey wait don't come close to each other stand far away yeah so that is the reason why you will be doing negative work because you are sucking their energy and you are preventing them from you know sticking to each other understand that okay i hope this example made sense right you are a pandu oh you are a pandu where is your champa sarat mm hmm negative work done by the teacher correct 
All right. So that was your electrical potential energy. Now the last thing which we'll see is electric potential. Let's have a look at it. Electric potential. Just like electrical energy was the work done by external forces to assemble the system. This is the external work done. External work done per unit test positive charge from infinity to the point from infinity to the point where you want to keep find the potential so the previous one was without per charge this one is per unit charge so work done per unit charge that's the only difference otherwise everything is same remember the symbol for potential was v so work done by external force will be dw external but per unit test charge so divide by q the whole thing from infinity to r will give you the electric potential at that particular point as simple as that as simple as that cool so you might have some system of charges positive positive negative negative positive anything you want to find what is the electric potential you want to find what is the electric potential at that point so you will take the test charge you will take that test charge you will take it from infinity and slowly you will bring it at this particular point you will slowly bring it at this particular point from infinity to over here and that's how you find the electric potential at that point at that point very good excellent excellent now in all these things there is one thing which is common and that is the superposition principle so say for example we did this okay say for example you, these kind of questions are again very common let's say you have a positive charge or i'll just put some charge over here some charge over here let's say q1 then some charge over here let's say q2 some charge over here let's say q3 some charge over here let's say q4 example and then let's say there is another new charge which is placed over here let's say it is q capital each of these pairs will attract or repel this capital q charge for example q1 for example q1 so what will happen where did our line go yes between q1 and q between q2 and q between q3 and q between q4 and q all of them will have attraction or repulsion depending on the signs of the charges for example q1 if it is positive this is also positive then it will definitely repel each other definitely it will repel each other so that will be the force one q2 if it is negative maybe it will attract q3 maybe it is positive maybe it will repel so this will be f3 this is let's say f2 similarly q4 might be attractive or repulsive depending on their signs so this is f4 so the total the net the net force the net force on that basically capital q due to due to other charges due to other charges is nothing but is nothing but given by f bar is f1 plus f2 like that till fn how many ever charges are there you add them together that's it this is called as the principle of superposition principle of superposition superpositioning that's it that is the principle of superposition you find the force due to each one of them and then vectorially add it remember this is vector addition remember this is vector addition vector addition keep that in mind okay vector addition so if you get a question in the examination like this three charges are there this is q this is minus q and this is q they are on the vertices of an equilateral triangle of side a question is question is let's say uh, find find force 
find the force on Q. Find the force on Q. Let's say this one or this one. Okay. If that is the question, what will you do? Come on, everybody solve with me. Everybody solve with me. What are you going to do, my dear warriors? First thing, this minus Q and this Q, this minus Q and plus Q will attract each other. So on this Q, there will be an attractive force like this. So there will be an attractive force. Let's say I call it F1. Similarly, this Q and this Q, same charges, they will repel each other. So I will definitely show a force like this. I will call it as F2. I will call it as F2. Can you guess what is the angle between F1 and F2? Can you guess what is the angle between F1 and F2? Put it up in the chat box quickly. This is an equilateral triangle. So this angle is 60 degree. So my dear warriors, isn't this angle going to be basically 60 degree, my dear students? This is just going to be 60 degree. Very good. So how much is this particular angle going to be? Obviously 120 degree. Obviously 120 degree. So my dear students, when I try to find the net force, when I try to find the net force acting on it, won't it be just the vector sum of F1 and F2 who are placed at 120 degrees or placed at 120 degrees? Very good. So magnitude wise, what will be the value of F? Recollect the formula of vectors. Recollect the formula of vectors. A and B placed at an angle of theta. A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. In this case, cos theta is cos 120. Cos 120, right? But interesting thing to note is that F1, F1 magnitude wise is K Q Q by A square. Similarly, F2 is also K Q Q divided by A square. Both of them are equal because they are equal. Let me call them as X. Let me just call them as X. K Q Q by X is sorry, A square K Q Q by A square. Don't put signs because these are just magnitudes. These are just the magnitudes I'm talking about. Oh, sir, the magnitudes are same. I have assumed it as X. So all these are X's only. All these are basically X's only. So what will happen? All these are X only. So this will be nothing but X square plus X square plus 2X square. Cos 120 is minus half. Cos 120 is minus half. Take X outside the root. That's it. You will get 1 plus 1 minus 1 because 2 into 2, 2 by 2 is 1. So 1, 1 cancels. I'll just get X. What is the value of X? The value of X is K Q square by A square. So that is the net force. That is the net force. Done and dusted. Got it? How to solve these kind of questions? Awesomeness. Very good. No, the answer will not be root 3F. I think... Uh, you miss, uh, did a small mistake over here. This will be minus. If you miss the minus, you will get plus and you will put it as root 3. Okay. So that would be a completely different problem. Okay. That would be when all the charges are positive or all the charges are negative. So be very careful with the signs also. Be very careful with the positive and the negative signs. Understood how to use the principle of superposition. Got it, my dear students? Excellent. Is principle of superposition also valid for electrostatics field? Yes, definitely. Let's go to those kind of questions also. So let's say, my dear warriors, again, you have a charge here, again a charge here, and again a charge here. You can have more charges. But now you don't have the fourth charge. You just have a point. Nothing is there over there. What is the field at that point? What you do? How do you find the field at that particular point? Well, simple. You just draw the lines from all the charges to that point. And then all you need to do is due to Q1 charge, if it is positive, it will be a repulsive field. So maybe E1 field is there. If Q2 is negative, maybe attractive field. So I'll put E2 over here. Q3 maybe is also negative. So another field over here. Let's say E3. If another field is there, maybe repulsive, I will show outwards. So when I add all of them, when I add all of them, I will get basically the net field. I will basically get the net electric field. And this net electric field will be how much? It will be the E1 bar plus E2 bar like that till you know the 
nth electric field. Again, remember this is vector sum, vector addition, not scalar addition. You have to be careful with the directions. Signs, si directions will definitely matter. This is also nothing but your superpositioning. Superpositioning. Is that right? This is also nothing but your superpositioning. So, again, if you had a question like this, let's say one charge here, one charge here, one charge here. Okay, this is also Q. This is, let's say, minus Q. Let's say this is Q. And they are on the vertices of a square this time. This is A, this is A. And then they ask you, listen, there is a point here. There is a point here. At this particular point, what is the field? What is the field at that particular point? The question is, find the field at the particular point. What do you do now? What do you do now? All right. Come on. Let's do this together, my dear students. At this point, due to this charge, there will be a repulsive because it's a positive charge. It's a positive charge, so repulsive field. So let's say I call it as K, Q, O. But what is the field due to that? That formula I have not yet given, but I will give it to you right now over here. Uh, where did it go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So field due to a point charge. So when you have a point charge, when you have a point charge and you want to find the field at this particular point, when you want to find the field at this particular point, the formula for that is K Q uh, divided by basically R square. K Q divided by R square is the formula for the field due to a point charge. Field due to point charge. Field due to point charge. Is that clear? Absolutely. Everybody? Yes. Yes. Electric field only, obviously. Electric field only. Which other field? Right? Okay. So let's go over here. Let's go over here and let's try to find the formula uh, for the total field. So what are the charges over here? Uh, Q minus Q and Q. Field due to this Q will be K Q divided by distance square. No Q Q. Only one single Q. Due to this Q, because it is positive, again repulsive field. So again it will be K Q divided by A square. Due to this negative charge, there will be an attractive field like this. And it will be magnitude wise K Q. But I need this distance. I need that distance. Remember, in a square, if this is A, this is A. How much is this? This is root 2 times of A. Root 2 times of A. So my dear warriors, over here, this will be K Q divided by root 2 times of A square root 2 times of a square. These are the three fields. All are in different directions. You will do the vector addition. How? Take the simple vectors first. Which are the simplest vectors? I think these two because they are perpendicular to each other. So if I just try to figure out what is the resultant of these two vectors? What is the resultant of these two vectors like this? Obviously, both of them being of the same magnitude, both of them being of the same magnitude, this vector will be root 2 times any of these vector. If this is 1, this is 1, this is root 2. Just like if this is a, this is a, this is root 2 times of a. So x, x, root 2 x. So that is the reason why this will be root 2 times k, q divided by a square. Fair enough. Now, all I need to worry about is I have this resultant which is root 2 times k q by a square. This one is remaining. It's exactly opposite of this. It's exactly opposite of this. And how much is the value? It is k q divided by root 2 a square will become root 2 root 2 will cancel. It will or root 2 into root 2 will become 2. It will become 2 a square. It will become 2 a square. Both of them are opposite. Both of them are opposite. This is small. This is big. So where will the resultant be? The net field will be here. The net field, the net electric field will be here because this is root 2 times, this is by 2 times. So the net field will be here. So how much will be the net field, my dear students? It will be nothing but, it will be nothing but this value minus this value. So root 2 times kq divided by a square minus k 
kq divided by a square so kq divided by a square common root 2 root 2 minus 1 by 2 if you want you can take it on the top so it will become kq 2 root 2 minus 1 divided by 2 a square so that will give you the net electric field that will give you the net electric field is that clear everyone awesome awesome yes so yes you can use that cost formula also but i think that will not be needed because when two things are opposite if one force is 5 newton other force is 9 newton opposite what is the net force 9 minus 5 so you can directly do it you don't have to use vector addition formula make sense okay so no need of putting minus 1 and all i know they are opposite so that is why i put minus this minus this will be the net field that is how you use super positioning principle okay okay right we'll come to relationship between field and potential also in a bit but for now let's focus on these problems at hand now similarly is there super positioning sir for potential energy the answer is definitely a yes okay so again just imagine there is one charge here 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 okay one two three four five in these type of questions what is usually asked is what is the potential energy of the system what is the potential energy of the system so what you need to do is you will have to take it in pairs like the total potential energy will be will be nothing but u12 plus u13 plus u14 plus u15 that's it nothing more then plus u23 plus u24 plus u25 that's it similarly plus u34 plus u35 yes anything else remaining u31 is done u32 is also done do not put u32 because u23 is same as u32 so don't put it again right and anything more yes u45 so many terms will be there first potential energy of these two then these two then these two then these two then these two these two these two these two these two like that so you have to take it in pairs that's all you have to just take it in pairs so many terms will be there all possible spares but this is a scalar addition scalar because potential energy is a scalar so scalar addition of all the pairs all the pairs of potential energy all the pairs u12 u13 so all the pairs possible that is the difference that is the major major difference correct so imagine you get a question like this imagine you get a question like this where this is q this is minus q this is also minus q and this is q and then they tell you that these are on the vertices of a square vertices of a square and the question is what is the potential energy of the system what is the potential energy of the system let's try to do this my dear students take every single possibility so the total potential energy is let me call let me call this as one this as two this as three and this as four just for our sake just for our sake to number nothing more so u12 how much is okay so we'll have u12 over here then we'll also have u13 over here correct we'll also have u14 over here correct we'll also have u23 over here we'll also have u24 uh, over here correct u24 u21 is already taken care of u31 is also done so u34 will be there that's it so many terms will be there six terms will be there just check it out okay uh yeah for the number of pairs it will be nc2 yeah somebody was asking sir how many number of pairs so the total this is not needed but i'm just giving you this as a side information total number of pairs total number of pairs is actually nc2 which is n into n plus 1 divided by 2 so if there are five uh things so 5 into 5 plus 1 by 2 6 by 2 is 3 so you will have 
sorry, 5 plus 1, yeah, 6, 6 by 2 is 3, so 3 into 5. So that is how it will be, 15, right? Everybody with me on this? Right. Uh, why did I put n plus 1? No, it is n minus 1. n into n minus 1, my bad. Because it is not 15. n into n minus 1, yes, my bad. So it will be 5 into 4 by 2, so basically, yeah, 10 pairs. Correct. Similarly, over here also, six, uh, 4 people are there. So 4 into, basically, 4 minus 1 is 3 by 2. So 2 into 3, 6. Yes, correct. So 6 pairs are there. So what is the value of each pair? U12. It will be nothing but k, q, q. It will be minus k, q square divided by a. Remember the formula for potential energy, my dear warriors? The formula for potential energy is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught or k into q1, q2 by r sign sensitive. It can be positive or negative both possibilities are there. So minus because 1 is positive, 1 is negative. u13, I think it will be positive. So k, q square by a. u14, u14, it will be negative. So minus k, q square divided by a. u23, which is this one, minus into plus is minus. So minus k q square divided by a. Then u24, 24, 24 is this one. Minus into minus is plus. So k q square by a. And last one is u34, which is, sorry, this one, which is positive, negative will make it negative. So k q square divided by a. So guys, think carefully and tell me what is the answer. I can see three negative terms, four negative terms and two positive terms. So negative, positive, cancel, negative, positive, cancel, two negatives are there. I can see two negatives are there. So what is the final answer, my dear warriors? Check it out. Check it out. Everybody with me? Come on, come on, come on. Is the answer negative or zero or positive? Come on, figure it out. Huh. Now here comes the big problem. Lot of people, what they do in these square problems, usually, this is what is the common mistake what they do. They feel that, sir, the answer is minus 2k q square by a. But the problem is, you know, you have to be really careful with 1, 3 and 2, 4. 1, 3 and 2, 4. Because between 1, 3 and 2, 4, the distance is not a. Got my point? Between 1, 3 and 2, 4, the distance is not a. How much is the distance? For 1, 3, it is actually root 2 times of a. For uh, 2, 4, which is over here, right, it is also root 2 times of a. It is basically root 2 times of a. That is the big, big catch. Lot of people miss that. That root 2 times. That root 2 times is what people miss. So this into this positive, this into this also positive. So these both are adding this is negative, this is negative, this is negative, this is negative. Okay, so I will essentially get it as 2 times of k q square by root 2 a and 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 terms, this, this, this and this all are negative. So 4 times of k q square divided by a, right? So I can just take k q square by a common, k q square by a common. 2 by root 2 is root 2. So root 2 minus 4. So root 2 minus 4. That is the answer. Root 2 minus 4 is the answer. Everybody understood? Clear? Yes. Yeah, Pradiva. Yes, it should be root 2. Yes, Krishna. Root 2a. Yes. Yes, Suharshita. Very good. You guys answered it before I found your uh, common silly mistake, which is done usually. So I need to do all these things in front of you. Or else, if you just read from the book, you think that I will do it in the exam. But these are the kind of mistakes which you might do in the exam. I don't want you to do it. Great. Now, a slightly modified version of this question can be like this. In previous question, the size is tripled. The size is tripled. The new potential energy of the system is how much this previous question whatever it was the size is tripled that means you take them far apart it becomes a big square what will be the new energy of the system okay let's do one thing first of all 
the initial energy of the system was we just found it out k q square k q square divided by a and we had root 2 minus 4 we had root 2 minus 4 now think about it think about it my dear warriors you just tripled it that means this a has been made three times oh perfect so the final energy will be because a will be tripled will be k q square by 3a into root 2 minus 4 oh perfect wow this is amazing so now we found out the new potential energy of the system can we also find delta u of the system can we also find the change in the energy of the system change in the energy means final minus initial energy change in the uh, energy of the system means final minus initial energy so delta u my dear warriors delta u my dear warriors will be final which is k q square by 3 a into root 2 minus 4 minus minus this one which is k q square by a into root 2 minus 4 this is 1 by 3 this is 1 1 by 3 minus 1 is minus 2 by 3 1 by 3 forget the other things forget the other things this is minus 1 okay this is 1 by 3 1 by 3 minus 1 is nothing but minus 2 by 3 so shouldn't this particular answer be minus of 2 by 3 you can have k q square into root 2 minus 4 which you can further simplify by taking minus sign inside so it will become 2 oh sorry this a is also there 2 k q square by 3 a into 4 minus root 2 into 4 minus root 2 right what a brilliant way of solving this what a brilliant uh, way of solving this minus 2 by 3 yes i have taken the minus sign inside very nice so this is the change in the potential energy of the system these kind of questions do come now what kind of questions can also come is what is the work done by the external agent what is the work done by the external agent in changing this energy remember always remember always work done by the external agent is just going to change the potential energy of the system so hence this answer is same as this so this is also the work done by the external force this is also the work done by the external force as simple as that so these are the kind of questions that might be asked one more variation which can be asked is what is the work done by the electric force what is the work done by the electric force when such a question comes you need to be little alert the work done by the electric force is not delta u of the system it is minus delta u of the system so whatever answer you got over here you multiply it with a minus sign that's it so the work done by electric force is minus of this so here i will put 2 k q square by 3 a but instead of 4 minus root 2 i'll put it as root 2 minus 4 root 2 minus 4 that is the work done by electric force keep this in mind cool so let me give you the formula list over here so that you are very very clear about this if delta u of the system is asked what will you do final energy minus initial energy if they ask you work done by external force this is external please remember that external force it will be just delta u of the system if they ask you work done by electric force it is going to be minus delta u of the system external force versus the internal force external force whatever i do will go in changing the energy of the system like i lift a ball i am doing work i am adding to the potential energy but gravity will do negative work okay so this is the formula list for those kind of questions these kind of questions are also very very common keep this in mind right shall we go ahead everybody loving this session everybody liking this session everybody revising the concepts through this session give me a thumbs up clearly
हाउ सर फोर माइनस रूट टू केम दैट केम ओवर हियर वन टू थ्री फोर फोर टर्म्स वर देर सो दैट्स वाई फोर टाइम्स के क्यू स्क्वेर बाय विद नेगेटिव साइन दीज टू टर्म्स वर देर टू टाइम्स सो टू टाइम्स के क्यू स्क्वेर बाय रूट टू ए सो टू बाय रूट टू विल बिकम रूट टू रूट टू राइट सो रूट टू विल गो ऑन द टॉप सो रूट टू माइनस फोर सो रूट टू माइनस फोर इज दैट ओके अंडरस्टूड हाउ इट केम ओके All right, perfect. And this same data I used it over here, this and this place because it became three times more. So size will become more. So denominator will become three times. Then I found the change by subtracting them, and then work external, work electric, everything I was able to find it out. Okay. Now electric potential, guys. Let's go to that also. So first of all, one important formula: if you have a charge and you are at a distance r, and at this particular point. you want to find the electric potential the electric potential formula is kq divided by r no q square no r square that's it kq divided by r due to a point charge due to a point charge electric potential due to a point charge very very important formula is superposition applicable here also and questions on superposition are very very common so some something like this there are two charges and they are placed on the vertices of an equilateral triangle let's say this is q let's say this is 2q this is a this is a question is what is the electric potential at this point what is the electric potential at this point right so in this case remember again when you find the total potential you will find the potential due to 1 plus potential due to 2 this is a scalar addition scalar addition you are just adding pure numbers this is scalar addition by superposition again by superposition so what is the potential due to the first charge it is k q divided by the distance which is a what is the potential due to the other charge it is k into 2 q divided by a oh so the final answer will be nothing but k q 3 times divided by a 3 kq divided by as simple as that <laughs> got it everyone right so this is another kind of question which you can get with regards to electric potential now just like we had electric potential sorry electric field lines are there electric potential lines the answer is yes the answer is yes so imagine you take a charge imagine you take a charge and you try to find all the points around that charge which have the same potential obviously what you are going to get is a beautiful circle what you are going to get is a beautiful circle at all these points the distances are same potential will be same at all these points also distances are same potential will be same so what you get is basically circles like this maybe potential here then okay these lines are basically called as equipotential lines equi potential lines basically anywhere on this point this point this point this point potentials are same because they are at the same distance from that particular charge so that is why the potentials are going to be same remember potentials are scalar quantities so directions do not really matter directions don't really matter so i can assign them some values also like maybe this is potential v1 this is potential v2 this is potential v3 this is potential v4 so on and so forth different different potentials now imagine i take a charge from one potential line and to another potential line like this path does not matter because 
it is a conservative force so path really doesn't matter if i go from one point to the other point then the potentials are changing so energy will also change so if a charge charge small q is moved from from a point to other the change in its potential energy is given by delta u is charge into the potential difference the change in the potential energy is given by charge into the voltage difference this is coulombs uh, sorry this is joules per coulomb into coulomb is joules this is joules this is coulombs this is joules per coulomb so you take it through a voltage difference you will see the energy will change by this much this is again a very important formula not to forget that this is also the work done by the external force which is also negative of the work done by electric force by electric force keep this in mind so i had just given it to you some time back delta u is work done by external and negative of electric forces work is delta u right so minus sign only comes when you talk about the electric forces work internal forces work otherwise it is positive only otherwise it is positive only correct so this is the correct answer for this for changing of the potential energy when you move a charge from one point to the other but sometimes you might just be moving on the same line let's say you know you are just going like this and you come back over here where you are moving like this and you come back over here in this case the work done will be zero the change in the potential energy will also be zero because you are on the same same potential line so there is no change in the energy there is no work done at all there is no work done at all and this concept remember is actually used in many places like modern physics where you might be given where you might be given there is a charge there is a charge q and what is done you are accelerating it by a potential difference potential difference delta v just like over here from one point to the other you have changed the potential by some value delta v so if it is accelerated by a potential difference of delta v then what is the speed of the particle what is the speed of the particle these kind of questions and this speed can be also used for some other calculations so what do you do in that case see when you are accelerating it through a voltage difference that means you are involving some electrical energy change here at this point here at this point what just happened here at this point the kinetic energy initially is nothing here the kinetic energy finally is something it is definitely not zero it is there from here to here if it has gained kinetic energy what must it lose what must it lose obviously it must lose potential energy on its way so when this happens it basically loses its potential energy so that it converts it into kinetic energy so can i then say that the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy is basically delta u final kinetic energy is half m let's say speed is u square initial energy is basically zero delta u from the previous formula is charge into voltage charge into voltage there you go this is how you can find the kinetic energy or even the speed so from this only you can get the speed u is 2 times q times delta v the whole thing divided by the mass whole thing under the root whole thing under the root this is how this problem is solved understood this is the method so a lot of you must be wondering in modern physics how it comes so this is how it comes so from this you can find momentum kinetic energy anything that you want this is the concept used 
accelerating a charge through a voltage difference moving a charge across one potential line to the next potential line this is what it is right shall we go ahead my dear warriors shall we go ahead my dear warriors pakka okay another famous question which they love to ask or the model which they love to ask is where they give you two charges let's say q and 2q example it could be positive negative doesn't matter and let's say the separation between them is basically r and then they ask you to find i'll create a duplicate of this find find where potential is zero that is one kind of question which can be asked and other question which can be asked is find where field is zero a point where potential is zero and a point where field is zero these are both kinds of questions which can be asked so how to solve them let's go one by one potential is zero potential is scalar keep that in mind so direction never really matters positive charge will give positive potential negative charge will give negative potential around it so when you talk about positive charge my dear warriors think about it here 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 everywhere due to that the contribution is positive due to this guy the contribution is negative if the total potential has to be zero that means the positive and the negative contributions must cancel each other out so i feel somewhere here in between the potential will be zero somewhere here in between the potential will be zero so let's assume a point here let's call this as x so how much will this be r minus x this will be r minus x so the total potential is potential due to q plus the potential due to minus 2q this value is given to be zero because of this charge the potential will be k q divided by x due to this it will be k into minus 2q remember potential is a sign sensitive equation divided by r minus x okay so this guy i will bring it here so it will become k 2 times q divided by r minus x is equal to k q divided by x obviously we can cross multiply and also cancel k q on both sides so 2 into x is there is equal to r minus x is equal to r minus x bring that x on this side it will become 3x is equal to r therefore x is equal to r divided by 3 x is equal to r divided by 3 so at this location the net potential is zero at this point net potential is zero everyone okay everyone pakka guys make sure you talk in english or else you will be timed out by the admin yes yeah make sure you are talking in english out here definitely yeah shall we continue okay till this point is is clear how the potential becomes zero now another type of question like i said when is the field zero if field is supposed to be zero you need to be little careful because field is a vector quantity so direction matters positive charge will give field like this outwards negative charge will give field like this inwards so think like this this will give a field in this direction and this direction the negative charge will give inward field like this and like this where do you think the chances of cancelling out are there where do you think the chances of cancelling out are there think carefully is it here no in fact they are in the same direction so they can't cancel here is it here maybe is it here maybe so either it is here or it is here either it is on left side of q or it is on the right side of q because that's where the fields are opposite but think again and you will understand you will understand not both of them are possible not both of them are possible because the charges are of different magnitude because the charges are of different magnitude is potential is negative yes uh, siva prasad potentials can be positive or negative both so that's why in the previous problem you saw that for minus 2q charge i use the minus sign okay you have to be careful with it because it is a sign sensitive equation 
This negative charge, 2q, is more powerful here. So the field will be strong. This charge giving positive field is weak and distance is also large. Maybe they will not cancel out so easily. Maybe they will not cancel out so easily. Because negative charge, more field and closer. Stronger field and closer, obviously they will not be able to cancel out each other. But here, due to this Q, you are close but the charge is less. But due to minus 2Q, the, uh, the field is more but because of the distance, the field is less. Oh, so the possibility of cancellation is only over here somewhere. Possibility of cancellation is only here somewhere. Let's assume the distance as x. Did you understand why here and why not here? Did you understand it? Because in this part of the region, the charge is also more and the distance is also less. So due to negative charge, the field is very high. But the green line is very far from Q and the charge is also less. So the green line is very weak field. So how can a weak field cancel a strong field? But here, due to this charge, the charge might be less, but you are close. And this charge might be more, but the distance is obviously more. So the field will always balance out. So that is the reason why I have taken this region, why the field will be zero. I hope this is very, very clear. Right. Now, in order to find the net field is zero, here is the logic, electric field, electric field is due to the positive charge also and electric field is also due to the minus 2q charge also. These both, these both magnitudes must be equal to each other so that the net field will cancel out. Due to q, it will be k q divided by x square. Due to Q, at this point, the field will be KQ divided by X square. Due to minus 2Q at this point, the field will be KQ divided by R plus X whole distance. R plus X whole square. KQ, KQ cancels. Take X square on the top, right? And, oh sorry, this was 2Q, my bad. I forgot that. 2Q. So this will be nothing but 2x square and bring this also on the top it will be r plus x whole square take roots on both sides it will become r plus x is equal to root 2 times of x so shift x on this side so r will be equal to x root 2 minus x therefore x will be equal to r by root 2 minus 1 r by root 2 minus 1 that is the answer so at this distance on the left side of the charge the net field will be zero net field will be zero i hope this is understood right clear -o? very good very good awesome awesome so bada chat vlogs there are two kinds of questions which are generally asked one is where potential is zero one is where field is zero when potential is zero you just straight away add the potentials and make it zero because they are scalars no use of directions due to this charge this is the voltage due to this charge this is the voltage add both of them solve it very easily you will get the answer problem happens when field is zero when field is zero then you have to be careful about their directions one will be this way one will be other way they should perfectly cancel positive charge will give the field outwards negative charge will give the field inwards so i have shown them in green and red lines but you will see in between them, nowhere the field will be zero because the green line is also towards the right, red line is also towards the right. In this part and this part only the field lines are opposite. So the chances of cancelling are only on left or on the extreme right. But out of that also, this was discarded because I realized that one of them is strong, one of them is weak. So I am closer to the smaller charge and far away from the larger charge so that their fields will be roughly equal and they will cancel out each other. That's why I took the point where the field is zero towards this side. That logic has to be developed. You cannot buy hard. As in many physics teachers, they make you buy hard few things. But that is the reason why none of their students also score good marks in physics. Right? So you should understand the logic why I have taken this point as the field zero. Because you are closer to the smaller charge. But here you are far away from the larger charge. 
so fields will nullify right and then field due to this is kq by x square field due to this will be k2q divided by r plus x whole square r plus x whole square q q k k cancels x square into 2 r plus x square goes on the top take roots on both sides so it will become root 2 bring x over here that's it and take x common root 2 minus 1 you can send it below that's all i have done is that clear right very good guys kindly converse only in english yes or else you will be getting timed out please remember that no you have to concentrate and you know yeah you have to concentrate and you have to focus on the class you cannot be doing random time pass over here yes correct all right moving on moving on moving on cool so this is also done field potentials also done now only last few things are there in this particular chapter so if you notice we have done a lot of things where did it go here we have done potential we have done potential energy we have done force we have done field all these things are done now the last few parts of electrostatics then we'll go to gauss's law also is you know relating these two and relating these two relating these two and also relating these two how do i relate these two there is a very simple equation for doing that and let me show that to you also there is a simple relationship for that remember remember the work done by your conservative force one conservative force is nothing but the negative change of potential energy this was there in 11th standard physics also so it basically is work done small work done by your conservative force like electric force or elastic force is minus du in fact i use this also in one of the previous uh, problems here and there if you remember delta u is minus work done by electric electric field is conservative force so delta u is minus work done there also i used and so many other places we did some questions here and there see work done by electric force is minus du i have used it here also so it's the same thing written down in words so work done is nothing but force into displacement force into displacement small displacement because small work is minus du so therefore remember force was minus du by ds rate of change of energy with respect to distance this was one very famous equation which related force with potential energy now just uh, uh, imagine this just imagine this if i if i happen to divide the change of the energy per unit charge and also force per unit charge what will this become force per unit charge is nothing but electric field electric force per unit charge is electric field change in the energy per unit charge is nothing but potential so minus dv by ds minus dv by ds some books instead of using the symbol s instead of using the symbol s because they use it for area they also use r they also use r symbol that is also okay so instead of s if you don't like it you can also use r for position change or displacement that is also fine so e is nothing but minus dv by dr this is how you relate field with potential or potential with field very very important relationship so let us see some examples related to that say for example the potential is equal to 4x cube uh, you know volts 4x cube volts find find the field at x equals to 1 meter this is the question find the field at x equals to 1 meter so what do we do in this particular case yes we are doing questions also apollo i am showing you all models of questions that's what i said we are doing all kinds of questions which can come so i am completing the theory revision plus i am showing you the questions which are following up with that so let's do this imagine 
imagine you know uh, v is nothing but uh, sorry not v e is nothing but e is nothing but minus dv by dr but here r can be replaced by x because potential is only changing in x so i'll put it as minus dv by dx what is v it is basically 4x cube so i have to take the derivative of this with respect to x 4 comes outside what is the derivative of x cube it is nothing but 3x square what is 4 into 3 it is nothing but 12 so minus 12x square minus 12x square is nothing but the electric field but that is not the question question is what is the field at x equals to 1 so substitute x equals to 1 so electric field at x equals to 1 will be minus 12 into 1 square which is minus 12 newton per coulomb minus 12 newton per coulomb so that is the answer that is the answer very good now imagine a question comes something like this where where the potential is 4 x square y and then they ask you what is the field here you need to be careful because it is in terms of x also and y also don't worry very simple find the derivative with respect to x and with respect to y separately find the components separately you will get the total vector meaning when you find the electric field in the x direction only differentiate potential with respect to x and when you find the field along y direction differentiate the voltage only with respect to y so when you differentiate with respect to x y becomes a constant along with 4 and you are differentiating only x square here y is a variable x is a constant so minus 4 x square comes outside and what remains inside is only the y variables so when you are differentiating with x y becomes a constant when you are differentiating with y x becomes a constant that's why it is coming outside got it my dear students why each of these things are coming out cons uh, outside so what is the answer over here minus 4y x squares derivative is 2x so it will be minus 8xy over here it will be just minus 4x square but if you want to give a proper answer answer to this electric field will be this is the x component right so minus 8 x y this will be i cap because x component this is the y axis component so minus 4 x square j cap that is the y component as simple as that yes with direction this is with direction that is how you do it when there are multiple variables with it so that basically you know completes our uh, complete mind map over here where did it go yeah, over here correct so we can go from here to here like this just show it here minus dv by dr will give you field just like from here to here minus du by dr will give you the force will give you the force that's how you go about it okay so now we have seen the relationship between all the variables i believe you have seen the relationship between all the variables i believe very nice perfect awesome now let's see the electric fields and uh, their potential formulas for different geometries but to do that mainly you will use Gauss law, Gauss's theorem, right? So for understanding Gauss law, what is that quantity which we need first? The quantity which we need for first is basically a, call, a term called as electric flux. So we are going slowly towards different geometries. So that's why Gauss law, for Gauss law, we need the term electric flux. Electric flux is a quantity which is basically the flow of electric field lines the flow of electric field lines you know through a surface electric field lines through a basic surface so if i have a surface like this this is your surface example and there are some electric field lines which are cutting through it like this maybe 
so definitely there is some flux associated with it there is some flux associated with it and in order to find how much flux is there the logic that we use or the formula that we use is imagine this is a area let me make it bigger this is an area I'm just taking a small area or a flat area for now and and the electric field line passing through it is uniform let's say it is like this this is the electric field line how much flux flows through it how much flux flows through it if I want to find out what do I do is I introduce a term called as the area vector area vector is a line which is perpendicular to the surface so it is like this you can see it is definitely perpendicular to the surface and I will give it the symbol a bar I'll give it the symbol a bar the angle made by the area vector and the electric field is theta so this is your area vector remember is always perpendicular to the surface which we are talking about is always perpendicular to the surface which we are talking about so the electric flux is just given by electric field into basically a cos theta because this is a vector this is also a vector and i am multiplying them with cos theta i can also write this as electric field dot area vector the dot product the dot product this is a much better looking formula this is a much better looking formula Please remember the units of electric flux is not Weber. In fact, this is this is electric field. So having a unit of volts per meter and area is nothing but meter square. That means it is volt meter. That means it is volt meter. That is the correct unit of electric flux, not Weber. Weber is in magnetic flux. Don't get confused. Okay. Yep. Don't get confused. Okay, perfect. Now, this is true for a flat surface. Please remember, for a curved surface like this with non-uniform field, you have no other option but to integrate. So it is actually integration of electric field with small, small area vectors. Basically, you choose a small area over here. It will have a small area vector, let's say like this, dA. You find the small flux through this area. Then you add the flux in this part, this part, this part, every part of that surface. So it is integration of the flux through the entire surface, whatever you are considering. So this is for non-uniform fields. This is for non-uniform fields, non-uniform fields and curved areas and basically for curved areas and for curved areas so this is the formula which you'll replace it with what about this scenario my dear warriors imagine there is a surface like this there is a surface like this and the electric field lines are going above it and below it in this case what is the flux going to be think about it there is no field which is piercing through it like over here it was piercing here piercing but there is nothing piercing so it will be zero in fact if you notice carefully the area vector makes 90 degree and cos 90 degree is zero cos 90 degree is zero but in this case imagine electric field lines were passing like this or passing like this obviously flux is not zero in fact the flux will be maximum reason being if you notice the area vector is parallel to the electric field so cos of so cos of zero oops once again cos of zero will be one it will be the maximum value it will be the maximum value got it my dear warriors so that's how you know changing the orientation will also change the electric flux now coming back to a scenario where you have a closed surface this is a closed surface and there could be some electric field lines which are coming out of it 
some electric field lines which are going inside of it so many things can happen electric field lines are going in electric field lines are coming out the ones which are coming out are considered as positive flux the ones which are going inside they are called or they are basically assigned the sign of negative flux so remember whenever it comes out it is positive whenever it goes in it is negative and it makes sense because negative flux will be because of negative charges and positive flux will be because of positive charges so the field lines come out of a closed uh, surface or any surface closed surface you can think of cube cylinder pyramid so many random shapes but closed that means there is no opening there is no hole in it there is no hole in it yeah there is no hole in it correct very good now now if you find the total flux for a closed surface for a closed surface how do i write that integration i will where did it go here integration electric field dot area vector integration of electric field dot area vector throughout the surface integration of electric field dot area vector throughout that surface i don't want to leave anything that's why i use this symbol so what is the meaning of that symbol imagine your mom tells you sweep the floor sweep the floor so sweeping is that action and i'm going to start by sweeping small small areas so derivative of sweep let's say i put it chumma i'm using this simple example like this so d sweep is sweeping a small area integration means i am sweeping a area here i'm sweeping a area here i'm sweeping a area here few parts and parcels i have just swept i'm adding my effect integration is addition but your mom comes and tells no 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 you don't have to sweep only this much part but also that much part every part of the room should be swept so if your mom says this cyclic integral d sweep that means you have to sweep everything you can't leave one part also so that is the reason why we use this symbol because it's a closed surface that means you have to cover the entire surface entire surface is that clear everyone awesome 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 very good so now so now if that is the scenario my dear warriors what is the answer for this the answer for this is you take the total amount of positive charge you take the total amount of positive charge and add it with the total amount of the negative charge in it basically what i mean to say is the total charge inside that surface not outside only inside the surface and then divided by epsilon not divided by epsilon not divided by epsilon not so that is basically oops that is basically your total flux and this is called as your gauss law this is only called as your gauss's law this is called as your gauss law in electrostatics gauss's law in electrostatics the total charge inside whatever charges are there outside doesn't really matter because just think about it if there was a po positive charge here even if it was there what will happen because of it it won't matter only because that field will come inside and also go outside it doesn't matter it will go inside and come outside it really doesn't matter but just come here and it will just go outside so whatever is going in is coming out so the charges outside do not play any role maybe there is another charge somewhere here okay maybe the field line won't even come inside the field line might not even come inside it will just go like this right so it's a negative charge so it will come on to it like that so there is no flux net flux because of outside charges there is no net flux because of outside charges so only consider the inside charge i hope this is absolutely clear absolutely clear yeah this is called as the gauss's law perfect now uh there could be many many such examples on it imagine uh say i take a cube example okay and i have placed a small charge at the body center 
कैन यू टेल मी क्विकली वॉट इज द टोटल फ्लक्स फ्रॉम द क्यूब गोइंग टू बी वॉट इज द टोटल फ्लक्स विच इज गोइंग टू कम आउट ऑफ द क्यूब रिमेंबर गॉसेज लॉ इज द टोटल फ्लक्स इज द चार्ज प्लेस इन साइड बाई एपसाइल ऑन नॉट इफ यू टेक द क्यूब इट सेल्फ एज योर क्लोज गॉशियन सर्फेस एज द क्लोज सर्फेस येस इट इज क्लोज एवरीथिंग इज क्लोज देन द टोटल फ्लक्स मस्ट बी इन साइड चार्ज बाय एपसाइल ऑन नॉट दिस इज एज गुड एज सेंग दिस इज अ क्लोज सर्फेस and for a closed surface it is always q in by epsilon not by gauss law how much charge is there inside just q so can i just put it as q by epsilon not can i just say it is q by epsilon not everybody with me on this so that is the first answer that i got very good excellent very good subhashrita very good soni uh, subhashni very good very good excellent awesome awesome now if they ask you what is the flux through any face then what will you do just think about how the field lines will go the field lines will go here some field lines will come here they will also come here they will also go here they will also go behind they will also go left all the possibilities are there but they will go in equal amounts in all the directions so through each face same flux will go How many faces are there? Front, back, top, bottom, right, left. Six. So the flux through each face shouldn't it be one sixth the flux through the entire cube? One sixth the flux through the entire cube. So hence it will be nothing but Q divided by six epsilon naught. Q divided by six epsilon naught. Very good. you can also be given sometimes a question like this where you are given listen there is a hemisphere and exactly at the center you have placed a charge question will be what is the flux through the hemisphere through the hemisphere what will your answer be think about it well this charge will give electric field in all possible directions like here like here here right like this like this everywhere it is going to give electric field electric field it is going to give everywhere okay it is going to give electric field lines everywhere and even below how can we forget that it is also going to give electric field lines below in fact don't you also see that these electric field lines are going to go everywhere all possibilities exactly half of the field lines are going on the top half is going below had there been an imaginary hemisphere over here so can i say it is basically half of the total flux half of the total flux so guys what will the answer be won't it be q by 2 epsilon not Won't it be Q by two epsilon not exactly? Very good, very good, excellent. Proud of all of you. Moving ahead. Imagine another question says, listen, this cube was there, this cube was there, and you have placed multiple charges. Here Q is there, here minus three Q is there, here four Q is there, and here minus. q is there so when i talk about the total flux from the cube will all the charges matter or only few of the charges matter obviously not all few of them who are they inside or outside obviously inside by gauss's law so remember the flux through the cube will be nothing but the inside charges by epsilon who are the inside charges think carefully Q is there inside minus three Q is there inside the box, so it will be Q minus three Q divided by epsilon naught. So the final answer will be minus two Q divided by epsilon naught. These both will not matter. These both will not matter. Correct. Only inside. Awesome. That is how you are going to find it. So this is what Gauss's law is basically. using gauss law and choosing some geometries you can find the field for every single 
geometry which you have in your NEET syllabus. Like, let's start with different geometries and their fields and their potential formulas. Ready with me, everyone? Ready with me? Yes. Q and minus 3Q. Yeah, correct. Q and minus 3Q. Yes, correct. Q and minus 3Q will make it minus 2Q. Correct. Very good. Chalo. Let's see the field uh, for different, different things. Starting off uh, with, uh, let's say, a ring. For this, you don't need Gauss's law, actually speaking. You. This is basically a ring of certain radius r. This is the center and you are standing on the axis of the ring at this point. So the total charge on the ring is Q. So we are talking about the ring geometry first. A ring geometry first. Okay. So at this particular point, the electric field, the formula is given by simple formula guys, no need of Gauss law, you can just do vector addition and you get it. So the formula comes out to be K Q uh, divided by in fact, X is also there divided by uh, what do you have R square plus X square whole raised to three by two. This is the formula K Q X divided by R square plus X square raised to three by two. How do I remember this simple? If X is zero, that means this point is over here. This point is over here. And if you are at the center from the top and from the bottom, from the left, from the right, or from any point to the diametrical opposite point, the fields will be same, but opposite. So they will cancel. So if X is zero field will be zero. So at the center of the ring field is zero. That's how I know X is there on the top. And once X is there on the top, I know dimensionally this should be having a power of three because field always has square of the length as the dimension in denominator k q by a square k q by l square k q by r square because this is r square eventually that's why i put the cube because raised to one and cube square will be remaining at the end correct similarly at that particular point you will also find out the potential and the potential formula is simple it is k q divided by root of r square plus x square. This is very straightforward. And uh, you know, it is also easy because all the points on the uh, ring are at the same distance are at the same distance, which is root r square plus x square. If you notice, it is a Pythagorean uh, theorem that I've used r and x sides root of r square plus x square is the hypotenuse. All the charges are at the same distance actually. So that's the reason why it comes out in a very simple manner. Okay, so this is one formula for potential. And uh, this is obviously another formula for your field, which you should remember. Next geometry. Next geometry, my dear warriors. Uh, I don't think they will ask you, but I'm just putting it up for all of you. Just in case because J, the surprise this time in J means even though it was not there in NCRT, they asked few questions which were, you know, something else. So imagine, imagine there is an arc which is charged, the angle is theta. This is a charged arc. This is a charged arc, which is, uh, you know, having some charge on it. And what I know is lambda. Lambda, the units is coulombs per meter. It is a linear charge density, linear charge density meaning it is how much charge is there per unit length meaning it is how much charge which is there per unit length okay everyone so what is the formula for it what is the formula for it it is q by l coulombs per meter so remember the field will be exactly along the angle bisector first of all the field will be exactly along the angle bisector and the formula is 2 K lambda and here after this you will get a sign or a cos term you'll get a sign or a cos term in fact the term that you will get is uh, sign 
is basically sine and you will have theta by 2 and the whole thing you should divide it by the radius. So let's say the radius of this is you know r so just divided by r just divided by r that's it so 2k lambda k is coulomb constant lambda is charge density linear sine of theta by 2 that is the formula that is also something which you must must know must must know is that okay cool shall we go ahead shall we go ahead everyone right very good let's move on to the next geometry let's move on to the next geometry <clears throat> the next geometry is nothing but a line charge a line charge now line charge means the charges are there on a wire now that wire can be finite meaning fixed length or very very long that means infinite let's start with a finite wire let's start with a finite charged wire finitely charged wire the previous one was for an arc before this was for a ring so for a finitely charged wire what you need to do again you need the term lambda again you need the term lambda which is coulomb per meter let's say you want to find the electric field at this point you want to find the electric field at this point drop a perpendicular quickly drop a perpendicular drop a perpendicular like this that is the first step then then the electric field the electric field will have two components actually depending on how much is there this side and how much is there this side okay so there will be two components one is the electric field in the x direction one is the electric field in the y direction these are the two components of electric field you get why do you get it because not equal amounts of wires might be there on both sides if more wire is there here less wire is there here there will be some unbalance that's the reason why it will have two components and that's the reason why you will get a net electric field also over here so the net electric field will be like this the net electric field will be like this at some angle so what are those fields going to be and what are the commonness in both of them well one thing which is common is you will get k lambda divided by your uh, r same thing over here k lambda divided by r right but there is some term before and after there will be some term before and after what are those terms what are those terms come on how many of you know this remember this what are those terms <clears throat> the terms are in this case found out like this first you join the end point with the point join the end point with the point where you want to find the field this is let's say alpha this is let's say beta alpha and beta are the angles subtended by the end points then what you do over here here you put sine for x you will put sine for y you will put cos this will be sine alpha plus sine beta and here it will be cos alpha minus cos beta if it is sine it is plus if it is cos it is minus that's it that's the answer for it that's the answer for it for finding the x and the y components yep yes sine of a minus b very good some of you remember this so now from this actually they never ask you questions on this but chumma have given you the formula the actual kind of questions they can ask you are these two sub cases let's understand the sub cases first sub case is basically infinitely long wire infinitely long wire this is the first sub case meaning it goes like this it goes still like this and you are standing at a distance r over here so if you join the ends from that point if you join the ends from this point and that point this angle and this angle both will be 90 degrees each both will be 90 degrees each so when you try to find the x component and the y component here is what is going to happen 
the y component the y component which is there the y component which is there which has cos alpha minus cos beta both alpha and beta are same in fact it is k lambda by r cos 90 minus cos 90 cos 90 is 0 0 minus 0 is 0 so the y component won't be even there there is no y component only the x component will be there and that x component will be k lambda by r k lambda by r here you will have sine 90 plus sine of 90 sine 90 is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 so it will become 2k lambda divided by r so that is your x component which is also the value of the electric field so it will be 2k lambda divided by r that is the formula this is very very useful usually they give you for infinitely long wires usually they give you for infinitely long wires keep this in mind very nice the another subcase which can be asked is a semi infinite wire. Semi infinite wire. Semi infinite wire. Meaning, on one side it goes very long, but on the other side it stops. That's it. Semi infinite wire. And you happen to exactly stop, uh, sorry, stand in front of the end point over here. In this case, please remember. There is both X as well as Y component. Start by joining the endpoints. The endpoint is at infinity. So this line will go till infinity. That means it is 90 degree. The other endpoint usually was here. Now it has come down over here. So you can see the other endpoint is directly here. So it is basically 0 degree. Alpha is 90, beta is 0. Is this point understood? So what is that you will get? Electric field in the X direction k lambda by r sine 90 plus sine 0 sine 91 sine 0 0 so it will be k lambda by r what is the y component what is the y component it is k lambda by r cos 90 minus cos 0 perfect so basically it will become k lambda divided by r with a minus sign but i'm only interested in the magnitudes so ey will be k lambda divided by r k lambda divided by r both components are equal meaning you will have two components you will have two components equal and you know in two perpendicular directions so you will have one ex like this and you will have one ey like that ex and ey both will be there and both are equal and you will also get a net field like this you'll also get a net field like this both are going to be k lambda by r. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Very good. So this also done. Semi-infinite and infinite wires. All of them are coming from these two formulas. These are two God formulas. From this we got it. Both the x component and the y component. This is just, I am interested only in the magnitude. Okay. Here also. I am only interested in the magnitude direction I know already. for semi-infinite wire. Next thing, next thing that we have. Is a shell or a conducting sphere. Or a conducting sphere. Both the cases will do. Because even when you have a conducting sphere, even when you have a conducting sphere, the charges are exactly going to be distributed the way it is on a shell. That means on the outer surface. That means on the outer surface. So even if it is solid, the charges go on the outer surface. Why do they go on the outer surface? Because charges repel each other. So they will try to go as far as possible. So that is the reason why they go on the surface. So that is why the formula for a shell and a conducting, not insulating. For insulating, I'm going to go ahead and give you the formula. For conducting sphere, you will see the formulas are same because the behavior of the charges is exactly identical. So here you will get two cases via Gauss's law. 
वन इज वेन यूर इन साइड वन इज वेन यूर आउट साइड सो लेट एस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मार्क द टर्म सो सॉरी दिस इज बेसिकली योर रेडियस दिस इज द चार्ज ऑन इट सो फर्स्ट विल गो इन साइड देन विल गो आउट साइड एवरी वन ऑल राइट सो इफ यू आर इन साइड इफ यू आर इन साइड देन द फील्ड नो मैटर वेर यू आर हियर 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 everywhere is going to be zero it's just going to be zero and not just that even the potential which is there inside it will be a constant not don't say sir it will be also zero no it is same it is going to be the same yep it is going to be in fact k q divided by this capital r be careful it is this capital r over here it is a constant it is a constant so this is true as long as the distance is less than the radius of the shell you are inside basically you are inside but the moment you go outside things change this entire shell behaves like a point charge so it feels as if you are at some distance r from it uh, from a point charge over here so the field when you are outside will be just like k q divided by r square it behaves like a point charge even the potential formula is like a point charge it will be k q divided by r so this is for r more than r it is like a point charge like a point charge at the center like a point charge basically at the center correct very good this is very very important okay is this clear for a shell inside field everywhere is zero potential is constant in fact remember this let me go back and tell this to you right over here where was it yeah electric field was minus dv by dr we spoke about potential lines and all of that so when you see this equation e is minus dv by dr what is that minus sign actually signifying it is signifying this only that if these are two equipotential lines let's say this is v1 let's say this is v2 let's say v2 is the lower potential line this is higher on the side on the higher side it is higher potential you will see electric field always goes from high to low not low to high if the value was increasing it will be plus if it is going from high to low it is minus that is why this minus sign comes it tells you it goes in the direction of the lower potential it is decreasing in nature the rate at which the field uh, sorry the field always travels in the uh, decreasing direction of the field of uh, potential sorry and while it does so you will also see that the electric field lines are always perpendicular to the equipotential line they are always going to be perpendicular to the equipotential line so that is how electric field lines travel from high to low potential so just imagine a situation where you have a volume where you have a volume and everywhere just imagine voltage is a constant voltage is a constant so what will be the value of dv change in the potential it will be zero so what will be the value of dv by dr that will be also zero so that means what should be the value of the field zero that means in such a region there is no field where potential is constant where potential is constant there will be no field hence you will see why you know in this particular region inside the potential is constant and field is zero got it my dear warriors got it my dear warriors very good very good thank you sarath yes now now if that is the case let's move on to the next one which is a solid a solid uh, sphere actually solid sphere is there a way i can okay let's see oh nice i like this So uniformly charged, uniformly charged, 
non conducting basically insulating also you can say insulated insulating sphere uniformly charged insulating sphere is that fine everyone okay so what about this what about this okay let's go again both inside and outside inside and outside the problem is not for outside actually the problem is only for uh, inside okay so let's write down the formulas when you're outside basically you're somewhere let's say here okay so this is the distance then the electric field can be found as if entire charge is concentrated at the center only as if the entire charge is concentrated at the center so just like a point charge formula so the formula will be nothing but k k into q divided by basically small r square k divided by k q divided by small r square for potential it's also again simple it is just k q divided by r so this is true when r is more than or equal to r perfect no problems at all but for inside but for inside you need to be little bit careful the formulas are slightly different here it becomes k q small r divided by capital r cube capital r is this one capital r is this one radius of the sphere and for potential the formula is k q divided by two times of r square two times of sorry uh, sorry two times of r cube my bad two times of r cube over here just like r cube here same r cube here but on the top you will have three capital r square minus small r square three capital r square minus small r square how do i remember this first of all you can see the formulas have r cube and r cube the moment it becomes solid sphere solid sphere means it is filled with something lot of things are there so increase the power of r increase the power of r to r cube number one here do you see 2 into r cube 2 and 3 here on the top 3 and 2 3 2 2 3 that's it numbers have flipped the power becomes the multiplier the multiplier becomes the power and then once you write 3 capital r square then put minus small r square obviously the powers have to be same it can't be r square here and r cube here or r square here and r here so obviously you can add and subtract only similar powers correct uh, dimensionally so that is why I put minus r square as simple as that it becomes very easy so this is the formula of course when you are inside when you are inside is that clear absolutely my dear students very good very good so keep all these pointers in mind everybody should know all these things there is one more geometry there is one more geometry and that is for a sheet Imagine Wow, such a nice thing Imagine there is a charge sheet and there are charges on it like this Right like this then the electric field due to that will go on both the sides and the best part is it is going to be parallel and uniform also it is going to be parallel and uniform also electric field will go like this and the formula for that is sigma by 2 epsilon naught where sigma dimensionally unit wise it is coulomb per meter square it is nothing but how much charge is there per unit area per unit area that is what it is it is the charge per unit area that is sigma you use lambda for charge per unit length sigma for charge per unit area keep this in mind so that is the electric field due to a uniformly charged sheet very very important now many people get confused sir when there two is there and there is a formula when that two is not there i'll come to that in a bit for that let's talk about some important properties of conductors let's talk about some important properties 
of conductors on which questions might definitely come. All these pointers I am making you revise. All these pointers I am making you revise. Hello, Salman. Welcome. Okay. So, first property of a conductor. Imagine if there is a conductor like this. The charges are always on the surface. Never inside. Okay. The charges are always on the surface. Charges are always on the surface. Very, very important. In fact, even if there is a cavity inside, even if there is a cavity inside, you will see it doesn't really matter. The charges will always go on the surface. It is never ever inside. It is never ever inside. That is one of the most important properties. Second thing, second thing which is important is field inside is always zero. E inside is always zero inside. Electric field inside is always zero. And because the field inside is zero, it also means one more thing. Potential inside is constant. Potential inside is constant everywhere. This point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Everywhere the potential is same because there is no field. Field goes from high to low. There is no high, there is no low. That is the reason why the potential inside is constant. Next, when you go outside, there is field, but that field is basically going to be perpendicular to the surface. It's going to be perpendicular to the surface. Keep this in mind. It's always going to be perpendicular to the surface. So no matter which point you go at, it is always going to be perpendicular to the surface. This is another important point. So you can see that over here also. Obviously, they can't intersect and all that. Those are standard things which you have done before. Extra additional pointers I am giving you. So always, always perpendicular. Okay. Field is perpendicular. Field is perpendicular to the surface. Field is perpendicular to the surface. It's not there inside. Also, this field, this field, which is on the surface, the value of this field at the surface, at the surface is your sigma by epsilon. Sigma by epsilon. This is sigma by epsilon. This was sigma by 2 epsilon. That 2 comes because the field is going two ways. Right side, left side. If the sheet was like this, upside, downside. Two ways, so 2. Here, the field only goes outside. One way, not inside. Only one side, not the other side. So number 1. So 1 times of epsilon. That is the easy way to remember it. That is the easy way to remember it. Okay. So keep this thing in mind. Keep this thing in mind. Yes. Very nice. So these are some very, very important properties of conductors. Apart from that, more properties are there. More properties are there. Like this. If a conductor is some weirdly shaped, imagine there is a conductor which is weirdly shaped. You will see that the charges will not get distributed equally. In fact, some places you will see the radius of curvature is less. Some places it is round big one. So the radius of that curve is big. So it is basically dependent on how blunt or how sharp that edge is. If it is sharp, you will see there are more charges. That means the radius is small. If it is a big radius, it's slightly blunt, you will see there will be fewer charges. So I don't know whether you are able to see these things. I'll use some different colors. Yeah, yeah. So basically the charge density, the charge density is inversely proportional to the radius of 
curvature. Why does this rule become very important? Because sometimes you will be given question like this. There is a sphere. It is connected to another sphere. What is the ratio of the charges? Or what is the ratio of the charge densities? So, in such cases, let's say this is R1. Let's say this is R2. You can think of it like one big conductor with a wire. The wire, the two spheres, everything one single conductor. Remember, what did I tell you? Sigma is inversely proportional to the radius of curvature, to the radius of the curve. So, can I not say sigma 1 by sigma 2? Here it will be R1, here it will be R2. So, it will be R2 by R1, here it will be R2 by R1. Perfect. So, this is one relationship which we can get. You can also say sigma is charged by area, is nothing but charged by area. Everyone with me? Sigma is nothing but charged by area. Right? Very good. So, uh, what do we say? Uh, you can also write this as, you can also write sigma 1 as q1 by 4 pi r1 square. Similarly, you can also write sigma 2 as charge by area. Area is 4 pi r2 square. So, this is nothing but r2 by r1. This is nothing but r2 by r1. Perfect. Very good. So, 4 pi, 4 pi cancels. r2 square goes on the top. So Q1 R2 square by Q2 R1 square is R2 by R1. R1 R1 cancels, R2 R2 cancels. So Q1 by Q2 you will get, Q1 by Q2 you will get basically R1 by R2. Right? You will get it as R1 by R2. Is that right? Everybody understands this? Everybody understands this? Very good. Very good. So... This is a very important relationship. You can get this relationship or this relationship using this particular principle that the charge density is inversely proportional to the radius of that conductor at that particular location. Where it is blunt, less charges. Where it is sharp, more charges. This is sharp, this is blunt. Keep this in mind. Very nice. Very good. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you so much. Very good. Another important property for a conductor is by chance you have a conductor like this and like this and what you do is you connect them with a wire. You connect them with a wire. Maybe this conductor had some Q1 charge, this has some Q2 charge. When you connect it, when you connect, when you connect it with a wire, what will happen? Charges will flow. But from where to where? Lot of people say where there is more charge, it will go towards the lesser charge. Not like that. Even if the charge is more or less, it doesn't matter. What matters is the potential. So maybe this is V1, this is V2. If V1 more than V2, this is high, this is low. You will see that the charges will flow from the higher potential to the lower potential. So the flow is always from the higher potential to the lower potential. Until when will that flow happen? Obviously, if charges are going only till a high potential and low potential is there, imagine when there is nobody high or nobody low, that means the potentials are going to be same. So after some time, obviously, after some time, obviously, the potentials are going to be same. So that's when I can say, that's when I can say V1 is equal to V2 then there is no flow of charges. Then there is no flow of charges and you will have new charges on it, Q1 and Q2. This problem is just like this problem, which I discussed over here. Where did it go? This one. Okay, I think I added the slide in the wrong place. Let me put it here. Yeah. It is just like this problem, two spheres connected to each other. Their potentials will be same at equilibrium. at equilibrium. Correct, everyone? <clears throat> very good, very good. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so we have done electrostatics and Gauss law. Now, let me quickly bring in magnetism. We'll do capacitors and current electricity after the break. Hold on. I'll tell you why we are going to do magnetic fields right now. 
because these formulas are fresh you will realize that actually whatever we studied now is very similar to what we will see in magnetism okay till this point everything is clear let's quickly go jump on to magnetism remember we are doing the entire unit today that means we can also relate different chapters together to uh, you know study effectively to make you understand the different things which are similar and also different so let's understand that as well so let's slowly go to magnetism in magnetism and then we'll have a break we'll study for more 15 20 30 minutes and then we'll have a break yeah now imagine we are talking about magnetic field magnetism we are slowly coming to magnetism magnetism was first discovered between rocks where rocks were magically attracted or repelled to each other so then they understood there is some mysterious force between them later on they understood it is basically magnetic properties are there with certain substances it was maxwell who told that actually magnetism comes because of electricity and he gave the equations for that although there were many people before maxwell who did perform some experiments to prove his uh, you know theory and one of them was nothing but or none of uh, none other than orsted so orsted what he did was he took wires carrying current so this was a wire and it carried some basically current and he found that the wire which carries current can affect iron filings which themselves are known to be ferromagnetic in nature means that they get magnetized demagnetized and they are affected by external magnetic fields so because they got affected they understood oh there is magnetic field around it oh there is magnetic field around it so it produced nothing but something called as the magnetic field which affected the iron filings so that is what orsted discovered current carrying wire produces magnetic field now the interesting thing about any magnetic field is that unlike charges where you have a positive charge and a negative charge the electric field line jumps starts from positive and goes terminates on the negative this is your electric field this is your electric field from a positive charge to negative charge unfortunately that is not found in case of magnetism so even if you take a bar magnet with a north pole and south pole written on it don't be fooled into thinking that oh sir magnetic field you know what sir it starts from the north pole sir and it goes till the south pole actually that is not true in fact even inside it will continue its journey is just that you do not see it but it is continuing so actually it is a complete loop so magnetic field magnetic field is basically is always in the form of loops not just because of a bar magnet any magnet any magnet that you see or any magnetic field due to wire carrying current you see this is how the field lines look like these are magnetic field lines magnetic field lines are always in the form of always in the form of closed loops always in the form of closed loops because of this you know what happens because magnetic field lines because magnetic field lines are always in the form of loops imagine somebody decides to take a closed surface you take a closed surface and in that closed surface you try to find the magnetic flux this is your magnetic flux you might be wondering sir what is this magnetic flux sir okay magnetic flux is nothing but imagine you take a surface like this okay and imagine magnetic field line is piercing through it so this surface will have some area vector just like before i told you it will be making some angle 
with the magnetic field so the magnetic flux magnetic flux phi is given by magnetic field the symbol remember is b not e into nothing but into nothing but a cos theta so i can also write it as b vector b vector instead of cos theta i can put a uh, uh, dot over here i can put b dot a so this is the definition of magnetic flux magnetic field into area more magnetic field passing through a large area will give you a large flux magnetic flux is basically the flow of the field but which field magnetic field so more field more area more field lines will be captured through that area so more flux and the unit of this and the unit of this remember is a weber and one weber is you can see you can see weber is nothing but what this is tesla this is tesla into meter square into meter square magnetic field b is measured in terms of tesla remember that b is the symbol so tesla into meter square is weber weber is only the unit of magnetic flux not any other flux keep this in mind correct okay so now if you try to find the magnetic flux what happens is whatever field lines go in will have to come out because there is nothing to stop them there is nothing to stop them right they do not end they do not start just like or uh, uh, unlike charges where they start and stop here there is no start there is no end so can i also say that whatever flux goes in and whatever flux comes out whatever flux comes out versus whatever flux goes in they both are going to be equal they both are going to be equal hence what will i get the net flux closed will be zero net flux in that closed surface will be zero in fact i can also say the integration of magnetic field with area vector is zero magnetic field with area vector complete closed surface complete closed surface integration is zero so if i block this result very very important result this is called this is like gauss law this is gauss law but in magnetism this is gauss law but in magnetism here on the right hand side you do not have some charge by epsilon nothing it's completely zero there is nothing over there keep this in mind yeah no it is not 10 to the power 7 it is zero it is just zero yeah yes this is gauss law in magnetism just like gauss law in electricity was electric field dot area vector was q by epsilon there is no epsilon nothing it's zero inside flux is equal to outside flux in fact this also tells us one more thing that you know you cannot find the exact pole of a magnet or you cannot isolate it like for example a lot of people might think sir this is a bar magnet i thought this was the north pole this was the south pole sir okay sir and see how the field lines are coming sir it is like this then it is coming like this sir then it is going like this sir okay it will continue its journey it will go like that and come like this so this is how the field lines are going to look like okay so a lot of people think sir if i cut this this will be the north part this will be the south part no in fact even if you take a part of it even if you take a part of it you will see there will be new magnetic field lines which will be developed here like this there will be new magnetic field lines which will be developed over here like this and then you will see this will be the north part and this will be the south part even if you cut that part you will again see magnetic field lines going like that so basically monopoles monopoles you have no these days like this dipoles two polarities north and south two plus minus two pandu champa two couples basically dipoles dipoles exist monopoles no but dipoles yes dipoles do exist dipoles do exist this is the comment 
trend these days. You put something in a comment, you put a cross and then you say this and then you put a tick. Right? This is a trend in the comment section these days. Yes, no monopoles exist. Perfect. Yeah. Budu Chef and Blogs. Concentrate Chendi. Ye Maitandi. Focus, focus. Ah. The moment I go, nicely deleting comments. Wow. You think I can see? Admin can't see? Oh, hmm. So we have seen this magnetic fields, properties, everything, and all of that. Now we also saw over here that a wire which carries current creates a magnetic field around it. How much is that magnetic field? Well, that magnetic field yeah, is given by somebody called as Bio Savert. And that's why we have the Bio Savert's law. That's why we have the Bio Savert's law. So, what does it say? You might have a long wire carrying current a long wire carrying some current and maybe at this distance I want to find let's say at this particular position R I want to find what is the magnetic field now the magnetic field at this point will be because of all the parts of the wire so you find the contribution due to one part like when they collect donation you give 2 rupees, 10 rupees, 5 rupees and the total donation from your society or class will be the addition of all those donations. Similarly, this entire wire will create a magnetic field. So you find the donation by each part DB, DB, DB. So if I take a small element of wire here, small element of wire here whose length is DL the contribution by that element is let's say db is let's say db so db is the field due to the element which element dl that field is given by this formula that field is given by this formula you take a new number constant which is mu naught by 4 pi into current dl cross with cross it with the position vector and divide it with r cube cross product not dot cross product dl r sin theta will be the magnitude and divide it with r cube that is the formula for the magnetic field due to that element so therefore, 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 the total magnetic field will be integration of all these small, small fields, integration of these small, small fields due to the entire wire. Is that clear? This is also something which you should be aware of. What is this mu naught by 4 pi? What is this mu naught by 4 pi? Mu naught by 4 pi is like that Coulomb constant. So mu naught by 4 pi is actually 10 to the power minus 7. You might be wondering, sir, what is this mu naught? mu naught is nothing but mu naught is nothing but permeability not permittivity permeability permeability of free space of free space so you might be wondering now sir is there permeability of the medium also answer is yes definitely the answer is yes so permeability of the medium is nothing but mu r into mu naught mu r into mu naught what is mu naught we just told it is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 this one over here is a term called as relative permeability relative permeability just like your dielectric constant Just like your dielectric constant, this is that relative term. This one obviously is permeability of that particular medium. Is the permeability of that particular medium. Keep this in mind. 
जस्ट लाइक परमिटिविटी ऑफ द मीडियम इज रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी विच इज ऑल्सो के इन टू म्यू नॉट और सॉरी एप्साइल ऑन नॉट विच इज ऑफ वैक्यूम सेम वे हियर ऑल्सो ऑफ द मीडियम इज रिलेटिव इन टू ऑफ वैक्यूम ऑफ वैक्यूम करेक्ट वेरी गुड गाइज कीप द जोश हाई इज दिस रिलेटिव इज दिस रिलेटिव permeability related to some other variables is this relative permeability related to some other variables the answer is yes i'll show you that also it is actually 1 plus a term called as susceptibility it is 1 plus x this x is also called as susceptibility 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 in fact you have three kinds of materials three kinds of materials one is diamagnetic one is diamagnetic then you also have paramagnetic paramagnetic and then you have ferromagnetic materials what are these different materials diamagnetic materials when you bring another magnet close to it it will repel imagine pandu running behind champa pandu running behind champa the moment pandu comes close to champa champa will say tata bye bye get lost who are you that is diamagnetic go die diamagnetic and it is temporary champa will run away from pandu as long as pandu comes close when pandu does not come close stop same way it is temporary so it gets magnetized but in the opposite way para para so you are basically going to get magnetized but temporary meaning pandu goes behind champa champa is like oh yeah 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 come 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 let's go what are you saying so they both come close at the moment pandu goes away no that's it who is pandu i don't care hey new pandu comes hello hi champa goes with another pandu so that is paramagnetic okay paramagnetic ferro means strong relation pandu comes hi champa Champa is like, oh, very nice Pandu. They both meet, they sit with each other, they enjoy. When Pandu goes, Champa does not forget Pandu. Champa still remembers Pandu, and she is in a relationship, proper, permanent. That is ferromagnetic. Understood, my dear warriors? Yes, that is the meaning of ferromagnetic. So, relative permeability for diamagnetic materials is basically. less than 1 this is slightly more than 1 and for ferro it is much much larger than 1 susceptibility wise susceptibility for diamagnetic is negative here it is slightly more than 0 here it is much much more than 0 like 500 200 100 that is for ferro 1 2 1.1 it is para negative 0.1 0.2 negative it is diamagnetic okay so that is the relationship which you should definitely definitely know okay let's not get into magnetic materials because today is agenda is not magnetic materials so much it's mainly to give you more about sources and effects okay so we studied this we saw magnetic field due to different wires which carry current okay so that is the formula now is there something like gauss law in magnetism well we saw that but no i want gauss law which is going to help me find the field in a very easy way the answer is yes so for that imagine imagine you have wires like this this wire is carrying current like this this wire is carrying current like this this is like this this is like this this is let's say like this these are some wires which are carrying currents like i1 i2 i3 i4 and i5 and so on and so forth so just like gauss law was about total flux is q inside by epsilon there is a similar analogous equation in magnetism which helps you find field using currents for some simple geometries for symmetrical nice geometries it helps you with that so what is that 
So what you need to do is start your journey. You start moving. Ampere is the name of the guy who gave this law. So that is why it is called as Ampere's law. Ampere's law. So what did Ampere do? He went around, right? He went around from one point and came back to the same point. Those days people were jobless. So they used to go chumma, go around and come back, do all th sorts of things. These days we have lot of tensions, right? So you go like this, go anywhere, go like that, go like that, let's say, and come back to the same point. This is a closed, not surface, it is a closed path. What is it? It's a closed path. And at every point, you find what is the field. Let's say at this point, the field is here. And the distance that you have traveled is like this. So that is basically DL. And the field over there is basically B. Again, you go here, find the field, find the length you are traveling. Again, at this point, this point, this point, this point, every point you find the field and multiply it with DL. So let's say the B is here. 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 Like that. So all these are Bs and DL. B, DL, B, DL, B, DL, B, DL. At every point, you take the dot product of the magnetic field with what? With what? The distance that you have traveled, that is DL. And you add them up. Because you are adding them up, that means what do I need to do, my dear warriors? What do I need to do, my dear warriors? I need to basically put integration symbol. So I'll put integral sign. But since I'm coming back to the same point, I'm covering entire path. I'm not leaving only any path. Entire path has been covered. So symbolically, what will I do? I'll put this symbol. Symbolically, I'll put this symbol. This always happens to be the current which is inside. The current which is inside and multiplied by mu naught. Multiplied by mu naught. Mu naught into, not divided by, it's multiplied by. Current inside multiplied by mu naught okay so i hope this is very very clear this is called as ampere's loop law or ampere's law very very important now you might be wondering sir what is the current inside over here so if you see this closed path that i have chosen in this all these parts current i2 current i3 and current i4 they are inside whereas all the other ones like here and here these are not within the loop so they are outside so these are all inside i5 and i1 are inside so immediately some people will be like sir so is i inside is the current inside equal to i2 plus i3 plus i4 the answer is no it is definitely not equal to i2 plus i3 plus i4 and we're like oh what is the mistake sir i'm doing the mistake you're doing is the direction of the currents. The direction of the currents are not so uh, uh, same. In fact, they are different. So you need to be aware of the sign convention. Okay. So what is the sign convention, sir? So the sign convention is as follows. How are you going? You're going around a loop like this. So take your right hand, my dear warriors, take your right hand and curl your fingers in the same way you're going around the path. So you're going around the path like this, like this, like this, curl your fingers, curl your fingers, okay, curl your fingers, see where your thumb goes, see where your thumb goes, I think your thumb will point up, oh, so that is basically the positive direction, that is positive direction, automatically what comes below, which there is nothing, that is your negative direction, so in this case, Upwards is positive, so I2 and I4 are positive. So this is uh, definitely positive. This is also definitely positive and definitely I3 is down, so it is negative. So technically what I should be putting over here is plus I2 minus I3 plus I4. That is how the sign convention works. That is how the sign convention works. Is that absolutely clear, my dear students? How the sign convention works yes very good very good awesome <clears throat> sure
shall we go ahead everyone okay this is your ampere's law which helps you find the magnetic field due to many many geometries so let's try to see all the relationships that we have for magnetic field starting off with the easiest one and that is for a wire carrying current that is basically for a wire uh, with some current so let's start off with the finite case first finite case first where that wire length is only limited to certain length this is your current now just like a charged wire here also i am at some distance r from the wire here i want to find the magnetic field here i want to find the magnetic field what will i do the magnetic field this time does not have two components no it has only one component guys only 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 one component yes no two components so the magnetic field is given by you will have mu naught you will have current divided by 4 pi mu naught by 4 pi is there only as it is if you want to write it like that here current is there divided by r here you will have sign remember sign something just like for finite wire cases for charges same thing over here but what is alpha and beta what is alpha and beta so you join the endpoints till here join the endpoints till here this is alpha this over here is basically beta so you are just going to put sine of alpha over here and sine of beta over here as simple as that that is the magnetic field formula for a finite wire magnetic field for a finite wire there are no two components in this just one single magnetic field very very straightforward that is why we are doing this together now if you are wondering sir is there another option or wire which is infinite wire which is infinitely long definitely so when you have infinitely long wire and let's say you are standing at some distance over here you want to find the magnetic field what you will do mu naught by 4 pi current by distance sine something plus sine something what is that something something you are at uh, you are here and you are trying to draw a line which is coming from infinity to that point so it will look like this infinity to that point it will look like this this is almost like 90 degree here and 90 degree here so this will be sine 90 and sine 90 sine 90 is 1 sine 90 is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 so it will become mu naught by 4 pi i by r multiplied by 2 2 and 4 cancels so it will become mu naught i by 2 pi r this you can get it via even ampere's loop law but this is a very important formula because straight wire questions do come straight wire questions definitely do come is that clear this is for infinitely long wire infinitely long wire then you might be wondering sir is there semi infinite case also yes there is wire which is semi infinite case definitely so on one side it is infinitely long and it ends over here there is some current in it i think i forgot to show the current there is some current okay so you are standing directly in front of the other end that is over here so what is the magnetic field at this point okay so let's find it out so the magnetic field will be given by mu naught by 4 pi current by r sine of something plus sine of something else so mu naught is there 4 pi is there i by r is there what will i get over here well one of the end is at infinite distance so from that infinite if i draw this line this will be 90 degrees the other end was supposed to be here i would have drawn a line like this but the other end has actually come this point so that another line which i will show connecting the end point and the point where i want to find the field this angle will be zero degree so alpha is 90 beta is zero so alpha is 90 beta is zero sine zero zero sine 91 so I'm just going to multiply this with 1. So that's it. Mu naught i by 4 pi r. That is the magnetic field due to what? A semi-infinite wire. Due to what? A semi-infinite wire. Very good. Then there is another case for a wire. But inside the wire. This is also very interesting. Imagine this is your wire. This is inside inside a long wire inside a long wire okay 
so the current is basically flowing like this current is flowing like this there is magnetic field even inside that thickness that cross section of the wire all these formulas were for magnetic fields around that wire around that wire around that wire i am saying even within the wire there is magnetic field and that magnetic field is given by this particular formula so you will see that there will be magnetic fields here also Then like this. This is how the magnetic field lines will be there inside. I hope you are able to see those thin lines. Those are basically the magnetic field lines inside. And if you are at some distance, small r, and let's say this radius is basically capital R then the magnetic field inside the wire magnetic field inside the wire is given by mu naught I and then you have that small r over here the whole thing divided by here you will have 2 pi but capital R square 2 pi capital R square. This is the formula when you are inside the wire. Inside the wire. Very, very important. You can see it is directly proportional to R. In fact, there is a graph also which is commonly asked many times where this is the distance, this is the field and how does the magnetic field change when you go from inside to outside? So, imagine this. The current is going like this. So how does the magnetic field change when you are inside versus outside? This is inside versus outside. The answer to that is very simple. When you are inside, you can see it is directly proportional to small r. It is directly proportional to small r. So when you are inside, it will be directly proportional like this. It is directly proportional to small r. But the moment you go outside that wire, the moment you go outside that wire, you can see everywhere R is there below. Small R is there below. Even for finite, infinite, doesn't matter. It is always there below. So what happens is once you go outside, the graph shifts. The graph becomes very different. It is going to be a curve. It is inversely proportional to R. It is inversely proportional to R. So that's how the graph shifts and the change happens. Where does it happen? Exactly at R exactly at R. So this is inside the wire, this is inside the wire and this is obviously outside the wire. These kind of questions are definitely asked in your NEET examination. Many times they will ask you, many times. Yes, it is a hyperbola, definitely it is a hyperbola, definitely, definitely. There was one question which was recently, I had seen this, you know, the magnetic field inside is equal to the magnetic field outside the wire. The magnetic field inside the wire is equal to the magnetic field outside the wire. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, what is the value of R for this to happen? For a long wire. For a long wire. When do you think this can happen? The magnetic field inside is equal to the magnetic field outside. For what conditions do you think it can happen? It's very straightforward. When you are inside, the formula for that is nothing but mu naught current into R divided by 2 pi capital R square. When you are outside, the formula is mu naught I divided by what? 2 pi small r. These both have to be equal. That's it. 
these both have to be equal as simple as that so 2 pi 2 pi cancels i i mu naught mu naught also cancels so small r by capital r square is equal to uh, 1 by r so multiply it will become r square is equal to r square so basically i will get small r is equal to capital r so the magnetic field inside and the magnetic field outside will be equal in amounts when small r is equal to capital r that's what we essentially get as simple as that so these kind of questions are very very common uh, sometimes they ask you where is the magnetic field half as that it is inside and all those sorts of things okay so you need to be uh, you know aware of these formulas that's all you need to be just aware of these formulas having said this this is also a very interesting point to note that here it is zero here it is zero and this is also very important for you to understand that if you are on the axis then the magnetic field is zero on the axis the magnetic field is zero and this is useful in these kind of questions where you might be given there is a wire there is a curve like this and it is going like this and you might be asked to find the magnetic field over here you might be asked to find the magnetic field here then remember that you can see that there is one straight semi-infinite wire which is going like this due to this there will be a magnetic field here due to this there will be a magnetic field here but due to this wire due to this wire don't even think there will be no magnetic field why because you are on the axis of that wire so this wire will contribute this wire on that line there will be no contribution at all so very very crucial stuff very very crucial stuff is that clear everyone yes yes Mana, this is english channel you have a lot of hindi channels everywhere go over there why are you wasting your time here Hana? go over there coming to english channel, you can't see there is a nice title given vedant who need english one channel we have and there also you want to come and ask sir please talk in hindi and there are so many options in hindi you know so please concentrate okay so this is also very very common this is a very important concept on the axis no field apart from the axis there is definitely going to be field okay so this is done wire is done uh, let's go to arcs because now arc related geometries also are very very popular these days and uh, loops so let's just take a loop hmm. okay this is basically your loop so current carrying loop this is your current carrying loop So you are on the axis of the loop. So what is the magnetic field over here? What is the magnetic field over here? Now the answer for this is very similar to the electric field concept. In fact, it is mu naught by 4 pi is there only. Sorry, not 4 pi. Mu naught by 2 is there, not even pi. Here you will have current and then you will have uh, basically R square and then you will have r square plus x square raised to 3 by 2 this is the change because in all the magnetic field formulas what you will see what you will see where is it always r is there below r and r cancels one r is there dimension of length is there below dimension of length is there below dimension of length is there below current is there on the top even the Biot-Savart's law, where did the Biot-Savart's law go? It was here. See this. Length, length, length cube. Length, length, length square, length cube. Length square, length square cancels. Length remains below. So always the dimension of length remains below. Current or amperes remains on the top. So that's how I remember that if there is a raised to 3 by 2, so 2, 2 cancels, power 3 is there. So there must be a square term on the top. There must be a square term on the top. That is a magnetic field on the axis. That is a magnetic field on the axis. Correct? Very good. Now, 
this is obviously very very important there are many many questions on this also i'll show you one of such questions but the interesting thing is what happens when you are at the center when you are at the basically center of it so when you are exactly at the center when you are exactly at the center okay the magnetic field at the center remember at this point the value of x will be zero the value of x where is it the value of x will be zero so if you substitute x as zero what will you get you will get mu naught by two here you will have current r square divided by r square plus zero square raised to three by two so you will get this as mu naught by two current into r square divided by r plus zero zero oh sorry r only or r square only so it will be r square raised to 3 by 2 which will make it r cube so rr cancels rr cancels so 1r is remaining so it will just become mu naught i divided by 2r mu naught i divided by 2r that's it that's the magnetic field at the center that's the magnetic field at the center sometimes they just chumma make the problem complex what they tell you there are n turns okay there are basically n turns for it if there are n number of turns what will happen you'll just multiply by n that's it you'll just multiply each turn will give the magnetic field you'll just multiply it n times you will get the total magnetic field so a kind of question which is very popular over here is where uh, what is it called yeah this one like you know you have a loop here you take a point and here you take a point and this is also r and the question will be if the magnetic field at the center is considered as b1 the magnetic field at some distance r is considered as b2 what is the ratio what is the ratio of the magnetic fields this was very very popular question what is the ratio of b1 by b2 so let's start with the basics the magnetic field at the center is just simply put mu naught i by 2 r mu naught i by 2r that's what i just told you mu naught i by 2r that's it at the center but when you are on the axis the magnetic field is mu naught i then you have r square then you have 2 and here you have r square plus x itself is r so this is r square plus r square raised to 3 by 2 so you'll get mu naught i r square divided by 2 times r square plus r square 2 r square so 2 raised to 3 by uh -huh, two, uh, 3 by 2 into r square raised to also 3 by 2 so 2 raised to 3 by 2 and r square also raised to 3 by 2 because 2 r square will be there so i can take 2 raised to this and r square also raised to this so what will this become mu naught i r square whole thing divided by 2 2 cube is basically nothing but uh, 8 root of 8 is nothing but 2 root 2 is 2 root 2 this is nothing but r cube okay r square r square cancels so this will become mu naught i by 2 into 2 4 so 4 root 2 mu naught i by 4 root 2 times of r that's it so now you can find the ratio guys very straightforward it will be nothing but this by this so it is mu naught i by 2 r and b2 is mu naught i by 4 root 2 r r r mu naught i mu naught i cancels so 4 and 2 cancels becomes 2 so 2 root 2 so 2 root 2 should be the answer so 2 root 2 should be the answer got it my dear students how we got it so this kind of questions are also very common directly based on the formula so if there are n turns what to do i told you if there is center question i told you if you are on the axis what to do i have told you but what if it is not a complete circle but an arc itself it is an arc only a small part of the circle no issues if it is a small part of a circle carrying some current first thing what you do just see how much angle it subtends let's say it is theta then the magnetic field over here then the magnetic field over here is a fraction of the field which would have been produced by the entire loop think like this 
if the complete loop produce some magnetic field then if I take one fourth it will produce b by 4 because each part will produce b by 4 b by 4 if I take you know one seventh part of it then this will produce b by 7 magnetic field so what you need is the fraction what you need is basically how much fraction is it of the entire circle so the entire circle used to produce a magnetic field of mu naught i by 2 r the fraction will be theta by 2 pi this is the fraction of the loop this is the fraction of the loop that's it just multiply by theta by 2 pi if it is semicircle the fraction will be half for example for semicircle the value itself will be half for quarter circle for quarter circle the value will be 1 by 4 obviously theta will be pi pi 1 by 2 correct theta will be pi by 2 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 is 1 by 4 correct that's how it is i hope this is clear everyone understood pratyu doctor please talk in telugu no sorry please talk in english what is this english channel yeah so this is the formula for an arc keep this in mind yes let me also drink some water thank you now while we are discussing all this we never spoke about the direction of the magnetic field so let me show you the direction of the magnetic field for both straight wires and then the arcs if you have any straight wire which is carrying current like this what you will do is the wire is straight in your right hand when you curl the fingers the only thing that is straight is the thumb not the curled fingers so immediately put your thumb in the direction of the current immediately put the thumb in the direction of the current automatically your fingers will curl automatically what will happen guys your fingers will basically curl like this i just shown you some things whatever is curling whatever is turning whatever is bending is the direction of the magnetic field so the magnetic field will be exactly in that direction so it will go like this and come like this it will go like this and come like this so it is going inside over here and it is going from behind and coming out from here that is how you find the direction of the magnetic field that is how you find the direction of the magnetic field for a straight wire is this clear absolutely similarly similarly if you have a loop which is carrying current a loop which is carrying current there is some current in this loop what is the loop shape it is curled it is bent it is like a circle so in your right hand the thing which is bent is your fingers so curl your fingers this time curl your fingers this time like this automatically this time the thumb will point in a peculiar direction so the fingers are the current now and the thumb becomes again the field so you will see the magnetic field will be going down to up like this it will be actually curved on the sides it is going to be exactly like this is this clear how to find the direction of the magnetic fields is it clear everyone so for a straight wire it is just going to go like this round and round use your curled fingers as the field wire as the you know thumb and then here the wire becomes the curled fingers and the field becomes the thumb that's all very very straightforward very very straightforward it is exactly the right hand thumb rule exactly so you know uh, there are these questions like this where example imagine there is a we'll just take this example only let's say it is like this and then it goes like this and this is coming from infinity this is also going till infinity this is r and this is the direction of the current it is going like this and like this so question will be find the magnetic field at the center so first of all 
which sometime back only I told you this is not even contributing because you are on the axis at this point. So you are on the axis, the field is going to be zero. So don't even bother about it. Whereas this particular part, you are away from the axis. So definitely there is some contribution. Definitely there is some con contribution. This is semi infinite wire. So due to a semi infinite wire, what is the magnetic field? It is mu naught i divided by 4 pi. What is the distance? You can clearly see the distance is clearly r. So mu naught i by 4 pi r. What is the direction? Well, the wire is straight. In my right hand, thumb is straight. But the current is going down. Don't point your thumb up, point it down. The moment you point your thumb down, the fingers will curl. Do you see it is going in and coming out from here? It is going in from here and it is going to come out from there. So definitely at this point it is going in and from here it is coming out. Oh, so due to this semi-infinite wire at this point the field line is going in. So I'll put a cross over here. I'll just put a cross over there. Is that right? Now the last part which is this part. This part. Due to this how much is the magnetic field due to a semi-circle? due to a semicircle. Remember the formula for a complete loop was mu naught i by 2 r, mu naught i by 2 r, but it's half of the circle. So the fraction will be half. Remember that fraction which I was talking about? This one, theta by 2 pi. For a semicircle, it will be basically half. Perfect. So that's it. So this will be nothing but mu naught i by 4 r. But what about the direction? The wire is bent, so your curled fingers should be the current. So the fingers will go like this clockwise. Automatically, the thumb goes inside. Look at this, the thumb goes inside. So the magnetic field is inside because of this wire also. So it is inside because of this wire. Oh, both are inside. If both are inside, they will add. So hence, the net magnetic field will be just addition. If one was dot, one was cross, they will cancel. I'll have to put minus sign. So here it will be mu naught i by 4 r. Here I'll have 1 by pi. And here I will have just 1. That's it. So that is the answer. And obviously it is inside. Obviously it is inside. That's how you find the magnetic field. No, we didn't take theta by 2 pi. Sarath, because I know the value of theta by 2 pi, what will it be? Think about it. Theta by 2 pi. Theta is pi radian because 180 degree by 2 pi. Pi pi by so 1 by 2. So theta by 2 pi only is half. So I directly put half because I know semicircle means half of a circle. No need to put the value of theta. Is that okay, Sarath? Yes. Very nice. Great. Great. So these are the kind of questions which are usually asked. Sometimes they can also ask you questions like this, where there is a wire here, there is a wire here, parallel, anti-parallel, doesn't matter. Let's say this is I, this is 2I. So imagine they are separated by some distance of, let's say R, let's say R. If you are on this side versus this side, how will the magnetic field change, right? So. Imagine this is your x-axis, imagine this is your y-axis, imagine this is your z-axis. If you are this side versus this side versus in between them, how will the direction of the magnetic field lines change? So let's try to visualize this. First of all, if you consider this wire, if you consider this wire, the wire is straight. What is straight in my right hand? Obviously the thumb. So the thumb, if I put it like this, the fingers go like that. So imagine it is going from behind, coming from the front like this. It's, it's z-axis. Z-axis is actually out of the plane, right? It's 3D. So imagine z-axis, the current is going inside the plane. If the current goes inside the plane, the fingers curl like this. So the magnetic field because of that should be like this. The magnetic field should be like this. I'm showing a break because it's going from behind and coming. It should be definitely going like this and coming over here, correct? It should be definitely going like this and coming over here. 
and more. This is the magnetic field due to this 2i wire. Similarly think, due to this wire carrying current small i, the current is coming this way. If you hold the thumb in that direction, the curled fingers go like that. The curled fingers go like that. Okay, so it's going from there, going in from there, going down like this and coming out. Oh, interesting. So going in from there, like this and coming out like that going in from here going in like this going out like that and coming in from here and i can show more also it is like this right <laughs> yeah sorry so Looking at this, it looks like some jellybees and all, but if you see the proper view, the current which is going in is creating a magnetic field like this and the current which is coming towards you, the yellow one, yellow one, right? It is creating a magnetic field like this. It is creating a magnetic field like this. The dot and the cross are the wires themselves. So I can show the magnetic field going like that. I can show the magnetic field going like this. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is how the magnetic field lines look like. If I see it from the front. So if you notice over here in this region versus this region versus this region. Here both the fields are in the same direction. Here they will add. Here they will add in this particular region in this particular region from here till here right they will subtract they will subtract even in this region they will basically subtract like this because one blue line is going up yellow is coming down so they will cancel out each other so that is how you figure out whether magnetic field lines will add or subtract what's the direction whether I should do plus, minus, etc. These kind of questions are again very, very popular, my dear warriors. Very, very popular. Cool. Now the last one, two formulas before we take the break. And that is for a solenoid. For a solenoid. Solenoid means a tube with many windings. A tube with many windings like this. The magnetic field lines, the magnetic field lines look like this. The magnetic field lines look something like this. Inside they are almost parallel. Inside they are almost parallel guys. So magnetic field inside is roughly a constant, is roughly a constant. But if you go outside, there is hardly any magnetic field. So magnetic field outside is not there. This solenoid has many windings current current is flowing into it like this there are many windings over it so you have a term called as n by l which is small n which is how many turns are there per unit length for that solenoid you take a tube and you know wind it number of turns per unit length that's when you get the magnetic field inside and the magnetic field which is there inside is simply mu naught small n i a very important formula again it's just mu naught small n i outside obviously it's zero another interesting thing to note when you are at the end the field is slightly weak when you are at the end the field line slightly diverge it becomes slightly less than mu naught n i in fact it becomes mu naught n i by 2 on both the ends magnetic field at the end is mu naught n i divided by 2. Sometimes you might get questions on this particular formula. Very very rare but very small chances there. Mu naught n i by 2. Current into number of turns per unit length into mu naught. Very good. Excellent. Next thing. 
is a toroid is a toroid where you have a circular tube like this of an average radius r and you are basically winding making the windings like this and then there is magnetic field inside the toroid yeah that is the magnetic field inside the toroid the formula is just like before it is mu naught small n i that small n is the number of turns by the total length which is 2 pi r so that's it that is the formula when you are inside obviously when you are outside the toroid there is no magnetic field only so it is a big fat zero the magnetic field is only there inside keep this in mind is only there when you are inside that is for a toroid toroid is number of turns are there on a tube circular tube it's basically a solenoid which was flat you bend it into a circle that is the magnetic field that is going to make it a toroid that's it yes negligible or zero yes okay so we have till now studied fields how to find the fields and the laws associated with different uh, you know electricity and magnetism concepts till now after this we will uh, study capacitors and uh, current electricity in a very fun manner then we'll also go to you know force acting on a current carrying wire and torque and dipoles and all of that and hopefully we'll do EMI also okay chalo I'll see you in a short break I'll see you after a short break uh, we'll return what's the time now it's 7 50 almost <clears throat> Sorry, 650 it is. I'll see you in some time, okay? Yeah.
Yo, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back everyone. I hope I'm audible, visible properly and uh, I hope you had your quick dinner like just me. Okay. Hello Krishna Sumati, Samuel Ramya, welcome Dr. Pratyu, Doc, uh, hello Subhashni, hello Glancy, welcome, welcome Samuel, good evening Rajendran. Yes, nice to see all of you back and uh, hopefully you have got your friends also along. If you have not, what are you guys doing quickly? Uh, share the link across Instagram, Telegram, wherever you can and get back all the kids, right? So, hopefully uh, my light doesn't go right now. This is on UPS and uh, there is a power cut in my area. I hope that this session at least lasts for more 1, 2, 3 hours, okay? If it gets disconnected somewhere in between, then realize that there was a power cut plus UPS also gave up, okay? So, hopefully it continues, all right. So, let's begin with the lecture. Uh, till now, we have seen fields, forces, um, and we have also talked about <coughs> magnetic fields and their origins due to current and all of that. So, now it's time that we go to, uh, you know, dipoles, and we will also talk about forces on current carrying wires, all right? So, that is one part on forces on moving charges. So let's start with, first of all, uh, magnetic effects, magnetic effects on charges and currents. That's what we will talk about first. Magnetic effects on charges and currents. Okay. So that is the topic. Cool. Uh, whether or not it is useful for utopians. Uh, I remember there were a lot of people from Africa who used to watch my channel even last year. So a uh, lot of people told me that they had a score improvement and they were able to see a lot of things are common in syllabus with India and uh, you know a lot of other countries. So I'm guessing that if you just match the syllabus and see, I think you will be able to find a lot of resemblance, right? So, my advice will be, yes, I think it is, provided the syllabus are very similar at 11th and 12th grade, okay? So, let's continue with magnetic effects. <clears throat> Just one second. Okay. See, if you take a charge, if you take a charge and keep it in an electric field this is basically electric field then it will experience then it will experience a force then it will experience a force and that force is given by the value of the charge into the value of the electric field you have seen this in electrostatics. A charge obviously will get affected by electric field. This is the force acting on it. But will a charge get affected by magnetic field? That is the real question. And the answer is yes. So again, I take a charge. I take a charge. And then I apply some magnetic field on it. I apply some magnetic field B on it. Okay, so this is your magnetic field, magnetic field. If you notice, or if you actually perform this experiment, you will find that the charge will not move. In fact, there will be no force acting on it. There will be no force only acting on it due to this magnetic field. But this is only if the charge is at rest only if the charge is at rest but by chance let's say the same charge is moving with some velocity okay is moving with some velocity and just like before there is some magnetic field also there is some magnetic field also let's say the magnetic field is like this then you will notice that there will be a force and that force will be perpendicular to velocity as well as magnetic field that means if velocity is here, magnetic field is here, visualize this in three dimension, probably the force will be like this. 
and it is going to be perpendicular to field as well as the velocity both and this force is definitely not zero and this force actually comes out to be the charge the charge into the velocity of that charge multiplied by or cross product with the magnetic field with the magnetic field this is the force of this is basically the force on a moving charge force on a moving charge due to magnetic field due to magnetic field due to magnetic field very very important formula very very important formula now you might be also wondering sir what if there is electric field also and what if there is magnetic field also well let's have a look at it also imagine this is the velocity of the particle charge particle imagine there is magnetic field here so when you do velocity cross product this is v cross b so take your fingers of the right hand first put it in the direction of velocity slowly turn it towards magnetic field the thumb points in the direction of the force that's how it is right yeah <clears throat> sakti i'll be making a separate formula session also where i'll be discussing the entire physics formulas together in one session hello gokul deva nice to see you back over here yes and we q we cross b correct now now here velocity is here magnetic field is here the thumb goes up like this so definitely the force due to the magnetic field will be in this particular direction this is fm the force due to magnetic field it's perpendicular to this perpendicular to this imagine the electric field is in some other direction i don't know maybe the electric field is let's say here maybe the electric field is in this direction so then the force due to the electric field will also be in the same or opposite direction depending on the sign of the charge so this is the force due to electric field both these forces will simultaneously act simultaneously act and what you will get is the net force what you will get is the net force so this net force net force which is f which is nothing but the force due to electric field plus the force due to magnetic field so what is the force due to electric field it will be nothing but the charge multiplied by the field itself and then what is the force due to the magnetic field it will be charge into velocity cross product with the magnetic field this is your total force acting on the body this is the total force acting on the body due to both electric as well as magnetic fields this is also called as the lorentz force the lorentz force very very important formula charge into field will give you electric force charge velocity into magnetic field cross product with magnetic field will give you magnetic force the total vector sum of both of these forces is the total lorentz force due to electromagnetic fields yes krishna correct yes very nice now under what situations are the forces going to matter not matter let's take all possibilities which are there in your neat syllabus starting off with a simple case starting off with a simple case observe this carefully if if there is only electric field okay if there is only electric field but in that also but in that also over oh, it right. in that also there are two sub cases first case first case the charge is thrown like this or the charge is thrown like this or the charge is basically at rest the charge is thrown opposite or in the direction of the field in any of these cases what will happen because of the field there will be a force and obviously the force will be in this direction q into e what about the acceleration acceleration by newton's law is force by mass so it will be q e divided by m so the charges will have acceleration towards the right side so what will happen to this velocity obviously this velocity will increase this velocity will increase so 
you can say speed increases in this situation what about this particular situation if you throw the charge exactly in the opposite direction if you throw the charge exactly in the opposite direction because the force is opposite to the velocity you will see that the speed will gradually reduce will gradually reduce until it stops and makes a turn makes a turn it makes a turn right it makes a turn and then again starts to accelerate like this in the third case it will start from rest it will gain some small velocity then the velocity will increase even increase more and even increase more in all the cases what is happening is the motion is a straight line motion the motion is a basically straight lined motion is that absolutely very very clear so the motion of the charge is basically a straight line keep this in mind when the velocity is parallel anti parallel or the charge started basically from rest that's the first case that's the first case which you must definitely know the second case is when the field is there and the charge is basically thrown at an angle the charge is basically thrown at an angle to the field not parallel or anti parallel in such a case what happens is the motion looks something like this because of the force and because of that acceleration which is going to be qe divided by m this acceleration is very much similar to gravity just tilt this diagram like this just tilt this diagram like this make the charge make the sorry make the field go down like this and let the velocity be at an angle like this let the velocity be at an angle like this and make the acceleration also point down this is like acceleration due to gravity or thrown the charge or the mass from a height how will the motion look like the motion will look something like this the motion will look something like this it's like your uh, projectile motion this is like your projectile motion and projectile motion is a parabolic motion the path taken is a parabola not hyperbola circle ellipse or anything else it's a parabola so the motion will be like this and it would be a parabola it would be a parabola very very interesting thing it is a parabolic motion under the influence of electric field but the velocity makes some angle great then what could be the next scenario the next scenario is when the velocity is parallel or anti parallel to the magnetic field observe this magnetic field this is charge this is velocity this is charge this is velocity this is charge this is velocity and this is your magnetic field this is your magnetic field what happens is when you do the cross product of the velocity with the magnetic field the answer will come out to be zero so hence the force will also come out to be zero acceleration will also come out to be zero hence the velocity will be constant meaning meaning the particle continues its journey along this line or along this line and the motion is of a straight line the motion is basically of a straight line motion straight line motion no change in direction no change in speed no change in velocity constant uniform motion that's what happens velocity is constant here it was a parabola before that it was a straight line very very interesting now another scenario let's take it another scenario fourth scenario where where you will see that velocity is basically perpendicular to the magnetic field so for simplicity let's say the magnetic field is shown as cross cross means it is going inside so it is going inside the plane of the board like this the magnetic field is going inside the plane of the board in this particular fashion so if you throw the charge like this if you throw the charge like this in this particular manner the force on it use your right hand thumb rule q v velocity is there magnetic field is inside so bend your fingers from there to here the thumb goes up so hence the force will be in this particular direction and since this force is perpendicular to the velocity and it will always remain perpendicular even after some time when the particle goes here you will see probably the velocity might be here 
but the force will also again be perpendicular and this continues this story continues and this only happens in one peculiar motion and what is that motion called it is nothing but uniform circular motion uniform circular uniform circular motion very very important so the particle performs uniform circular motion as simple as that so there is definitely an acceleration which is happening towards the center also and you can use that the magnetic force is mass into centripetal acceleration and you can get many equations one of the equations that you get is for velocity sorry radius of the circle radius of the circle so if this is radius of the circle the radius of the circle comes out as mass into velocity divided by charge into magnetic field which is also nothing but momentum by qb momentum by qb which is also root of 2 times mass times kinetic energy divided by charge into field because momentum is root 2 mk momentum is root of 2 times of mk correct that is the answer so this is something again which you should remember this formula you get it by solving this above equation from here you get this from here you get this you can also find the time period of the revolution which is also 1 by the frequency in case frequency is asked that comes out as 2 pi mass m by qb m by qb that is the answer for the time period in case that is asked in case that is asked okay 2 pi m divided by qb it is independent of velocity that is the interesting part it is independent it is independent of the velocity why does it go in uniform circular motion is also important because force is perpendicular that's why it cannot do work that's why it cannot change kinetic energy that's why it can't change speed that's why it will go with constant speed constant speed means uniform and why circular because the force is perpendicular so only changes the direction without changing the speed so obviously uniform circular motion in fact you should also add that point somewhere over here you should also add the point somewhere over here since 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 this particular force is always going to be perpendicular to the velocity what it means is that it can never ever do work it can never do work or basically it can never change the speed never change either the speed or even the kinetic energy but can only change but can change what can it change only the direction of motion only the direction of the motion so it can change the direction so it can change the direction of the motion but it can never change or never do work or it can never change the speed or the kinetic energy very important point regarding the magnetic force regarding the magnetic force remember that but when you talk about the electric force this one it can definitely change it can definitely change the direction as well as the speed as well as do work okay so keep this in mind so electric field electric field can do work change speed and also direction so it can do all these things it can do remember that it can do here it can't do work can't change speed but it can only change the direction okay something which is noteworthy very good proud of all of you if you have got it till here shall we proceed ahead all these points are very very important yes correct now when you talk about the next case which is the velocity makes an angle with the magnetic field so imagine the magnetic field is like this and the velocity is in this direction this velocity comes up with two components one component is like this one component is like this which is parallel component which i can call it as v cos theta where theta is the angle between velocity and the magnetic field the other component 
the other component is v perpendicular v perpendicular which is v sin theta v parallel is obviously parallel to magnetic field and whenever velocity is parallel to magnetic field what happens the force is zero the velocity never changes so that is the reason why what you will see is this velocity will always remain constant this will always remain constant there is no change in that but this one is perpendicular to the magnetic field notice this is perpendicular to the magnetic field and what happens when velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field it performs uniform circular motion so here the field was inside imagine the field was here the one circular motion which is happening like this or like this so imagine the field is here the circular motion will happen in this plane okay in this plane imagine it in three dimension so the magnetic field is here this circular motion will happen like this It'll go like that and it will come like this it will have go like that and it will come like this that and it will come like this in that particular uh, you know plane visualize it perpendicular to the plane of the board so if both the motions are combined together the motion that you will actually end up getting is basically this kind of motion it's a little bit difficult to draw but i will try my best okay this motion is a helical motion this is a helical motion it's a spring like motion it's like a spring like motion like this this is called as a helix this is basically called as a helix in a helix you have a very important term called as the pitch from one side to the next turn one one point to the other point which is identical in nature that is called as the pitch of the helix that is called as a pitch of the helix also a uh, helix will also have radius the helix will also have radius finding the radius of the helix is very simple the radius of the helix will only depend on the v perpendicular component because that is the one which is doing circular motion this component is bringing ahead so you take a circle keep on it rotating but you keep it moving along the axis what you get is a spring like structure so the radius will be m v perpendicular divided by q times of b just like before m v by q b but that v is only v perpendicular what about the pitch what about the pitch obviously the pitch will only depend on the parallel component of the velocity so it will be v parallel but into the time taken to complete the revolution why because speed is constant so the pitch is nothing but the distance so pitch is nothing but distance distance is nothing but you know your speed multiplied by time speed multiplied by time so what is the speed v parallel or v cos theta what is the time time period of revolution so what is the time period of revolution it was nothing but 2 pi m divided by q times of b what is v parallel it is nothing but v cos theta so that is going to give you the pitch of the helix that is going to give you the pitch of the helix this is also kind of common common kind of question very good excellent then another sub case which you should remember by the way let me also block all these things because these are all important formulas for all these cases time period i have given you before only time period i have given you here that's why i have not blocked the second one okay now the next particular case which you should know is something called as a case where both are there and they are all perpendicular so that is called as a crossed field that is called as a crossed field so in case of a crossed field what happens is you have magnetic field okay you have magnetic field let's say like this you also have a charge which is given some velocity so the force due to the magnetic field velocity cross magnetic field it will come upwards the thumb is upwards so this is a force due to magnetic field it is exactly balanced by a force of electric field so the electric field force is downwards that means in the same region the electric field 
is pointing downwards. The electric field is pointing downwards. Okay. So these both forces, if they cancel out each other, if they cancel out each other, then the motion will be a straight line motion. This is a straight line motion. And when this happens, remember, the force due to magnetic field will be force due to the electric field. That means the velocity is constant. The acceleration is zero. It is going in a straight line motion. Both the forces by magnetic and electric field are balancing out each other. In such a case, guys, remember, cross field velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. That is also perpendicular to the electric field. You can see every field or vector is in a particular axis. Velocity is along x axis. Magnetic field is along z axis. Electric field is along y axis, x, y, z. All are perpendicular to each other. So that is called as a crossed field cross field okay very very important and when this happens you can see what is the final result magnetic field force is q v b and everything is perpendicular so sin 90 electric field force is charge into field so q q cancels sin 90 is 1 so velocity is e by b velocity is e by b very important only for this speed only for this speed only for this speed it is a straight line it is a straight line you'll be wondering sir what if it is not this speed because i got a relationship when it can go to uh, uh, in a straight line what if the velocity is not this if it is more if it is more then what will happen speed will be more fm will be more so magnetic force will be more so it will go on the top it will go on the top so you will see my dear warriors if the speed is more if the speed is more, then it will probably go like this. It will probably go like this. This is for V more than E by B. If V is less than E by B, then it will go down because the magnetic force will be less. Electric field will be more. Force will be more. So it will go down. So velocity will be less than E by B. It goes down like this. Only certain speeds can go along a straight line. So imagine a bunch of charged particles coming all with different speeds some very large some small some medium only those speeds which are of this ratio will go straight line all others will go down or up that means if i make a hole here and everything else is blocked only certain speeds will pass through the hole and reach the other side so i'm able to select my velocity i'm able to select my velocity of the charged particles that is why this is the, also the concept of something called as velocity selector. Velocity selector. This is the concept of velocity selector because I can choose which speeds uh, of the particles should be allowed to pass straight. All others will be deflected up or down. Isn't this amazing phenomena? Isn't this amazing phenomena, my dear warriors? Very good. So these are the six categories of motion that you must, must remember and understand cool i have revised everything i have revised everything for you for force on a charged particle now comes the next part okay if a moving charge if a moving charge in a magnetic field in a magnetic Oops. magnetic field can experience a force then tell me if I have a wire okay if I have a wire which carries some current if I have a wire which carries some current and then such a wire is placed in a magnetic field will that wire also experience force or not will that wire also experience a force or not think about it guys make sure that you are speaking in english on this particular channel because everybody has to understand i know everybody appreciates and loves to talk in our own languages but that's the whole point of creating this channel 
or else we could have just let it go with creating a Hindi channel. Then we could have just said, okay, it's okay, let's learn in Hindi, right? So there is a reason why this channel has been made in English, okay? So make sure you stick to that, right? Or else you'll be getting timed out by the supervisor or the admin, right? So, um, yeah, like I was saying, will this wire also experience force? Yes, because the wire carrying current has moving charges and moving charges means exactly this scenario. So definitely there will be a force acting on this particular wire. Definitely there will be a force acting on a wire which carries current. So that is the next part, which is a consequence of this part. So if you have, if you have, uh, let's say a big wire, and in that wire, you are taking a small element, DL element. This wire has some current I passing through it. And let's say there is a magnetic field cutting through that wire. There will be a force as well. There will be a force on that element, which will be DF because it's a small element, small force. So the force DF on an element of a wire carrying current in a magnetic field in a magnetic field is given by just like you had charge into velocity cross b you make it charge per unit time what will it become it will become current it will basically become the current, okay? It's current into element length, which is basically DL, cross the magnetic field, cross the magnetic field. So this is the formula for the force acting on the small element. I is the current, DL is the length of the element cross B. Length of the element always take it in the direction of the current. This element is in the direction of the current is in the direction of basically the current if you want to find the net force on the wire the net force the net force on the wire the net force on the wire obviously there will be so many small small df 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 forces acting at different different places imagine this wire is there imagine this wire is there you go one part the force is here 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 again it is here again it is here so when you want to find the net force it's going to be addition but vector because force is a vector so it will be just integration of df that's it so that is going to give you the net force acting on the wire as simple as that cool it's going to give you the net force acting on the wire very good yes yes Sanvi. it will be integrate it will be integration correct yes very nice now what about what about where do we go yeah what about a straight wire carrying current what about a straight wire what about a straight wire carrying current what about a straight wire carrying current well Imagine this was a straight wire carrying current I length L placed in some magnetic field like this. Then the force acting on it, then the force acting on it will be simply given by instead of current into small length into magnetic field, it will be the big length. That's it. So it will be current. It will be nothing but the current into the length cross the magnetic field cross the magnetic field as simple as that so i l cross b is the force acting on a wire which carries current and this is the principle of working of motors and so many electro mechanical devices around us like solenoid walls so many things are there which works only on this formula i l cross b so if you take a wire carrying current and you place it in the magnetic field it will experience force so a lot of people also ask, sir, there are so many wires around us. Earth is also a big magnet. Won't it be applying force on them? Yes. But how much is that force? Okay, even if you take few amperes of current, even if you take the length, 
as 1 to meters. Magnetic field of Earth is of the order of 10 to the power minus 4. So the force is in millinewtons or even lesser than that sometimes. So that's the reason why that magnetic force hardly causes any change on the wires around you. But if the Earth were to be a very strong magnet and the current is also decent, length is also decent, then yes, that force will be significant. It is not going to be negligible in that case. Got it, my dear warriors? Awesome. Now, there is a very interesting turn of events which happens for a curved wire. We saw for a straight wire. Similarly, for a curved wire, what interesting thing happens? Curved wire. Very, very interesting thing. Imagine the wire is like this. It is carrying some current. Every point on it will experience force in different, different directions. Every point on it will experience force in different, different directions, right? Like this. And that's the problem. If I want to find the net force, I have to sit and integrate this stupid thing. It's very crazy. So imagine this was the magnetic field. I want to find the force on the curved wire. I want to find the force on the curved wire. The logic is simple. You don't worry about the curved wire shape, size, I mean, all those other things. What you do is replace that curved wire with a straight wire. Replace the curved wire with a straight wire. This is the effective length. Replace it with a straight wire and obviously let same current flow through it. So the force through the curved wire is also the force oops, is also the force through the straight wire. And the force through the straight wire is nothing but that same old current which you got over here. That same current you have to use. You cannot use different current. But the length will be effective length. So L effective cross the magnetic field. Cross the magnetic field. So that is the force on a curved wire. That is the force on a curved wire. Very interesting result. You can replace a big curve by a straight line, joining the ends with the same current. And the direct repercussion of this, imagine I take a loop of current. This is a loop of current carrying wire. And this loop of current carrying wire, I place it in a magnetic field. What is the effective length? Oh my God, the length effective will be zero because the start and the end is the same. It's a loop. Imagine this point were brought here. This yellow line will become zero. There is no effective length. So what is the force on a complete loop? It is obviously going to be a big fat zero. And this is also a very, very important result. The net force acting on a loop placed in a uniform magnetic field is always going to be a big fat zero is always going to be a big fat zero. Oh, when you use this theorem or this property, please keep in mind this magnetic field must be uniform. If it is non-uniform, you cannot use this. If it is not uniform, you cannot use this. Let me show some simple easy peasy examples for you. So guys, imagine there is a wire like this. It is bent like this and it is like this. This is basically radius R. This length is also R. And let's say the magnetic field is in the perpendicular, sorry, inside the plane of the board like this. Question will be, you know, find the force. Find the force due to the magnetic field. What do we do? It's a curved wire. Replace it with a straight wire. Joining the ends. Okay. Joining the ends. Show a straight wire. This is what the ends are. So that is what your L effective will be. So think about it. In that L effective, what is the base? What is the height? This is perpendicular. This is R. This is your diameter. Diameter means 2R. So length effective will be R square plus 4R square, which is R root 5. Perfect. So the force acting on it will be I. Length effective. Length effective into B. So it will be I R B root 5. That is the answer of the force, which is very, very direct. Pretty much a direct. Yes. Isn't it easy? When will it be difficult is this one. 
Imagine there is a straight wire carrying some current capital I and there is another loop of current carrying current small i. Carrying current small i. And then they ask you what is the force on the smaller loop over here placed besides this wire, long wire carrying current. Lot of people will think first of all why will there be any force? So let me make you realize that this big wire which is carrying some current, this big wire which is carrying some current will generate its own magnetic field around it. Will generate its own magnetic field around it like this. So right hand side the magnetic field will be inside, left hand side the magnetic field will come towards you. It will go like this, go inside, go like that behind and come like this. So here there will be definitely magnetic field which is going inside the plane of the board. So you'll be like, okay, sir, if there is a magnetic field which is going inside because of this wire, I, I think you just told for a loop which carries current inside the magnetic field, the force is zero. So the answer is zero. And that's not correct. Reason being, the magnetic field is not uniform. When you are close, the magnetic field is even stronger. The magnetic field is even stronger. As you go far away, slowly, you will see that the magnetic field strength reduces the magnetic field strength basically reduces gradually reduces gradually so here it was really really strong here it was really strong here it became weak weaker and even weak over here after this it will be even weak than this so because of which the force on this side and this side will not be the same so now think about it now think about it for this wire What's the direction of the force going to be? Use I L cross B. Length is like this. Magnetic field is inside. Length cross magnetic field. The thumb comes towards the left. So the force will be like this. The force will be like this. Similarly on this wire, because for this wire carrying current up, it was left side. For the wire carrying current down, it will be towards the right side, but the force will be less. The force will be less. Why? Because the field is weak. What about this part and this part? I'll tell you one trick. If on a loop, if on one side only you see the force is outwards, for every element it will be outwards automatically. You can do length cross magnetic field is inside, force comes out. Force comes out. Force will also come out, out over here. These two will cancel. This will cancel with this this two will cancel but these two won't in fact the net force will be like this this is the direction of the net force did you get it my dear warriors no it is not repulsion it will attract yeah a repulsion for this oh i think you told for this yes this will repel this will attract correct this will attract correct yes very good very good now in fact that also brings us to these kind of questions where you have two wires which carry currents parallel to each other versus two wires which carry current anti-parallel to each other and are separated by distance d and are separated by distance d. They are separated by distance d. So when you talk about such scenarios, see what will happen. Each wire will generate its magnetic field which will affect the other current. Each wire will generate a magnetic field which will affect the other current. Like for example this one, it will create a magnetic field like this. It will create a magnetic field which goes like this, isn't it? Hold your thumb in the direction of the current. The curl fingers gives you the direction of the magnetic field. That magnetic field by the first wire is given by mu naught i 1 divided by 2 pi distance, distance is d. This formula we studied just some time back before the break. Same thing over here. The magnetic field generated will be like this or even like this. Yes, correct. Like this. This is the same magnetic field which will be generated at this point. So this magnetic field which goes down will create a force on the second wire. So magnetic field is down, current is there. I length cross B. Length is here. Magnetic field is down. I think the force will be that way. The force will be like that way. 
So you will see probably the force trying to be in this particular manner. This is the force. Here, I think the force will be away from each other, something like this. It will be away from each other, something like this. Yes. Here, it will basically repel for opposite directions. For same directions, it will basically attract each other. And this force per unit length will come out to be mu naught i1 i2 divided by 2 pi d. Mu naught i1 i2 divided by 2 pi d because this force will be nothing but the current which is i2 into the magnetic field which is b1 and the length and the length i l b current into the length of the wire by uh, sorry into b magnetic field from outside. So if you take length below, force per unit length will be exactly this particular value. This is again a very important result which is also used to define the unit of ampere. Which is also used to define the unit of ampere, force per unit length. Remember same direction will attract, opposite directions will repel. That's how it works. Yes Pratibha, correct. Very good. Right. So these are some of the important case based scenarios on uh, force effects of magnetic field on moving charges and current carrying wires. Yes, there is dipoles which will be coming to shortly. So let's go to the next part which is, you know, dipoles. Which is basically dipoles. Okay, so this part is done. Let's go to the next part. And let's talk about dipoles together both for electricity as well as for magnetism. Now, what is the meaning of a dipole? Di means two, pole means polarities. So two polarities of equal and opposite magnitude. So when we talk about charges, it's nothing but you are taking a positive charge, you are taking a negative charge. That's a electrical dipole. Whereas for magnetism, it's nothing but you are taking a north pole and then you are taking a south pole and placing it together like a bar magnet. Like a bar magnet. That's it. That is a magnetic dipole. In case of electric dipole, the electric field lines will go from positive to negative, something like this. Something like this. This is how the electrical field lines will look like. Right? This is how the electrical field lines will look like. In case of magnetic dipole, almost similar but slightly different. Why? Because magnetic field lines have to be continuous loops. So the field lines will look probably like this. That is how it is, right? This is the North Pole. This is your South Pole. Perfect. This is how the magnetic field lines look like for magnetism. In either case, there are two special lines which you need to remember. One is this line, which cuts the magnet into half. Imagine if Earth were a magnet. It is actually. Then that line which cuts the Earth's magnet into half will be the equator. So when you cut the magnet into half half, this is dividing the magnet into equal parts. That is why this is also called as the equator. Same thing also applies for electricity. This line over here is also called as the equator. Equator. Similarly, this line which passes through the poles. So from the Earth's poles, what passes is the axis of the rotation. So this one over here is called as the axis of the dipole. What is this called? Axis of the dipole. This is also called as the axis of the dipole. This is also called as the axis of the dipole. Fair enough till this point? Okay. Next we define the dipole moment, which is the strength of the dipole. How strong the dipole is. How strong the dipole is. 
सो डायपोल मोमेंट ऑलवेज गोज फ्रॉम माइनस टू प्लस फ्रॉम साउथ टू नॉर्थ सो यू विल सी द डायपोल मोमेंट पी इज दिस वे एंड द फॉर्मूला फॉर द डायपोल मोमेंट द फॉर्मूला फॉर द डायपोल मोमेंट इज एनी वन ऑफ द चार्ज इधर दिस और दिस इन टू द सपरेशन बिटवीन दम इन टू द सपरेशन बिटवीन दम दैट्स इट इट इज द चार्ज इन टू द सपरेशन नथिंग मोर चार्ज इन टू द सपरेशन एंड द यूनिट ऑफ दिस बिकॉज दिस इज कूलम दिस इज मीटर सो इट इज कूलम मीटर दैट इज द यूनिट ऑफ दिस इट्स अ वैक्टर इट्स अ वैक्टर विच गोज फ्रॉम माइनस टू प्लस रिमेंबर दैट माइनस टू प्लस नॉट प्लस टू माइनस फील्ड गोज फ्रॉम प्लस टू माइनस डायपोल मोमेंट डजेंट डायपोल मोमेंट डजेंट कीप दैट इन माइंड सिमिलरली फॉर मैग्नेटिज्म ऑल्सो यू हैव द मैग्नेटिक चार्जेस यू हैव अ सपरेशन बिटवीन दैम you have a magnetic moment again called m capital m just like p you have m magnetic moment it is the magnetic charge into the separation which is l that's it that is your that is your magnetic dipole moment just like you have two kinds of charges positive negative in coulombs you also have two kinds of polarities of charge for magnetism so north magnetic pole south magnetic pole that is uh, defined by this qm if it is positive it is north if it is negative it is south okay just like you have plus and minus charge proton neutron uh, electron proton is like north pole electron is like south pole the charge on it will be 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 etc coulombs here depending on how strong the magnet is this magnetic charge not in coulombs it's having completely different units so please don't get confused with that yeah don't say it is also in coulombs no in fact you will see the unit of magnetic moment unit of magnetic moment will be ampere meter square okay if it is ampere meter square the uh, qm by the way is called as the magnetic charge magnetic charge the magnetic charge will have a unit of ampere meter ampere meter that is the unit of magnetic charge completely different thing don't get confused yes yes magnetic dipole is basically within the same uh, bar magnet right sir because my monopoles do not exist yes it's within the same uh, magnet because magnet whenever i say it will always come one on one free like when you go to the shop sometimes offers are there if you buy this you will get that free so magnets whenever you look at it it always comes in pairs of two polarities north and south so it is the magnetic moment not of any one pole but the magnet as a whole like over here electric dipole moment is not of positive or negative charge it's of the whole thing together as a system i call it as the dipole right so di is to pole is polarities so that was two polarities but equal and opposite right so two equal but opposite polarities correct two equal but opposite polarities there is one more thing which acts like a dipole which acts like a dipole and that is something also which is there in your ncert and can be asked in neat imagine there is a coil which carries current imagine there is a coil which carries current how does the magnetic field line because of it looks like it looks something like this i believe oops this is how a loop carrying current looks like these are the magnetic field lines around it just check this diagram and this diagram do you find any lot of difference apart from the elongated version that's it 
This is a bar magnet, so the field lines are being stretched. But if it is a solenoid, it will look very similar. Here it is a single plane coil. So you can see the magnetic field lines are very similar to that of a bar magnet. So if bar magnet can have magnetic moment and it produces magnetic field, why can't a loop carrying current which has similar magnetic field lines which behaves like a magnet be also a magnetic dipole? Obviously. So there will be polarities even for that. So this will be the north side of the loop and this will be the south side of the loop. North side, south side. And just like before, this one over here, this one over here, this one over here will be the axis of the loop and obviously this one over here will be the equator, equator of the loop. Axis, equator, just like before. Isn't it simple? Wow. So, does this loop also have magnetic moment? Obviously, yes, because north and south are there. And the calculations can be done. It's not that difficult. The magnetic moment of such a coil, just like you have NTA. What does NTA do? People will be mocking now. I think they will tell all sorts of weird, weird things. So, let's not get there. Magnetic mo moment is very similar in formula like NTA. Instead of the T, N, T, A, NTA made a mistake. Zoop, the T, that top part came down. The T's top part came down. So what happened? Instead of putting the T over here, you put it over here. Uh, or just forget that I, okay? Or just make it like I. The T, this part just fell down somewhere. So you forgot to put that T. So N, I, A. That's it. So... Forget that T, that top part, it just fell down, right? So NIA, that is it, magnetic moment. Mag Oops, what just happened? Yeah, magnetic moment, NIA, you can think of it, NIA, right? So I'll just block it. What is N, you might ask? What is N, sir? What is N, sir? N is nothing but number of turns in that loop. I is nothing but current of that loop. What is A sir? It is obviously the area of the loop. N I A. As simple as that. So you can see ampere and meter square. That's the magnetic moments uh, unit. Ampere into meter square. N does not have any unit. So that's how I derived the unit to be ampere meter square in case you are wondering about it. So from this I can derive the unit of the magnetic charge. Okay. That's how it goes. Cool. Everyone. Shall we go ahead? Right, seeing lectures, so they get some different type of questions. Jaganesh, you know what is the scariest thing? More than seeing my lectures, I feel they should not see my hack and uh, guessing options videos because if they see that, that's it. They will stop making options like that. I'm very scared of that. And I'll be making one video very soon. In fact, uh, in the crash course also, I, you know, made a uh, lecture on how to guess answers scientifically and uh, it was a huge hit. Students loved it. So I gave them a very good analysis of when to guess, how to guess, what timing you should guess, when to not guess, how to reduce the uh, risk, how to increase the reward, all those calculations we did in the crash. So it was crazy. So... Hopefully, that's why I did it over there because if it becomes popular, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Anyways, cool. So let's go ahead. So we have learned what a dipole is and how to calculate the dipole moment. Okay, what's the next part then? Okay, sir, we have a dipole. We have a dipole. Let's say the dipole is like this. Let's say the dipole is like this. It could be electric dipole. It could be magnetic dipole. Okay, let's for simplicity now take electric dipole. Next case, oops, next time, let's take a magnetic dipole. This is your magnetic dipole, capital M. Now, around it, it creates its own field. It has its own potential. So how much is the field or potential at any random point? So if you take electrical dipole and let's say you choose a random point somewhere here. Oops. This is theta and at some random point, 
because the electric field lines will go like this. So let's say the electric field was in this particular direction, like this. And had you continued this line, it went like that. The electric field also makes some angle. Let's say I call it alpha over here. Let's say I call it alpha over here. With the position vector of the point where you want to find the field. With the position vector of the point where you want to find the field. This is the position vector with respect to the dipole moment. That electric field magnitude is given by k p and then you have r cube and then you have root of here 3 cos square theta plus 1. That is the formula. And the value of alpha is given by this tan of alpha will be tan of theta whole thing divided by 2 it is not tan theta by 2 no 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 it is not tan of theta by 2 it is tan theta whole thing divided by 2 is tan alpha that will give you the direction of the electric field so you can take some special cases also we'll come to that but before that what about potential at that point what about potential at that point let's find it out so at that particular point the potential formula is just given by kp cos theta by basically r square kp cos theta by r square here it is r cube not r square here and r here be careful be careful about it right so let's take some special cases and find out so what about on the axis what about on the axis on the axis theta will be basically zero what about on the equator what about on the equator obviously on the equator theta will be plus minus 90 degree okay let's find out everything on the axis electric field on the axis the electric field will be cos 0 is 1 3 plus 1 is 4 root of 4 is 2 so it will become 2 times kp divided by r cube whereas over here at the equator theta is 90 cos 90 is 0 0 into 3 0 0 plus 1 1 1 is root 1 so electric field on the equator will be just kp by r cube so that means on the axis that is over here it is strong and whereas on the equator that's here it is weak and it is half of that on the axis half of that on the axis is that absolutely clear my dear warriors so very very important revelation similarly what about potential well on the axis the potential on the axis so theta could be 0 it could be also 180 by the way 0 or even 180 degrees remember that so coming back over here cos of 0 1 cos 180 minus 1 so kp by r square but it could be plus or minus both so it is basically kp by r square it could be plus or minus depending on whether it is 0 or 180 what about at the equator the potential on the equator cos 90 is 0 so voltage is 0 so voltage is 0 volts so on the equator it's a 0 volt line on one side it is positive other side it is negative one side positive other side negative very important revolutions again over here also bear this in mind whatever formulas I am giving you over here they are only for these not just this one everything whatever I have given over here all these are only for short dipoles short dipoles meaning the length of the dipole is much much lesser than r length of the dipole is much smaller than the distance where you are finding it out okay keep this in mind very very crucial things very very crucial because what happened is once one second In the examination, they gave a positive charge here. They gave a minus charge over here. And this was like this. This was minus Q. This was plus Q. And uh, this was the Y axis, I believe. This was having the coordinates A comma 0. This had the coordinates minus A comma 0. And then they gave a point over here, which was 0 comma A. And then they asked, what is the field at this point? What is the field at this point? 
many students in this particular question what they did was they thought oh sir this is an electric dipole sir this is equatorial position so i'll use the formula <laughs> you can't reason being look at the diagram you'll understand the length of the dipole is 2a the distance is hardly a so it is not it is not very large so guys remember this approximation which i am saying length of the dipole is very small the distances are very far that won't be applicable none of these formulas will work so don't use these formulas in that situation so we'll be like sir what to do sir in this case are you know simple electrostatics no just do that because of positive charge at this point the electric field will be like this this is because of the positive charge because of the negative charge the electric field will be attractive like this so this is e minus these two are going to be perpendicular because same magnitude same distance everything so their resultant the resultant will be in this direction so this is be e net and because this field is equal to this field so when i find the value of e which will be e plus square plus e minus square it will be just root 2 times any one of the electric field it will be just root 2 times any one of the electric field correct magnitude because e plus and e minus will be of same magnitude just different directions and i can find e plus very easily because you can see this distance this distance if this is a this is a this will be obviously root 2 times of a so the value of e plus the value of e plus will be how much it will be k into q divided by distance square which is root of 2a whole square substitute it over here you got the answer right now take this over here substitute over here you will definitely get the answer for this understood how this question had to be solved properly using vectors and basic principles of superposition yeah pratyu i don't know more one hour i guess so one and a half hour yeah we'll also have another small break after this after electricity magnetism is done because we have current electricity and capacitors also okay so moving on moving on moving on this is done okay ha huh. for magnetism also same formulas okay magnetism also magnetism also same formulas so guys just like here just like over here same formulas no change at all so you will go r over here okay this will be theta and again you will be finding magnetic field this will be alpha this will be again mu not by 4 pi this will be root of and there will be current over here sorry why current magnetic moment over here uh, 3 cos square theta plus 1 will be there and here r cube will be there tan of alpha will be tan of theta divided by 2 for magnetic moment same thing for potential also so potential will be mu not by 4 pi m cos theta divided by r square okay same like before just like electricity guys there is no difference at all now having said this let's go to the final part of dipoles this is very very important this is very very important sir what will happen if i place a dipole in somebody's field all what we studied till now here this was field potential field potential due to dipoles around dipoles because of the current in it because of the magnetism in it because of the charges on it but if i place some dipole in somebody else's field how will it behave so there are two scenarios in this imagine i take a dipole like this this is let's say electrical dipole example and i place it in a uniform electric field i place it in a uniform field uniform field versus something like this versus something like this this is non uniform field this is non uniform field versus this is uniform electric field what will be the difference see on the positive charge 
the force will be in the same direction as the field. So this is the force on the positive charge. Here the force will be at an angle. So force on the positive charge will be like this. Negative charge, the force is opposite to the field. The force is opposite to the field. So here also the force will be at an angle. The force will be at an angle. And this force will be significantly larger because here the field is strong. Why? The lines are close. The lines are far. Sometimes here it is far, here it is close. So the forces are different in magnitude, obviously also in direction. So what happens over here is the net force will be zero, 100% because this and this will be equal and opposite. But in this case, the net force will not be zero. The net force will not be zero, right? Not just that, what about the torque? I think I can see there is a torque couple like force so this is like a couple force this is like a couple force two equal and opposite things so there will be net torque will may or may not be zero depending on how the alignment is may be there may be there here also depending on the alignment and so many other things net torque may be there net torque may be there it depends on the alignment I'll tell you why alignment matters. Say for example, imagine the dipole moment is like this. Imagine the field is like this. Imagine, imagine the field is basically like this. Whether it is uniform or non-uniform doesn't matter, but the field is like this. And coincidentally, it happens that the force on the positive charge and the force on the negative charge are collinear they are collinear so there is net force but torque is zero and since in this particular case net torque is definitely zero net force is not zero because the negative force will be more than the positive force reason being the field is strong over here and it is basically weak over here so this is less this is more correct so sometimes torque is zero, sometimes it is not zero, like you can see over here, definitely there is a torque over here. Definitely there is a torque in this scenario. Torque is there. Definitely here also torque is there. Some scenarios it may not be there. Got it? So force and torque will act or may act in different scenarios, whether it is uniform or non-uniform field for a dipole in a field. Thank you, Diksha ma'am is here. Wow. Show the energy in the chat box. Yes, thank you, Diksha ma'am. I needed it a lot. And Krishna has already lit up the chat box. Thank you so much, Krishna. And I heard there is a new Whistle Podu song by Thalapati Vijay. I am thinking of doing something based on that. What say, guys? Thank you, Sanvi, so much. Thank you, Jay Ganesh. Finally, Diksha Ma'am had to come. Entry. Then you guys got energy. So many hours. How many hours now? Five and a half hours. I've been here. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you. Thank you, Mohana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Means a lot. And guys, make sure that you are friends too are joining the session and also enjoying all the sessions out here. Block 2 is getting completed. Okay. Okay. Yes, greatest of all time movie. How do you know, man? You are watching movie or I was checking on you guys. <laughs> you do not know it. But but if it is Thalapati, definitely it will be the greatest. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk more about uniform because this is what is there in the syllabus. Um, not anything else. I mean, non-uniform field, the questions are very theoretical or conceptual. Nothing formula based. So if you have a uniform electric field, if you have a uniform electric field and you place a dipole in it, then obviously net force though is zero. There is no doubt about it. Net force is zero, but there is a net torque also acting on it. That is not zero usually. And that torque which acts on it, that torque which acts on it is given by the electrical dipole moment crossed the electric field. Cross the electric field. So magnitude wise it is P E sine theta. 
and there is also energy associated with it that potential energy that potential energy is given by minus minus sign very important p dot product not cross obviously energy means dot because it is scalar so minus p dot e minus p dot e keep this in mind very 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 important formulas no doubt about it similarly sir is there a formula in magnetism obviously instead of electrical dipole moment i will make it magnetic dipole moment that means the bar magnet is like this and instead of electric field what will i do obviously i'll use magnetic field but this time again the magnetic field must be uniform then again just like before the net force will be zero the net torque will not be zero the potential energy of the system will be there the torque will always try to bring the magnetic moment in the direction of the field imagine a magnetic needle is pointing somewhere else magnetic field is here what will the needle do the needle will turn and align in the direction of south and north so always the magnetic dipole tries to align in the direction of the magnetic field that's how the torque works it tries to bring it to its equilibrium stable position keep that in mind so the torque over here so the torque over here is nothing but m here also it is m but here i'll put a minus sign and here there will be a cross here there will be a dot and this will be magnetic field this will be also magnetic field instead of electric field you have magnetic field that's the only change nothing else very crucial very very crucial cool guys understood everybody awesome now there are two or three important positions of any dipole let me show them to you because these kind of questions do come in the examination one situation second situation the first second and this the third situation here the field is like this like this and like this these are the three situations the cases which i'm talking about is when theta is 0 degree theta is 90 degree and the angle is 180 degree now what happens is if theta is 0 degree obviously think about it the torque will be zero if theta is 90 degree the torque will be in fact maximum because sin 90 sin 90 is 1 torque is cross product cross product cross means sin sin 90 is 1 and that's the maximum value of sin theta so torque is maximum here sin 180 is 0 so the torque will be again a big fat zero here energy wise it will be negative and negative value means it is minimum here the potential energy because it is a dot product going back p dot e m dot b dot means cos cos 90 is 0 cos 90 is 0 so potential energy is zero lot of people tell sir the minimum potential energy of the system is zero no zero is not minimum negative number is even smaller than that so that's why this is minimum and here the potential energy is going to be positive and this is a max value of it this is the max value of it in fact when torque is zero it must be some kind of equilibrium it must be some kind of equilibrium correct this is some kind of equilibrium when torque is zero force to anyways was zero this is some kind of equilibrium this is not any equilibrium please remember that a lot of people say sir is this neutral or something no torque is there when torque is there done and that's it there's no kind of equilibrium so when you talk about equilibrium there are three kinds stable unstable and neutral it's not neutral it is going to be either stable or unstable stable means very happy lowest energy state lowest energy means minimum energy so this is going to be your stable equilibrium not just that this one energy is positive maximum so when i am highly energetic unstable crazy i will act like one monkey out there so potential energy is maximum so equilibrium will be unstable unstable more energy you act like a monkey you will become unstable stable like a donkey stable very low energy state no energy at all very lethargic very 
passive. So that is stable equilibrium. Is that right, everyone? Yes, very good. Correcto. Perfect. All right. All right. Perfect. Like me. Jai Ganesh. Monkey or donkey? Come on, everybody put up. Monkey or donkey? Stable or unstable, sir? Okay. So that was your dipole moment. Hmm. Oh, what is this? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, now, right, we are done with most of electromagnetism. We are done with most of electromagnetism. Right. So, we have to do capacitors and current electricity. Um, I'm thinking for EMI, should I make mind maps and give you? That will be better for EMI rather than doing it here. Uh, shall I give, make it a very crisp and short mind map and give it to you? Question practice, we'll do it separately. After uh, after the break, we'll just do current electricity and capacitors. Yeah, after the break. Yeah. Paka, you'll watch it. Or you will again keep it at some 2-3 thousand views only. You keep it at 2-3 thousand views, you had it. Okay. Shall so we'll have a break. What's the time? It's eight forty five. Okay. Like and subscribe. I have to write this also. Is it? Students just come watch, take free content and go. Don't do that. Like and subscribe. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Chalo. I'll see you in some time.
वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक ब्रेक टाइम इज ओवर टाइम टू डू करेंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड कैपेसिटर्स एज मच एज वी कैन इन द नेक्स्ट वन आवर ओके लेट्स कीप इट क्विक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक यस सर हैज कम बैक लेट एवरीबडी नो आई जस्ट गोट टू नो दैट देर इज सम अमेजिंग रील विच इज अपलोडेड शॉर्ट विच इज अपलोडेड ऑन आवर चैनल इज दैट सो लेट मी ऑल्सो हैव अ लुक लेट मी ऑल्सो हैव अ लुक वेल दिस इज अवर लेक्चर प्लीज लाइक इट शेयर इट इफ यू आर नॉट एट वॉच and by the way on sunday uh, uh, uh sorry on saturday block to genetics was done by gopika ma'am and baswa sir so please check it out that is block to this is my lecture block to tomorrow is disha ma'am's block to this entire block, block weightage is close to 180 marks so you cannot miss it what were the actual blocks we have told this over here need 2024 block series on youtube 180 marks per block all the four blocks have been clearly mentioned with the optional topics low weightage and high weightage for all the four blocks so after you know diksha ma'am's class tomorrow or uh, uh, you know you were two blocks will be done two more blocks we are going to keep it super fast within two three days we are going to get it done with all right so yeah let's have a look at the short if i'm audible and visible welcome back ramya hello dipalakshmi soni let's have a look let's have a look oh what is this when teachers lost it Yes, we definitely lost it shooting this. It was just uploaded. Oh, there is no sound over here. This this button that's diode. Diode. Okay, yeah. let me just see what does it say. Cap two, press it one one time then cycle to pay no. Yeah. You yeah. mean this this button that's diode. Diode. Yeah. But diode. Oh my God, you guys have completely lost this. That is neither diode or diode profile. That is the next button. Get a like already. Hello, we see physics and chemistry everywhere. We are green students. Let's celebrate. Ooh, okay, that was a cool one. Yeah, nice today. So, guys, what is your crazy obsession? Yeah, like, has it ever happened that something normal is happening, but you apply physics, maths, bio, or chemistry in it, and you see it very differently? Does it happen with you too? <laughs> yes, tell me, tell me. very little yeah <laughs> okay does it happen with you too you see some things like you see a uh, you know a circle or even a hexagon and you are like oh it is aromatic compound or uh, anything like that in maths we say parallel lines oh, right right it happens and especially when exam is near you apply everything you apply like bio and physics and chemistry it is like you are so deeply invested in it you crack jokes also in pcb so your jokes also are at next level and if you have a arts or a commerce or maybe some other kind of student they are like you are going mental what kind of jokes you are cracking but for you and your friends who are studying for that particular exam or in that same scenario it is extremely funny trust me on this this happens with everyone isn't it yeah right cool so let's begin with our lecture let's begin with our lecture i hope you have smashed the like button in case you haven't done that yet do that and subscribe that is very important hit the subscribe and click all so that you get all the notifications okay and remember in the description box of this video wow i need to turn this off or else for everything it will keep playing in the description box of this particular video you will see that you know your aimt mock test link is there which is absolutely free of cost and it is available both in online as well as offline mode okay cool so let's start with current and capacitors both together that is better because they have many similar uh, things and all of that so let's study capacitors and current electricity okay let's define the basic terms first before going ahead <clears throat> let's define the basic terms first okay so starting off with current starting off with current where if you have a conductor if you have a conductor like so and there are charges flowing in it there are charges flowing in it and the amount of charge which flows is q in a time of t 
then the current is this but this is obviously your average current this is the charge which has flown upon the time which has been taken but if you want instantaneous current then it is dq by dt and if you integrate it you will get dq is equal to i dt and then you can obviously put integral symbol over here so that will give you the total charge that will give you the total total charge in a time from 0 to basically t how much charge has flown you will get it via integration sometimes you have been asked how many charge carriers are flowing per unit time in those cases what you will do is the same current you will write it as instead of charge by time you will put it as number of charges into each charge which is electron charge which is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 so therefore n by t n by t is nothing but current divided by e this is nothing but number of charges number of charges flowing per unit time flowing per unit time that is what it represents is that right so very good awesome sony please uh, yeah english only no telugu now no telugu now okay concentrate and abhinya you are going to get timed out by that because of all this focus yeah right now also remember one thing if 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 positive charges go this way then the current is also in the same direction whereas if uh, negative charges go this way then the current is in this particular direction basically current's direction is the flow of the positive charges and it is remember a scalar quantity not just that it is also a fundamental quantity it's a fundamental quantity remember the units of it is nothing but amperes and the dimension of it is nothing but this a symbol that is a fundamental quantity correct all these things we have seen uh, or you should know about the uh, parameter current then you have current density and all of that so let's talk about current density current density it is nothing but imagine there is a conductor like so oops you can take multiple cross sections one cross section i can take it here one over here from this maybe some current is passing in this also the same amount of current obviously should pass this is some current which is passing through it then we define this term called as current density which is nothing but the current per unit area the current per unit area current per unit area so the symbol for current density the symbol for current density is j and it is nothing but i divided by a but that a should be perpendicular or else it doesn't work so anyways we'll just put it as i by a but do not exactly think this is any random area because i will be nothing but j multiplied by a i this current i will be nothing but j multiplied by a so what is this area that i am talking about it is actually only the perpendicular it is only basically the perpendicular area only it is only the perpendicular area only meaning this particular area this is perpendicular to the current you can see that so this particular area this particular area is nothing but your a perpendicular this only it is perpendicular to the current and what is this current density it is a vector quantity mind it and it has the same direction as that of the current it has the same direction as that of the current so it is a vector it is a vector in the direction of the current in the direction of the current but often it happens that area might not be perpendicular if you take a weird area like this then the area vector itself might make some angle then the area vector itself might make some angle with your 
with your current as well as your current density as well as your current density and let's say that angle over here is theta then the value of the current at that particular location then the value of the current at that particular location is given by is given by here you will put j and you will put a dot product with the area vector it is actually j a cos theta it is basically the component of the area which is like this so it is j a cos theta so that is the true way of writing current density in vector form okay it is a vector in the direction of the current is this point clear everyone yeah yes yes actually uh, most of the 90 percent plus topics will be covered right there might be few things here and there which i might probably give it a miss but those are like low 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 very low 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 weightage topics okay but otherwise more than 90 percent i as far as i remember almost everything is going to be covered correct yeah correct very good very good now that we talk about current density let's also talk about the motion of the charges if you take if you take a conductor like this in multiple different scenarios say when there is no current when there is no current versus there is current flowing in it versus when there is current flowing in it that means there is a voltage difference this is at a higher voltage this is at a lower voltage higher voltage lower voltage so i can put high voltage over here there is a low voltage over here there is a potential difference so when there is a potential difference what automatically happens is there will be electric field so definitely there will be electric field which is created so let me just put it over here only so there will be there will be electric field which is created in the direction of the current when there is no current obviously the field inside the conductor will be zero there is stationary uh, current there is nothing which is going in it but how will the motion of the electrons be even when there is no current understand each electron will be colliding with other electrons other atoms like this randomly but on an average their displacement will be zero on an average their displacement will be zero an electron here might move like this might go like this might finally go like this might go like this might go like this or like this and maybe again come back over here so you will see even when there is no current even when there is no current you will see that their average or on an average their displacement is zero their average velocity is also going to be zero average velocity is going to be zero but the moment electric field is there the motion is slightly different you will see that the electrons will move opposite to the field because it's a negative charge so an electron here electron here will move like this maybe like this here 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 maybe and finally after the same time it has moved little bit same thing the electron here which was going like this 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 maybe it reaches here so you can slowly see that there is a drift drift in the charge carriers there is a drift in the charge carriers over a period of time so here you will definitely see the average velocity is not equal to zero average velocity is not equal to zero right it is not coming back to the same point in fact that average velocity is called as the drift velocity that average velocity which you see is actually basically called as what do you say as the drift velocity this is called as the drift velocity this is your drift velocity and there is a formula for that and that is very simple if you know the company nvidia you will get it so current is equal to n times vd times e times a that's it you can in fact bring a below this if you bring a below this so it will become i divided by a is equal to n v d into e current by area is nothing but current density remember that so current density j bar will be equal to this value n into the drift velocity into basically e right that's it so what is this n if you are thinking about it it is the number of charges it is not the number of charges per unit volume this is generally given to you or you can very easily find out by simple methods so that is the basic formula 
current is nvda and dividing by area you will get current density is nvde this is vector form this is basically your vector form is that right everyone very good awesome awesome very good let's move ahead to the next one let's move ahead to the next concept now uh, the next concept is obviously of the resistance resistance and ohms law so remember if you draw a graph of the applied voltage versus the current for usual device it will be like this such a device is called as ohmic device whereas for non ohmic it will be like this and for ohmic devices you will see that the potential difference voltage difference is directly proportional to the current passing through it so therefore uh, you know uh, v is equal to voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance is a formula which we generally use for ohmic devices like conductors and resistors non ohmic devices are like semiconductors vacuum tubes and so many things are there capacitors inductors which are not going to behave linearly and from this we define the term resistance which is the opposition of the flow of the current and a resistor whose symbol is this resistor is measured in ohms right so one ohm is nothing but a volt divided by ampere volt divided by the ampere that is what resistance is also you will see resistance changes with different parameters one is temperature so let me put over here temperature temperature dependence temperature dependence you will notice that if if temperature increases if temperature increases then the resistance also increases the resistance may decrease also but when will it increase when will it decrease this is only true for conductors whereas this is true for semiconductors for semiconductors for semiconductors on rising the temperature it becomes more conductive for conductors like silver copper aluminum the resistance will go up when you increase the temperature because of more collisions in fact the formula for that is the resistance at any temperature t is the resistance at 0 1 plus alpha delta t this formula is similar to the formula of you know linear expansion in thermal physics what is this alpha called this alpha is a material property this is called as the coefficient of thermal resistance coefficient of thermal resistance resistance changing with temperature for this case you will see alpha is basically positive for conductors for semiconductors alpha value is going to be negative because when you increase the temperature the resistance decreases so this is the formula used in many many scenarios is that right yeah very good very good awesomeness <clears throat> very nice next next important thing once resistance is done does resistance depend on anything else just like temperature definitely it depends on the geometry and the shape the geometry and the shape of the conductor meaning resistance is going to be rho times l divided by a sometimes stretching problems compressing problems length and area both change so you might see things like this there is a conductor like this you stretch it the area also reduces length increases in such cases volume which is area into length will be constant in case of pulling or compressing precautions so therefore instead of area you can put it as volume by length or instead of length you can put it as volume by area depending on how you want to substitute so if i just substitute area as volume by length it will become rho l by a instead of area it is volume by length so it will become rho l square divided by volume so that is also okay please remember this is volume this is volume not voltage or else you will get confused okay this is volume 
So depending on whether area is constant or not, accordingly resistance will be either directly proportional to L or it will be directly proportional to L square. But if volume is constant, this is the term. If area is constant, this is the relationship. Cool? Everyone with me? What is this rho? This rho, oh my god, this sounded like is rho. Okay. So this uh, rho value which you see over here, this rho value which you are seeing over here, right? This rho is called as resistivity. Resistivity. And 1 by resistivity is sigma which is called as conductivity. Which is called as conductivity. Which is called as conductivity. Again, an important formula. 1 by rho is resistivity. Oh, sorry, conductivity, which is 1 by resistivity. R is also rho L by A. Rho L by A. If volume is constant, area into length is constant. Right? These are all again very important things. Very, very important things. You will also see that the drift speed has another relationship which is there again in many places where you will see that the drift speed vd vd is going to be is going to be nothing but e uh, into e divided by m into tau now you may be wondering what is this tau and what is this m and what is this e this m is nothing but the mass of the electron this is the mass of the electron this is the field which we are talking about electric field which is there inside and this tau which is there this tau which is there see from one collision to the next collision there is some time gap so it hits stops loses the velocity or else it would continuously accelerate to infinite velocity but it does not happen it moves with a constant drift velocity, constant drift velocity. So that is basically called as your relaxation time. What is this called? Relaxation time. Electrons don't continuously accelerate, rather they go in bursts. Accelerate, break, accelerate, break, accelerate, break. Break is the collision, accelerate is due to the field. So that is relaxation time from one breaking to the next breaking, from one acceleration to the next acceleration. Yeah. Thank you, Sumi, so much. Right? Is that okay? Right. Very good. Very good. Excellent, guys. <clears throat> awesome. Is this block lectures enough for 650? I'm telling you, Kartika, it is enough for 720 also. But not just the lectures, you have to follow the other parts of the blocks. Because remember, there is always a high weightage block and low weightage block. I have given the complete chart. Just few days back, all of us came live. So we are doing the high weightage part, the low weightage part, if you do it also with the crash or whatever lectures you have, that's it. I'm telling you 720, you will get it. It's just we are doing a complete syllabus properly. It's not like I'm skipping any major topic or anything like that. So target is very high. Stakes are very high. Okay. So this is also a very, very important relationship. There is one more relationship and that is called as mobility. So there is another relationship called as mobility, mobility and mobility is nothing but, is nothing but the field, sorry, is the drift speed, drift speed per unit field. How much is the drift speed per unit field? Correct. So the symbol of mobility is mu. It is a VD by E. How do I remember whether it is E by VD or VD by E? Think mobility means I'm mobile. Imagine some person is able to sneak his way through a crowd. Some people are there. Even if there is a lot of crowd, they are very chintu mindu. Easily they can find their way. So they are very mobile. That means their speed is less. Oh, sorry, speed is very high. But very fat person is there, not able to move a lot. So then what will happen? What will happen? The drift speed will be less. They are less mobile. So that's how I remember drift speed is on the top. That's how I remember drift speed is on the top. Okay. Understood my dear warriors. So it's the drift speed per unit field. Why field is there? Because it is the driving reason. Without the field, why would the charges move? Only when there is electric field inside the conductor because of the battery connected, the field drives those charges. So if I need a bigger battery, 
and more field, then they are less mobile because I need to push them. Like I will need a lot of motivation lectures only then you study. So you are less mobile, but you lead hardly any motivation and you are studying more. So you are more mobile. That's why it is in the denominator. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so all these are very, very important relationships which I have been giving it to all of you, right? All these things. Okay, all these things done, 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 done. Okay, and also there is another formula which you should know over here. Sigma also becomes mobility into number of charge carriers into E. This is also a very, very important relationship. Conductivity is mobility into number of charge carriers per unit volume into E. Very important relationship. Okay, it will help you even in semiconductors. Another important relationship. Another important relationship is just like you had voltage is equal to current into resistance. Instead of voltage, what you do is put electric field. Instead of current, put current density. Instead of resistance, put rho. That's it. You will get another important relationship. E is equal to rho j or j rho. E is equal to rho j. Just like field is voltage. Why? Because E is dV by dr, voltage per unit length. This is current per unit area. This is resistance of 1 meter length with 1 meter area of cross section. That is resistivity. So specific resistance, then specific current, then this is specific voltage. Voltage per unit length is field. So that's how you get this. This is also very, very important. Is that right? Cool. Shall we go ahead? <clears throat> very good. Very good. Awesome. 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 <clears throat> Moving on. Moving on. So all these current parameters are done. Then let's see a similar term for capacitance because then we will go to resistors in series and capacitors in series and all of that. See guys, when I ask students what is a capacitor, a lot of people say capacitor stores charge. Well, true, but actually what is a capacitor is nothing but it's it's nothing but conductors which store electrical which store electrical energy in between the plates which store electrical energy in between the plates and <coughs> which stores electrical energy between the plates and that energy is stored in the field electrical energy in the field, in the electric field. So imagine you have a conductor like this and you have a conductor like this. This conductor somehow you charge it positively, this you charge it negatively. Obviously there will be electric field flowing from this conductor to this conductor like this. So you will see in this particular region where the field exists, there will be energy stored and that energy is electrical energy. So there is electrical energy stored in this particular region and you can use it for many applications. And this, uh, cap this is basically capacitor. Let me tell you some examples of where capacitor is used. You know, in a mobile phone, there is a camera flash or even a normal digicam. That flash works only because of a capacitor. The capacitor stores the energy. And when you press flash on and you click a photo, Suddenly, all that energy is given out to the light bulb in a fraction of a second. So it flashes instant energy. It's like having glucon D. You get instant energy, right? If you use Samba rice or Ridli Vada, energy will come. But Aram say, first of all, you'll feel sleepy. After reading Samba rice, I'll sleep. Nicely, I'll sleep off. But if I drink glucose or some lemon juice, refreshing tea, immediately, zoop, I will be awake. Oh, what is happening? So same way, capacitor gives that zoop form of energy and in a fraction of a second. It's also used in defibrillators where, you know, you might have seen, they take these two uh, conductors and they put it on the patient's chest because you want to revive the patient. And as a doctor, I think you will be doing it very soon. So the electrical energy is given as a shock in a very short amount of time. You do not give continuous electricity. You don't want to kill the person. So guys, that is, again, the working principle of capacitors, you are using it over there. Capacitors are also used in many other devices like transistors, speakers and so many other places. So lots of applications basically. Okay, so 
imagine the amount of charge stored here is plus q here it is minus q and of course because of the field over here electric field over here there is some voltage difference potential difference is created potential difference is created so you will find that this charge which is there is directly proportional to the voltage is directly proportional to the voltage and i can call that proportionality constant as c where c is nothing but your capacitance where c is nothing but your capacitance exactly c is your capacitance capacitance and the, this is the capacitance of the device it is measured in farads farad and if you see farad is voltage below charge on the top so it is coulomb it is nothing but coulomb per volts how much coulomb is there per volt that is what one farad is right interesting very good all right my god thank you dj tilu wow so which part of the country are you from dj tilu i like your name dj tilu nice very nice okay till this point everything clear now this capacitance you might be wondering how what does it depend on if you remember like we defined resistance over here 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 where did it go hmm <clears throat> resistance depends on temperature it also depends on the geometry and the shape similarly you will see that capacitance also depends on the shape or the geometry but not on the temperature of course so capacitance it depends it depends on the shape and size also the material inside also the material which is there inside so i'll come to it so there are actually three types of capacitors which you study in general one is a parallel plate capacitor one is a parallel plate capacitor that means you will have one plate like this another plate oops another plate like this then uh you have second type which is cylindrical cylindrical type cylindrical type and the third one you have spherical type spherical type of capacitor and cylindrical type like this maybe and in spherical type like this so these are two concentric spheres these are the three different types of capacitors for parallel plate the capacitance is given by epsilon not into k a divided by d k is basically your dielectric constant k is nothing but your dielectric constant of course right similarly for cylindrical type the capacitance usually they don't ask cylindrical but still i'm giving it to you it's not there in ncert it is nothing but instead of epsilon not it is 2 pi how do you remember whether there is 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi this is a cylinder what is there on a cylinder curved when you talk about a curve or a circle circumference is 2 pi r so that's how i remember it is 2 pi and there is epsilon not and you have the height of the cylinder and here you divide it by log of the outer radius outer radius divided by inner radius outer radius divided by inner radius okay so one is r1 and the other one is r2 keep that in mind okay r1 and r2 similarly in spherical type the capacitance is given by now when you talk about a sphere sphere complete surface area what is it 4 pi r square so 4 pi should come over here so 4 pi epsilon not here you will have 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so that is for a spherical type but in this there is a special sub case where even if you have one single sphere that also behaves like a capacitor see in this scenario what happens is the electrical field goes from here to here the electrical field goes from here to here 
in this case the field goes between this and this between this and this like this so there is a start and there is an end here also it goes from the inner sphere to the outer sphere inner sphere to the outer sphere that's how the electrical field goes but somebody might say sir what if i have only one single sphere nothing else one single sphere that's it of radius r nothing else will that be a capacitor the answer is yes we like sir where does it end just like it ends at some plate here some plate here some plate here where does the electric field where does the electric field stop the answer is no it never stops it goes or rather it stops at infinity so it's like a spherical capacitor but it continues till infinity it continues till infinity so it never really stops but you can say mathematically it stops at infinity so when you substitute r2 as infinity in this so basically her r1 is r and r2 is infinity you get the capacitance of this kind and it comes out to be 4 pi epsilon not r because 1 by infinity is 0 1 by infinity is 0 so r1 goes on the top as r that's it so that is the capacitance so you should definitely know this you should definitely know all the formulas even this even this and even this even this this k might be needed at some places or not be needed that is up to you okay so let's say i'll just remove this k for now right now i'll just keep it without the dielectric constant if material is added that is very important if this material dielectric constant k is dielectric dielectric constant if it is filled then you will see that the new capacitance is k times whatever is the old capacitance k times whatever is the old capacitance that's it that is the new capacitance of that capacitor if you fill the material inside if you fill the material inside is that clear everyone very good very good awesome now having said this having said this what if the dielectric medium is not completely filling it what if if only a small part of it is being filled so we'll come to that after series and parallel combination okay after series and parallel combination of capacitors and resistors so let's first discuss you know series combination the series combination in fact there is series combination of batteries also we'll talk about that as well so when you talk about resistors and then you have capacitors and then you also have batteries and batteries do have internal resistance also remember that so when you talk about resistors guys like r1 to rn then c1 to cn this is e1 r1 to en rn the equivalent resistance rs oops rs is given by r1 plus r2 like that till rn for capacitors it is given by reciprocal so if cs is given you put 1 by cs is equal to 1 by c1 like that till 1 by cn here in emf if you connect batteries in series the net emf in series is just the oops is just the simple addition so e1 plus e2 like that till en and the equivalent internal resistance is uh, r1 plus r2 like that till rn till rn keep that in mind yeah in case of all of them no matter what let's say the voltage across this is v1 the voltage across this is v2 this is v1 this is v2 uh, sorry not v2 that is vn my bad so this is vn this is v1 v2 v3 like that vn the total voltage in both the cases the total voltage in both the cases or all the cases actually is v1 plus v2 like that till vn so maybe the voltage across the battery 
terminal voltage is V1 here, here it is V2, like that, it is Vn, so on and so forth. So the voltages add up to give you the total net voltage. Also what is common in all of them is this. If you see the current here, here, or here, or even here, the current is, oh sorry, in this case I will not talk about the current, it will be actually the charge, so plus minus, plus minus, so we are talking about the charges over here, plus Q minus Q. So current or basically the charge is same across all of them. It is the same across any one of the capacitors or the resistors or the batteries. Is that right, everyone? Very, very good. Very, very good. Awesome, awesome. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, guys. Shall we go ahead? Okay, this is series. Let's go to parallel combination. Now let's go to parallel combination. Okay, so one resistor here like this. There will be many resistors in between. I'm just showing the first and the last resistance. Similarly over here also. I'm just going to show the first and the last capacitor C1 to Cn. Here also the first battery and the last battery. How do I find the equivalent? Well, you have to use different laws to find it out. The final answer which comes out for parallel resistance is 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1. You add the reciprocals and you get it. That's it. Here for capacitance, it is actually simple. You just add the capacitance C1 plus C2 like that till Cn. For batteries, then what you should do is for equivalent resistance, use it like the resistors only. So 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 like that till 1 by Rn. For batteries, here is the special formula. Equivalent EMF in parallel, what you should do is put E1, then put E2 like that till En. Okay, put like this. And put that many number of turns below also. Put that many number of turns below also. What you do is now divide by resistances E1 by R1, E2 by R2, E3 by R3, En by Rn. Here also 1 by R1, 1 by R2, 1 by R3, like that. 1 by R. That's it. That's the equivalent EMF in parallel. Equivalent EMF in parallel. Is that okay, my dear warriors? Clear? All right. Very good. This is how you combine them in parallel. Now, what is going to be same is obviously you can see the, uh, oops, the voltage here, the voltage here, or even the voltage here. What is going to be same is the voltage. Voltage is going to be the same and what is going to be different is the current in fact the current or basically the charges will be different will be different in fact i can also say current is i1 plus i2 like that till in or the total charge is q1 plus q2 like that till qn this charge plus this charge plus this charge is the total charge. I1 plus I2 plus I3 is the total current. That is how you can write it down for resistors or capacitors in series. Always remember resistors and capacitors are in opposite direction or opposite formula. So you will have to be a little bit careful about it. Okay, when you are solving the questions. So this is series and parallel. Very nice. Now, what kind of questions can come? And also let me show you the final uh, KVL and KCL also, then we can start solving some or show you some concepts or problems. See guys, <clears throat> usually you can solve the problems by combining the resistors together or capacitors together via series and parallel combination, but sometimes you can't. So that's when you will use these two laws. One is the 
Kirchhoff's current law, which is based on charge conservation. Charge conservation, right? It is also called as a junction law. It is also called as a junction law. That means wherever there is a junction, all the wires meet, that's where you apply it. And the second one is the Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is basically based on, uh, you know, energy conservation, energy conservation, energy conservation. And this is also called as a loop law because you apply this law over a loop, over a circuit. You start from a point and come back to the same point. That's why a loop law. That's how it is called. Is that right? Okay. What guide can we use for physics class? Well, Shivani, guide wise, you mean board exams? Uh, you don't need too much of guides for boards. Just use the previous year papers. That should be enough. And next year onwards, it is going to be mainly objective. If you're talking about NEET, then I would say use the Tatva book, right? Because uh, it has got all kinds of questions plus PYQs. If, you, if you're not in Vedantu or if you can't buy Tattva book, then I would say you'll have to buy books like the previous 20 years books that is still available uh, again on Amazon. Okay, 20 years book by Vedantu. Just check that out. That is one book for PYQ. Second book you will buy is either Hetsi Varma uh, if you want to understand more concepts. But if you are okay, no sir, my class notes and my teacher is teaching very well. I'm able to understand everything. Then you can directly go to, uh, you know, uh, Errorless, MTG, all these books, uh, uh, DC Pandey. Uh, Arihant, right? Objective books for problem practice. That's more than sufficient, right? And your coaching module, if it is there for understanding the notes, summary points and formulas and other things, that's that's more than enough. Don't have to buy more than three books, okay? Three books, more than enough. Cool? Okay. Now, now, KCL, KVL done. KCL, KVL, okay? What is the meaning and what is it based on? So when we talk about Kirchhoff's current law, what happens is you have a junction and multiple wires are there over there. You see how the currents are going in or going out and stuff like that. So the total sum of the currents which are going in is the total sum of the currents which are coming out. As simple as that. That simply put is your Kirchhoff's current law. Whereas Kirchhoff's voltage law means there will be one device here. There will be maybe one more device over here. Then maybe one more device over here. Okay, maybe then, you know, one more device over here like this. And maybe like this, one more device over here like this. And maybe one more device over here like this. So maybe you start over here. You go like this, 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 go like this and come back over here. So when you start and come back to the same point, and you add the voltage differences across every device, 5 volts, 2 volts, 3 volts, 5 volts, 10 volts, like that, the total sum of the voltages across the entire loop will always be a big fat zero. That is what Kirchhoff's voltage law is all about. That is what Kirchhoff's voltage law is all about. That's it. So let's take some examples out of it and so that you understand everything in detail. Okay. Uh, say for example, Say for example, there is one resistor here, there is one capacitor here, there is one battery over here, some branching is happening, some resistor is there, again some branching is happening over here, maybe there is a capacitor like this, it goes like this, there is again a battery over here, some resistance here, goes like this, maybe a branching here, okay, and then maybe a battery here, resistor here, goes like this continues maybe maybe a capacitor over here like this and battery over here oops battery over here okay and maybe we go down like this maybe a resistor here like this and maybe a resistor over here like this. some random loop i have drawn it's a part of a big circuit okay so uh, let's say this is R1, this is C1, this is E1, this is R2, this is R3, this is R4, this is R5, this is R6, this is C2, this is C3, 
similar E1 is done, this is E2, this is E3 and this is E4, okay. So what we do is, let's say for example, we start from this point and you go across this circuit and come back to the same point. If I want to apply Kirchhoff's laws, how will I do it? First things first, assume the currents. So let's say the current over here is going like this, let's say it is I1. Let's say the current over here is going maybe like this, let's say it is I2. Maybe the current over here is going like this, let's say it is I3. And maybe the charge over here is like say Q2 and minus Q2. Then maybe the current which is going here, let's say it is I4. Let's say it is I4. Let's say the current going over here is let's say I5. Let's say the current going here is let's say I6. Maybe the current goes like this, maybe it is I7. And maybe the current is going like this, maybe, sorry, here, maybe it is I8. I'm just showing some random currents. Now remember one thing guys, the rule is very easy. The rule is very easy. If you have a resistor versus a capacitor versus a battery. See, if this is positive, this is negative. This is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. Okay, let's say this is the direction of the current over here. Always see whether you are going up or going down in potential. If you are going up, plus. If you are going down, minus. That's the sign convention for Kirchhoff's law. So current is going like this. So this is high voltage, this is low voltage. This is positive, this is negative, high, low. Same thing I can also do for this. I can just draw it in a very simple manner. So it looks consistent. This is positive, this is negative terminal. This is high, this is low. So understand. If I go from here to here, I'm going from low voltage to high voltage. So the potential difference is plus IR. Plus IR. IR is the voltage difference, Ohm's law. So why plus? Because low to high. Why this is low? Why this is high? Current always goes from high to low for a resistor. Okay, not for others. Okay, here this is low, this is high. So the voltage that you will be talking about, Q is CV. So V is Q by C. So this is Q by C plus. Here, I am going from here to here, so it will be plus EMF, plus EMF. When you go from here to here, it will be minus IR, because high to low. This is positive to negative, so minus Q by C. This is positive to negative, so minus E. That's the simple sign convention. Use this in this problem and see what is the equation that you get. I am going in the direction of the current, in the direction of the current, high to low, so negative. So minus I1, R1. Capacitor, let's say this is positive, this is negative. Positive to negative, I am dropping it. So minus Q1 by C1. Minus, this is Q1 by C1. Then I go to this battery. I am going from negative to positive, so it's higher jump. So it will be plus E1. Here, I am going against the direction of the current. So for resistors, when I go against the direction of the current, it is plus IR. So that is the reason why I will put plus I2, R2. I go over here, I encounter the capacitor from positive to negative. It's a drop. So it will be minus Q2 by C2. Minus Q2 by C2 because high to low. Here, battery high to low. Battery is high to low. That means jumping down. So minus so minus E2. Here I am going against the direction of the current in the resistor. Against the direction means positive. So plus I4, I R3. I4, R3. Here in the direction of the resistance, if you go, drop. So that is why minus I5, R4. In the direction of the current, resistance, so minus. So I6, R5. Here, Let's say this is minus, let's say this is plus, this is minus Q3, this is plus Q3. I'm going from minus to plus, so it's a jump, increase. So minus Q, sorry, plus Q by C. Q by C, perfect. Battery, positive to negative, I'm going down, so minus, what is that? E3, minus E3. I come back over here, a resistance, I'm going against the direction of the current. So positive, so minus, sorry, plus I8, R6. Against means plus. Positive to negative of the battery, I'm going down. So minus E4, that is equal to zero. So that's how you exactly apply Kirchhoff's law.
that's how you exactly apply Kirchhoff's law. Is that clear? Everyone understood? Okay. Now there are many sub cases which I want you to see for finding equivalent resistances. Just remember this. One sub case is where you have resistor like this, like this, like this, then like this, and then like this. Or basically in terms of capacitance, it will be like this, like this, like this, one here and one here. Whenever you see such a problem, remember all are in parallel. It's basically a parallel circuit. It's basically a parallel circuit. So strictly speaking, it is just like writing it down like this only. It is just like writing it down like this only. Same thing over here. This is like like writing it down like this. There is no difference in that. That is the equivalent circuit. Whenever you see such things. Whenever you see such things. Okay. Second type of variation which you should know. You might be having some resistance or a capacitance. There will be a wire here and there will be maybe a resistor here like this and like this maybe some branches there i don't know something like this example when you see such a wire and you see there is a wire which is connected across the resistor basically this is called as shorting this is called as shorting so when you short something the device which has been shorted becomes useless so this is completely useless you can forget this you can completely forget that whether it is a resistor or a capacitor Shorting means connecting the two terminals with a wire. You can just forget it. This is another kind of variation which you must know. Another variation which everybody must know, right? You might be given one resistor here, one resistor here, one resistor here. It could be also replaced by capacitors, by the way, like this, like this, like this, like this. These are symmetry based questions. These are symmetry based questions. So what happens in symmetry based questions is whatever is there on the left or right will be same. Basically, you join the points across which you want to find the resistance from here to here. You draw a perpendicular bisector. You draw a perpendicular bisector. You draw a perpendicular bisector. And whatever points are there on the perpendicular bisector, whatever points are there on the perpendicular bisector will be at the same voltage but there is no junction here there is only one junction here so deliberately make it into a junction deliberately make it into a junction uh, sorry make it into two junctions my bad so it will look something like this make it into two junctions like this. So this junction, make it into two junctions like this and separate them out. Disconnect it. Whenever you see a perpendicular bisector and a junction like this, whatever is there on the left and right is the same. Disconnect that junction, that's it. Now it becomes a simple series and parallel question. Simple series and parallel question, okay? So this is called as the disconnecting method. Disconnect when symmetry symmetry is there disconnect when such kind of symmetry is there yes yes you can definitely use symmetry concepts definitely you can use the symmetry concepts my dear warriors sometimes the questions are direct where you know there is a capacitor here then capacitor here this is like this and then this is oops sorry this is like this and here uh, maybe this is like this and then maybe this is like this this is like this example these are just random examples which i have taken okay like this and like this so in these kind of questions it's just about how quickly you are able to see who is in series who is in parallel and all of that like you can see quickly over here, these two are in parallel. Here you can see these two are in series. Then you can see that this combination with this is actually in parallel. Then you can also see this combination along with this is in series. And then finally, this 
parallel along with uh, this is in series you can see that right over here this whole thing right i hope you can see this whole thing over here this is again in series and finally this and this both of them are in parallel they are in parallel with each other so that's how you can quickly simplify the circuit so these are simple series and parallel based questions this is also very common correct now another type of question which you can get is where like i said dielectric slabs are kept you know one after the other or one beside the other if you get a question like this where there is a capacitor and then they tell you listen there is a slab here then there is a slab here and so on and so forth and then there is a slab here k1 a1 k2 k a2 like that kn an what is a1 a2 a3 they are the areas of cross section which are in contact with the plates of the capacitor plates of the capacitor these type of problems can be solved like this you treat it like small small capacitors with dielectric medium placed in between them k1 k2 like that and all these capacitors are basically in parallel what are they in they are basically in parallel that's all they are basically in parallel that's it so now it becomes a very simple job the total equivalent capacitance will be c1 plus c2 like that till cn and c1 will be epsilon naught k will be k1 a will be a1 divided by d and so on and so forth so it will be lastly epsilon naught kn an divided by d so just add the capacitances of each one of them you will get the net capacitance because they are all going to be in parallel they are all going to be in parallel keep this in mind cool so in parallel you can just add the capacitors the next variation comes where they are in series but don't use the series formula i'll teach you a better trick don't use you will waste a lot of time in the examination so imagine there is a capacitor like this again there is a slab kept here there is a slab kept here like that last slab is kept over here air could be also there it could be also air when air is there dielectric constant remember is one and each one of them has a thickness like d1 d2 like that dn this is k1 k2 like that kn so directly what you do is capacitance is epsilon not a area is the same usually what you put d but don't put d now because there are multiple distances you put d1 plus d2 like that till dn and divide each one of them with the dielectric constant divide each one of them with the dielectric constant k1 k2 k3 kn that's it you will get the answer so even those problems which have air gap in between so use this for air gap problems use this for capacitors with dielectric and air gap remember for air gap k is basically 1 so the value of k will be 1 that's it this becomes very easy peasy looking formula easy peasy looking formula understood very good very good awesome sir in emf definition they give potential difference when no current is passing okay i'll i'll tell you about it also no issues so these are some basic things which you should know now remember in batteries there are you know multiple ways of connecting a battery so when you talk about emf electromotive force which is nothing but the work done per unit charge to move across the terminals to move across basically the terminals so strictly speaking emf is nothing but the work done across the terminals minus to plus or plus to minus per unit charge that's it so that is why you know 1 volt 1 volt is nothing but 1 joule per 1 coulomb 1 coulomb right 
and any battery that you talk about also like i said before it also has internal resistance it also has internal resistance now imagine a situation where there is a battery internal resistance some devices are there after this something is happening who knows this is a big circuit after this okay this could be a big circuit after this if you measure the voltage across the terminals of the battery if you measure the voltage across the terminals of a battery remember the battery will look like this this would be the battery that is how the battery will look oops this is how the battery will look right this is inside the battery this is the internal resistance of the fluidic material or electrolytes inside so when imagine let me just duplicate this okay imagine the current which is coming is coming out like this and it's going inside like this then this is called as the discharging mode the battery is getting discharged the battery is getting discharged and in such a case this voltage which you see is nothing but emf minus ir why minus ir because some voltage is dropped lost across the internal resistance but by chance if you say that the current is going inside the positive terminal like this and coming out of the negative terminal this battery is definitely getting charged like when you put a mobile charger on the adapter it is getting charged in such a case the voltage is e plus ir it's e plus ir cool the next possibility is the battery is not connected only to anything or even if it is connected to something let's say there is no current flowing current is zero so if the current is zero whether you use v is equal to e plus ir or v is equal to e minus ir i is zero gone v is e v is e plus ir i is zero v is equal to e so what you will get is that the voltage difference equals e so the terminal so the terminal voltage so the terminal voltage is equal to the emf when when is it equal to emf when there is no current when there is no current that means it is open circuit this is open circuit correct there is open it's not closed it's open it's no uh, it's not a complete circuit it's a open circuit i hope this is absolutely very clear yes is that right somebody was asking this doubt hopefully it is very very clear very nice very nice awesomeness so this is also done yeah voltage everything is also done most of the concepts are done let's also move to uh, wheatstone's arrangement because sometimes questions do come on that as well so imagine imagine there is one device here one device here one device here one device here like this and a device connecting these two points i will call this as device number 1 2 3 4 4 and this as device number 5 if these devices are resistors okay or capacitors in a special circumstance you will see that the device number 5 is useless by the way this arrangement is also called as wheatstone wheatstone bridge wheatstone's bridge that is what it is called as this wheatstone's bridge you will see under special circumstance the fifth device becomes useless if the device number 5 becomes completely useless that means the voltage difference across the fifth device is zero or the current passing through the fifth device is zero such a bridge which stones one is said to be balanced this is called as a balanced bridge 
what is it called as it is called as a balanced bridge and when such things happen you will see if it is resistors r1 by r2 r1 by r2 will be equal to r3 by r4 will be equal to r3 by r4 if it is capacitor c1 by c2 will be c3 by c4 will be equal to c3 by c4 is that right so this is very very important these kind of questions are very common in your neat examination let me tell you this time in je also many questions were asked on many times on balancing of wheatstone's bridge okay so remember this balancing condition balanced bridge condition this by this is this by this there are many variations also of this problem like sometimes you will have a resistor here resistor here resistor here and then you will have one resistor here instead of a wire and one resistor here instead of a wire believe me this one over here is actually that fifth device this is actually r5 and uh, this one is r1 this is basically r2 this is basically r3 this is basically r4 yes this is in a disguised form you are not able to uncover it so easily but it is actually is remember this variation you will quickly see that there is a resistor like this there is a resistor like this resistor like this resistor like this like this and that fifth device is here because i said it is useless because it is balanced bridge then you can might as well treat it like a resistor here resistor here resistor here resistor here that's it so technically this is r1 this is r2 this is r3 r4 spend time you will understand why this circuit and this circuit is same so r1 and r2 are in series r3 and r4 are in series and their combination is in parallel so you can finally convert it into one single resistance you can finally convert it into one single resistance r equivalent so this is also a very very famous circuit yes current is zero maruti the bridge is said to be balanced the bridge is said to be balanced correct very good very good so this is also another important variation for wheatstone's bridge based on wheatstone's bridge you have the wheatstone's experiment sorry meter bridge experiment so where you have a potentiometer wire and all of that right and then you have known resistance unknown resistance like this this is the potentiometer thing experiment and you find a null deflection point somewhere over here so if this is known this is unknown this is length one this is l2 so this is basically your meter bridge meter bridge experiment you will see that r by x will be equal to l1 by l2 at null deflection at basically what null deflection keep this in mind this is at null deflection is that cool very good this is null deflection questions are based completely on this concept correct very good moving on moving on moving on since we have come to experiments and also this thing we can also talk about galvanometer remember for a galvanometer galvanometer whose symbol is basically this usually is just like a resistance of rg value this is also called as the coil resistance and it has a limit till which it can take current so usually called as i max usually called as i max which is full scale deflection current full scale deflection current and what does a galvanometer do a galvanometer's job is to measure small currents is to measure small amounts of currents so galvanometer has coils magnet springs right all those things inside when you pass current that current will produce a magnetic moment which then deflects under magnetic field 
and based on the current the deflection is also more or less so in fact you will see that theta which is the deflection theta which is the deflection is nothing but uh, you know proportional to the current proportional to the current in the galvanometer in fact it, I think it is NBA by K into I mm. yeah it is nothing but N times B times of A divided by K into I so you can see that the deflection is directly proportional to the current if you are again wondering sir what are these terms over here this over here is the number of turns this over here is the magnetic field this over here is the area what is this this is your torsional constant of the spring this is your torsional constant of the spring which is there inside the galvanometer you cannot exceed this current there is a coil resistance because that coil will produce its own magnetic moment so there is obviously a maximum voltage also which you can apply beyond that you cannot exceed it so across the uh, you know galvanometer the maximum voltage that you can produce is maximum current into the resistance of the galvanometer that's it that is the maximum thing that you can produce across the galvanometer right so these are basic things which you should know actually this is in magnetism chapter not in current electricity but I thought of giving it over here because we are doing electrical appliances together. Now you can convert a galvanometer into a ammeter you can convert it into an ammeter ammeter is used to measure the current it is connected in series it is connected in series and has low resistance remember because it is connected in series it has a very very low resistance so usually ammeters are like this you might have a device over here and they are connected and they are connected in series but inside the ammeter what is there inside the ammeter you have a galvanometer and you have something called as the shunt resistance or basically parallel shunt means parallel resistance so what it does is it protects the galvanometer because remember galvanometer cannot take in lot of current so if there is a heavy current which is flowing inside the circuit most of the current just gets bypassed a small amount of current will pass through the galvanometer small amount of current will pass through the galvanometer of the large current small will pass through the galvanometer and it will deflect and it will be able to measure this particular current it will be able to measure this particular current usually i is called as the range of the ammeter it is the range of the ammeter ig usually is the uh, full uh, full deflection current full scale deflection current full scale deflection current and uh, you will see that ig into rg current into resistance of the galvanometer will be equal to will be equal to i minus ig i minus ig into rs this is because their voltage is same their voltage is same in parallel don't forget this and this they are in parallel that is why ir is equal to ir which is equal to the voltage as simple as that this equation is used to solve many questions this equation is used to solve many many questions in actually the galvanometer i wanted to tell you one more thing also just like you have v is equal to ir you also have voltage sensitivity is current sensitivity but not into resistance upon resistance so actually the resistance comes over here this is for sensitivity this is voltage voltage sensitivity this is current this is current 
सेंसिटिविटी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूलास वोल्टेज सेंसिटिविटी इज बेसिकली हाउ मच डिविजन इट मूव पर वोल्टेज यूजली इन डिविजन पर मिली वोल्ट और डिविजन पर वोल्ट करेंट सेंसिटिविटी इज हाउ मेनी डिविजन डज इट मूव और एंगल डज इट मूव पर यूनिट करेंट यूजली मिली एम्पियर्स इको एम्पियर्स और इवन एम्पियर्स सो डिविजन पर वोल्ट इज द यूनिट फॉर द सेंसिटिविटी of voltage and for current it is divisions per ampere okay this is one more thing which i just remembered so thought of giving it to you that was ammeter what about voltmeter what about your voltmeter voltmeter obviously used to measure voltages so first of all it is connected across a device that means in parallel across a device and because it is in parallel if the resistance is low it will short it so you cannot do uh, changes to the circuit so uh, uh, it has and has large resistance it has large basically resistance it has very very large resistance so if this is our device this is our device you usually connect the voltmeter like this across it but what's there inside a voltmeter because it's in parallel so connect now a galvanometer in series with another resistance in series here ammeter is connected in series but it has inside a parallel resistance here voltmeter is connected in parallel it has a series resistance so what happens is there is a maximum limit till which the current which can go through the galvanometer there is a certain voltage across this entire setup and using ohms law you can say voltage this v over here stands for the voltage range this is your voltage range usually the i value of the current in the galvanometer is the full deflection current full scale deflection current usually it is given to you Uh, coil resistance is obviously given to you so you will see that the voltage is that particular current into into the total resistance into the total resistance both of them are in series so what will it be it will just be simply put resistance of the galvanometer plus resistance which is in series into ig that's it that will be equal to the voltage this is also useful for solving many questions this is also useful for solving many many questions all these things is that clear everyone yes very good excellent lastly we'll also talk about the power electrical power and some concepts related to that i wanted to tell you see if you just take a resistor and pass some current through it and let's say there is some voltage difference across the resistor there is some heat developed across it there is some power loss across it that power loss is i squared r it is also v squared by r it is also voltage into current if you want to calculate the heat developed it is always power into time so that's why usually you use i squared rt or something like that i squared r is the power t is the time obviously this power has a unit of watts has a units of watts or basically joules per second similarly even for a battery which has some emf e depending on whether the current is coming out or current coming in you have the power which is supplied or power which is given to the battery in case of the current which is coming out it is discharging so the power supplied is emf into current but by chance if the current is going in then it is a power which is consumed by the battery it is consumed by the battery it will be e into i the wordings will change the wordings will change correct then in the power part you get these concepts where you have a bulb 
you have a bulb rated at rated at p watts rated at p watts for v volts these kind of question do come and then the voltage changes or the bulbs are connected in series or parallel something happens and then you have to find the new power or whether it will glow brighter or dimmer so whether it glows brighter dimmer power is more or less remember one thing the brightness of the bulb the brightness of the bulb is directly proportional to the power which is consumed is directly proportional to the power which is consumed correct number one thing number two no matter what the resistance never ever changes keep this in mind the resistance of the bulb is constant very important but but power changes but the power changes with with voltage or current with the voltage or the current so what you do for solving these questions remember power is equal to v squared by r so therefore resistance is equal to v squared by p now this is going to be a constant now it's up to you how you want to use this so v1 square by p1 will be v2 square by p2 as simple as that so this is how you solve those power problems resistance will be constant so resistance on the top power below so this is the idea behind solving bulb related problems okay thank you so much dr pratu thank you so much right so i think this was one of the last few concepts anything else remaining ha huh, one more thing i can tell you these kind of questions also come where a capacitor is just connected to the circuit or just uh, kept for a long time these kind of questions also come imagine there is a resistor and there is a capacitor like this resistor here something like this i don't know resistor here like this oops okay so uh two things it was just open for a long time and it has been just closed then let me create a duplicate so now it is closed for a long time here it is just closed okay so these kind of variations do come in the neat exam sometimes but yeah it's a rare but still it might come remember one thing when it is when a capacitor is just connected when a capacitor is just connected in the circuit remember this the capacitor completely just behaves like a simple wire what does a capacitor do it behaves like a simple wire similarly when it is kept for a long time for a long time that means it is in the steady state it is in the steady or stable condition then that same capacitor my dear students that behaves like a open switch it behaves like a open switch or a circuit it behaves as if it is been disconnected completely thank you maruti thank you so much thank you subhashni thank you for that energy guys i need it thank you sanvi thank you dr pratu for motivating the crowd thank you so how does this circuit behave in this case because it behaves just like a wire so the equivalent circuit diagram in this situation would be just this battery uh this resistance this is behaving like a wire so just this resistance just this resistance and that's about it that's how the current is going to flow will flow here also and it will flow here also it's just going to behave like a wire in the second scenario it completely cuts this part out it completely cuts this part out so this same circuit is going to just behave like this is that battery and this is the resistor this is completely out so forget about it just this resistor and that's about it so all the current is just just going to go like this nothing more 
there's no switching right so that's how capacitors behave when connected just and connected for a very very long time when they achieve stability when they are in the steady state right okay very good so let me think if we have left out anything in electromagnetism i believe not much okay i'll try to make a mind map for emi okay uh, so i think it was almost 8 hours class okay crazy i didn't expect it i thought i will be done by 7 o'clock or something today but it's not possible so when you get into the mood you don't feel like stopping and you feel like going and teaching in the deep right so that's how it was right cool so um, these were some of the models of the question and all the concepts of electromagnetism i think i have covered almost every bit and aspect of it in detail oh one more thing i forgot let me tell you suddenly it happens huh here only i'll just tell you one more thing mm. if you have a battery right with some internal resistance over here and this is external resistance then the power then the power loss across external resistance is maximum is maximum if the external resistance is equal to internal resistance this is called as your uh, maximum power transfer theorem maximum power transfer theorem okay that is your maximum power transfer theorem something which you should be aware of correct cool so uh yeah let me just uh, save this and yeah i'll save this later on don't worry yeah thank you guys so much okay and uh I'm so glad that you stayed till the end. A lot of you are staying till the end. Thank you so much. Uh, smash the like button and also recommend this channel to all your friends. We started this channel for South Indian students mainly. But now that we are seeing that many students from many cities and even small, small towns across India, uh, they prefer learning in English medium. And that is what you need at the end of the day. Eventually, when you go into the corporate world, when you become a big doctor, uh, when you are dealing with you know, multiple books, authors, presenting papers, doing research. Obviously, you would prefer to be comfortable in English. I'm not saying talk in English at home. Obviously, talk in your mother tongue only. That is better. But yeah, in the professional world, you know, it is good to be uh, aware that to talk in English, especially if you're traveling foreign countries and even if you're in good hospitals and all that. Yeah, it always helps to know the local language. Like, for example, if I open a clinic or if I'm uh, a doctor in Tamil Nadu, I would obviously prefer to learn the local language over there and to communicate with the people very effectively. Even if I am from, let's say, you know, Andhra or even from Andaman Nicobar, right? So if I similarly go to Punjab, I would prefer to learn a little bit of Punjabi so that I can communicate very effectively uh, with the people out there. So that is what the qualities that you need to develop. Uh, apart from obviously PCB, languages are something which you should be very, very, you know, thorough through uh, so that you have effective communication and good reading, listening skills, uh, which is definitely important in your, uh, you know, career and your corporate world. And obviously, when you uh, do research and present papers and so many other activities that you're going to do, right? So many conferences you're going to attend. Just think about that life in the near future. You are going to do that. Just imagine. And the only thing that is stopping you is probably your studies and the need exam ahead. So given your 100%, like we teachers are doing our bit and our part over here. Cool. So thank you so much and uh, make sure you smash the like button. Thank you for all the love. I will be reading all the comments and put it up down in the description box. Uh, sorry, in the comment box. Yes, sir. Block 2, block 2, block 2, block 2. Uh, done. Block 2 done. Okay. Waiting for block 3. Block 2 actually little bit is left. That is your... Diksha Mams, uh, GOC and isomerism that is going to happen tomorrow and uh, genetics and uh, was done molecular basis of inheritance principles of inheritance that was done on Saturday by Gopika Mam and Baswa Sar. In case you have missed this seven hour class, please watch it. It's a long class. You need to watch it. Okay, do that. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy and stay motivated. Bye bye. Signing off.